pitch to Huxdorf. Line drive into the left center gap. It is down for a base hit. Moss will score. Seegers is at third. They're going to send him. Here he comes. Nobody's there to cut it off. And it's a two RBI double for Huxdorf. And the Hawks have the lead. Ha ho! Llewellyn's got the sign that he likes from Moss. The one, two. Feels it, deals it. Got him! Yes! Swing and a miss. Down he goes. And that's a Hawkeye winner in the snow in Missouri. You bet. Hawks win 5-4. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, different weather down there in Missouri. The snow started to come in. We don't have any snow in the forecast today. It's, it's probably just as cold, but the Hawks were able to really battle on that Friday afternoon game with South Dakota State to come back and, and win it. And being down 2 nothing in the third, 4-2 in the eighth, Iowa wins it. Five to four. We've got games two and three with the Jackrabbits coming up in just a little bit. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. Pre-game coverage of the Hawkeyes and the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State this afternoon. It's a busy day, busy weekend in Iowa City. And the baseball team, they're, they're pulling their weight today with a, a couple of games against South Dakota State. Let's bring in color analyst John Evans. John, it's good to see you. We were th without you on Friday. I, I missed you down there. The, uh, the last-minute uh, last decision to go made it difficult to, uh, to rearrange schedule for me. So... Uh, Brought it back in town, and uh, I've been accused of ducking you because it was cold. But just to prove that that's not the case, here I am. <laughs> yeah, you get your get a get a taste of it today. And just for the record, John, anybody that made that accusation to me, I defended you. <laughs> All right, I certainly appreciate that. So now we get two with South Dakota State, and uh, we didn't really know how many we were playing, if we were playing, until we we kind of got here just about an hour ago. And so they've come to the decision: we're going to play two today. It'll be a nine inning game first and then a seven inning game yeah the seven inning game was was a bit of a negotiation on coach heller's part um you know, south dakota state's been on the road um since we went to lubbock last wednesday so you know they've been on the road 10 days um you know so the coach wanted to their coach wanted to get back and uh, get back to, to home at a semi-decent hour today but um that's why that, that's why we won't be playing nine in the second game um but he but he Nobody can say no to Coach Heller, so he went ahead and gave him gave him the seven innings in the second game so that uh, uh, hopefully we can also get done before dark and it gets really cold here tonight. Yeah, it's just kind of surprising the way the weather seems to look is somehow it's going to get a little bit warmer when the winds shift, I guess. So we'll just have to play that uh, 
play that by ear. But uh, this is a dangerous South Dakota State team. They got a 4-10 and ten record, but they gave us all we could handle on Friday, and, and we didn't play the best baseball. And, again, fortunate to, to get a win. Coach Heller really challenged the guys after the game, saying, hey, we can't keep doing this to ourselves. Had three errors, didn't play the cleanest baseball, made some mistakes, and they almost made us pay, guys. We, we got to pick it up. You know, Big Ten plays coming real soon. Yeah, three errors, six walks. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, those little things that, that have been uh, that have kind of bit them along the way. Um, you know, Brody Brecht did a nice job, was able to, uh, to work out of a couple jams there in his, his last couple innings of work, was able to get through five. Um, but, you know, then kind of where, where we go to, to shut down with Zach Volker and, and Will Christensen, you know, that was about the time it started to snow, I think, yeah. on you there in Kansas City. And, and it's just tough. And, um, you know, I was talking to, to Coach Sutherland in the dugout beforehand. He's like, you know, if you haven't played if you haven't played baseball in the upper Midwest in the snow, you haven't tried yet. So, <laughs> um, so you know, it, conditions are the same on both sides. And so, you know, th- there's a there, there's hopefully a talent gap where I was got a little bit more talent, but. Um, the mental toughness gap uh, or, or mental toughness rating is probably what comes into play as much as talent gap right now. Well, that's certainly uh, a, a point of interest because y- you look from our standpoint, from Iowa's standpoint, man, going down to Parkville, Missouri to play these guys and then, you, you know, just for one and it was last second. So that was probably our challenge on Friday. Today we're at home. You know, we've got our, our routine back as, as good as we can. For South Dakota State, they got to be running on fumes. They've started their entire – they've started their – season on the road the entire time just so many so many road games i mean you know we've joked about it a number of times about um, you know being in a hotel being tired after three or four days um here you are on sunday um if you're the jackrabbits you can kind of see the finish line and boy you've got to be um I, I would imagine they'll be they'll be really happy to get on the bus tonight get warm get some yeah. hot food and and trek back to Brookings and now we'd like to make sure they don't uh, they don't leave with a, with a win or two yeah all right our pregame coverage will continue right after this we'll hear head we'll hear from head coach of the Hawkeyes Rick Heller coming up you're listening to Hawkeye baseball from Learfield Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this Sunday afternoon. It's the Hawkeyes and the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Joined now by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, we, we played these guys on Friday down in Missouri. Just a, a thought on that game, that come from behind victory. Yeah, I mean, awesome comeback um, by our offense. 
Uh, we put ourselves in a really bad position, you know, with some 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 bad pitching on the mound, you know, some free bases and some sloppy play defensively, um, some you know kind of weird plays. But at the end of the day, we we found ourselves um, you know behind late um, on a day when the wind was blowing straight in your face and it was cold, and uh, they had a really good arm on the mound that was running up to 95, and and couldn't be prouder of our guys, uh, the guys in that inning found ways to get on base, Sam Honor gets on base, Michael Seegers with a big hit, and then um, you know, uh, Kyle Huxdorf with the big blow that, that, that put us back on top, and then uh, you know, Luke Llewellyn came in and, and gave us, uh, gave us uh, a save in the, in the ninth and, w- and was really sharp. Um, that was great to see. But you know, uh, it, you know, I, I was. I thought our offense really battled hard um, all day long. It was a tough day to, to, to score runs with how the wind was blowing, and uh, you know, we had we had pressure on them a lot, um, and and finally ended up coming back late and winning it. So Kyle Huckstarf just had an awesome game. You know, four hits, two doubles. Um, you know, we would have had a couple home runs. You know. If the wind hadn't been blowing, I mean, Dur- Brennan Dorigi and Sam Peterson just absolutely hammered balls in the eighth inning uh, right to the wall. Um, you know, it would have been long home runs had to happen. But, you know, we need, again, the same story that we've talked about a lot here lately. We've, we've, we've got to clean some things up. I mean, we're in a, we're in a run here where we've made more, more errors um, in the last probably four games than we had in the whole season. And they're they're the they're the wacky errors, they're the pitcher errors. You know, throw a bunt away, throw a pick away. Um, outfielder throws it, skips away. Pitcher doesn't back up. You know, the yeah. base or you know just the, the the stuff that you can't have if you're gonna play consistent winning baseball. And then that's the 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 the, the crazy good thing is that um, we've survived them. But uh, you know, the message to the team after the game was it has to stop if if we want a chance to be. Uh, a, a, a conference championship contender, you know, regionals, World Series, all those things that we've we've been striving for since August. Um, the way we've been playing uh, is certainly not going to get it done. And so you, you you challenge the guys a little bit to to clean it up, even though you won that game and maybe expect a more inspired performance today. Well, I hope so. I just hope I just hope we play clean baseball. I mean, let's get rid of the. I mean, let's get rid of the, the 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 little league stuff that that we've been doing that that just is unacceptable. And um, you know, and, and if we don't shore up the free bases on the mound, I mean, when we get to conference play, it's gonna and we're playing better teams, you know, day in and day out. I mean, that stuff that stuff it just doesn't serve. It, you know, you're you're not gonna survive it. Let's talk about Luke Llewellyn for a minute. You, Will Christofferson is the is the closer, but uh, you threw Luke in there in the in the ninth, and wow, he did a great job for you. It almost feel good to have maybe two closers in your in your pen. Oh, for sure, and that's where you know we felt uh, Luke Luke could do that since the start of the season. It's just get, the games haven't dictated that's what we were going to do, and you know Will still Will Will was still kind of trying to get back to full strength from the the flu, and. Um, you know, on a cold day, he went into a really high leverage situation, uh, bases loaded, nobody out. You know, and, and, and actually did a pretty good job of minimizing what could have been a blowout right there. And um, felt like probably best just to get him out, uh, get him out, and let let Luke come in fresh and, and go. Talking with the head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks Field today. Okay, so we'll we'll see South Dakota State. We didn't play yesterday, so what's the plan for today? We're gonna take South Dakota State for two. We're, well, we're gonna we're gonna play a nine inning game first, and then we're gonna play a seven inning game uh, in game two to shorten it up. I mean, it's it's tough. It was a really tough decision by everyone to to try to figure out what to do today with either just play one game or or, or try to get two in and. Uh, if the forecast holds true and the wind shifts to the southwest, we won't feel that wind nearly as much as we we do the the northwest wind that's blowing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're hopeful that the, the the forecasters are correct and that wind's going to flip about one o'clock. And uh, but definitely a way better day today than it was on Friday. And with uh, the sun out the entire day, and it's not going to be pleasant by any stretch. But uh, you know, felt like we, we, we if we only get if we only play one game, then uh, we're not going to have a chance to get uh, to see some other guys, and we want to see some other pitchers, you know, go today. And uh, so that's the only way we could do it.
What, what are the challenges of a doubleheader to get the guys locked in for two games? This will be our first one of the year. Well, that's another reason, John, that we decided to do this because on average in the Big Ten, um, you know, with us playing in crappy weather all the time, um, on average you play three, three to four weekends uh, every year where you have to play two nine-inning games. We haven't had to play a doubleheader yet this year, so having uh, a chance to – to get to play one before we get the conference, I think is important. That's that's one thing because it's a grind. I mean, it's hard uh, to, to to be locked in, you know, for for two games on, especially on a on a cold day like today. Uh, and it's going to be a real test for for the team. And it's but it's a test that we that we do need because um, it's going to happen in, in Big Ten play, and it, you don't want it to be the first time. Pitching is, is what you kind of got to focus on today with, with so many innings to be played. Maybe it's not too different than a, a regular series in that regard, but we'll go with Marcus in game one, right, Coach? Yeah, we'll start with Marcus and um, likely go right to Simpson. And, you know, hopefully if all goes well, then we, we, we go right to, to Christofferson or Llewellyn or uh, one of our closers. Now, obviously, that's the, be- the best laid plans are, are, are that. Uh, and then in game two, um, right now we're leaning on, leaning towards possibly starting Kate Overmuller, okay. and then uh, then you've got you know possibly Langenberg and the rest of the staff, uh, the guys that we, that you see a lot on the midweek games uh, that we can work in for short stints and get more guys into that game. And uh, but like I said, best that's our best plan. But if you have to use Overmuller, Overmuller or or Langenberg to win game one, then that's what you have to do. What do you see from, from South Dakota State? We already saw them on Friday, but uh, just your impressions of them and, and how we'll attack them today. Well, they, you know, as you saw on Friday, they have some good arms. I mean, and we didn't even see their closer, and let's hope that we don't see him, let's hope that we don't see him today uh, when we're behind because um, he's one of the, the top guys, you know, in the Midwest and for sure, and um, he's got a, just a, a really, really filthy split finger, and he runs it up to 93, and uh, and he throws uh, tons of strikes, and he gets a lot of chases on that split finger, and um, we definitely don't want to see him when we're behind. Sure. Uh, but but like you and I were talking before, I mean, we beat uh, we beat a guy that was running up to 95 with a really good slider um, uh, in 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 Friday's game, and uh, they had used their closer for two and a third, I think, against St. Louis on Wednesday. That's why we didn't see him on Friday. They were giving him a little rest because he went multiple innings. And uh, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna run some decent arms at us. And and uh, the strength of their team is an older an older offense that we don't want to see get going because mm-hmm. they have some pop in there. You know, their they're, they're top five, six guys can leave the yard. And, um, you know, they're going to they're going to pose a big challenge. I mean, you see, I mean, they, they got hits off Brody. They got yeah. hits off, you know, Volkers. And, I mean, on a cruddy day, and uh, it's a much better day today, and it's going to be a win that is, if it if it does shift, like they say, it's a little bit favorable blowing out to right center field. So it uh, it's a day when we definitely want to keep their bats in check. Coach, back to your team for a minute. It, it seems like maybe you've got the, the lineup set, the, the starter set, maybe in the outfield defensively with, with Petey and Huck and then Chase and right. And then the batting order, we noticed you went with uh, Huckstorf batting second and Tello in fifth for a few games in a row now. You, you feel set with your lineup? Well, I mean, it, it's always it always could, could shift. And, um, you know, sometimes it'll shift if we're facing a left-hander. Um, but today we're facing a righty, so it's going to be the, the the lineup we've been running out there, uh, and and we're getting pretty good balance in it. You know, right now, um, you know, Keaton Keaton started off real hot, and then he's he's been a little bit cold, and uh, you know, moving Dorigi up, he's been on fire, just just swinging a you know a really hot bat. He and Huckstore both, so getting them getting them up as much as we can, and then Michael's been. Michael Seegers has been doing a, a good job the last 10 games of getting on base in the leadoff spot, and uh, you know Chase Mosley, um, you know you, you can't look at you can't look at the batting average. I mean he's 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 getting hit two or three times a game it seems like he's walking he's he's getting on base at almost a 500 clip here the last seven eight games, um, and hasn't had a lot of he hasn't had a lot of good pitches to hit to be honest, and um, we feel like his swing's in a good place and. So that's where we're going, and then Petey, uh, you know, Sam Peterson. Um, I think uh, he was in a little bit of a, a, a skid there for a while, and now um, I feel like his swing's in a much better place. And you've seen, uh, you've seen that he isn't chasing near as much as he was um, when he was struggling. And hopefully, we can get Petey hot again and move him back up in the order. 
All right, Coach, before we warm up and, and get ready for first pitch, you're just a couple of keys to victory to get a doubleheader sweep today. Well, um, you know, with Marcus going, you, you, I'd really like to see Marcus go out there and, and give us four or five innings without the, the, the one blip, you know, yeah. the one inning where there's two or three walks with nobody out, and it puts you in a really precarious situation. And, uh, you know, it makes it really a tough decision on what to do as far as who, who go to the bullpen that early or not. And so just hoping that uh, Marcus will come out and give us, uh, you know, some consistency on the mound today um, with, with his start. And if he does, I, I feel like, uh, you know, that'll be good. And then uh, along with that, you don't you don't want to have the long innings on the cold days. We talked about that. You don't want to freeze out your your outfielders, especially, and your infielders. Um, you want to go as quick as you can and get them uh, pound that strike zone and, and and get get them off the field as quick as possible, and and then make the other team stay out there for a long time. And then uh, you know, just as always with the offense, uh, it's a day to day where. You should get rewarded a little more if you're hitting uh, hitting it on the barrel, and hopefully we'll have a few more barrels today and can get some extra base hits and, and really get the offense going. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's win the day and take down the Jackrabbits. All right, thanks, John. There you have it, head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks. It's Iowa and South Dakota State. First pitch coming up in just a few minutes. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oakmill, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmill.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. John Evans and John Leo in the frigid broadcast booth. But we're all right. We're getting ready for first pitch of Iowa Hawkeye baseball this Sunday afternoon. Let's go. Let's get let's get fired up. Uh, a chance to, to win two today. Uh, to, to, to knock down South Dakota State a, a couple of times. Iowa can get to 15 wins if we take care of business today against the Jackrabbits. You know, you heard Coach Heller just talk about it. It's been a good start to the season. It hasn't been a great start to the season. Record-wise, kind of done probably about what you would have expected. Um, you know, maybe maybe overachieved a little bit. But the good news is they've, they've been able to, uh, we've talked about it a couple weeks, you know, learn lessons while winning, which is always a little bit more fun. But uh, I'm going to have to figure some things out here and, and just – not figure some things out, play a little bit cleaner yeah. baseball to, to really get to where they want to get to. But it's March and it's cold. I mean, that, right. it's not it's not supposed to be perfect right now. Yeah, and to to be 13 and three and to have that message be that while we still have not played anywhere close to our best baseball yet, that's just kind of what we hear when we're when, when we're around the guys or around the around the team. And it, I guess that's that's almost a positive to this point, right? To be thirteen and three and to know, shoot, we're not even close to our best. Well, you've been in you've been in the 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 stadium for all sixteen games. I've been in for twelve now, and and I, I don't know that I've seen one yet where where you saw pitching, fielding, and hitting all come together. You know, they, they LSU game. You know, they knocked off the number one ranked team in the country. The bats were there. Um, pitching was competitive, but it wasn't it wasn't a plus. And so, you know, there, there's there's still a lot of growth uh, in what they could do. And, and I think that's the fun and exciting part for for coaching staff, the team, the fans, everybody. And we've got conference play coming up, uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after. And it's Maryland coming to town and, and the Terps, they're supposed to win the Big Ten. We bring the preseason favorite into town. Um, yeah, I was last night. I was looking at uh, uh, the longer range forecast. I'm hoping that uh, Weather Channel or AccuWeather are still off because, boy, it's not particularly promising in a couple of weeks. Better than now, but 
Um, still cold, huh? Still, still Iowa in, in the springtime. And we'll be flipping the calendar uh, from, from March to April when the Terps come to town. We've got two with South Dakota State today. We'll welcome Grandview on Tuesday for a midweek game. And then it'll be three with Western Michigan before we uh, get ready for uh, that, that uh, series with Maryland. All right, starting lineups are being announced now. We'll take our final break uh, just ahead of the anthem when we come back. We'll give you the starting lineups and batting orders. Iowa and South Dakota State coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. All right, moments before the anthem, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, we'll let you tune in to today's national anthem and then get you to starting lineups and batting orders of Iowa and South Dakota State. National Anthem is complete. We're getting set for first pitch, Iowa and South Dakota State. A doubleheader today. The first game will be nine innings. The second game will be seven. In the nine-inning game, there will be, uh, there will be a, a ten-run rule after seven uh, if a team gets up by uh, ten runs following uh, seven innings of play. All right, time for today's starting lineups in batting order. We'll uh, start with South Dakota State, their batting order. Uh, the Jackrabbits will be led off by Ryan McDonald. He's their catcher. Cade Stuff bats second. Dawson Perry, he's their best hitter at, at 400 flat with an average of 400. He will bat third. In the cleanup spot, it's Nick Nelson. Adam Bennis is their designated hitter batting fifth. Luke Ira is their shortstop. He bats Six, seven, eight, nine. Drew Beasley, Jess Bellows, and Reese Anderson. That's the batting order for South Dakota State. Iowa defensively will have Brennan Derigi at first, Sam Honar at second, Michael Seegers at short, Raider Tello at the hot corner at third. In the outfield, left field, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf in center, Chase Mosley in right. Doing the catching today is Cade Moss, and on the mound getting the start for the Hawkeyes is Marcus Morgan. Marcus is uh, 
Uh, Marcus, gosh, you caught me off guard here. I'm, I'm looking around. Marcus making his fifth start of the season, 646 ERA. Doesn't Hasn't factored in a decision yet. 15 and a third innings. He's given up 13 hits, 11 runs, 10 walks, and 15 strikeouts. So as you might imagine, uh, the key every day for Marcus, but but particularly on uh, cold condition day like this, the, the key is strike one here. You know, get ahead of hitters, um, really dominate that strike zone. Uh, you know, not allow any of those free bases. Today, uh, it would have been a great day to to talk with with Coach McGrath, probably the pitching coach. He probably looking forward to to dominating like he always like he always talks about. He he was uh, I, I I was with him in the dugout a little bit before and and it was really that uh, you know be the savage you know yeah. go go to uh, uh, you know it was win the win the day but then he broke it down to hey forget forget the day win each pitch you know go go give your best effort on each pitch and you know we've talked a little bit in in Marcus's previous starts about the mental approach that that Marcus has has really gotten into and and that's kind of the idea of do the best you can with this pitch you know so it's it's you know you, you can't get you can't get 21 guys out right now you can only get one, one at a time and, and you can only do it by executing your plan and your pitch and so he's going to get a chance to do that right now when we talked with coach heller uh, as we get set for first pitch here he, his big thing was to, to avoid that shaky inning from marcus because there will be one uh, so far as ryan mcdonald stands in and fouls off the the first pitch but uh, so far in marcus's season he's been good but there's been that one inning and so today the focus is hey let, let's avoid that one inning where things are a little bit off with the walks Counts one and one now to Ryan McDonald. Marcus has been really good at at throwing three out of four good innings. Right. You know, and it's get four out of four because then you can throw a fifth inning. You know, you can get your you can get a longer appearance. Umpires today, Don Umland is the home plate umpire. Jason Stidham's down the line at first. Matthew Anderson, second base umpire, Jason Hartstick is at third count is two and two after a nice breaking ball from morgan on the inside corner south dakota state in in powder blue uniforms today both tops and bottoms gold state is spelled out in cursive across the chest they've got gold numbers two two pitch from morgan lined in the air to right heading towards foul territory and it'll bounce there in foul territory we'll do it again at two and two the hawkeyes wearing gold tops with white pants they're Typical uh, Sunday uniforms, black Iowa spelled out in script across the chest with black ball caps with the script I on the front panel. Two balls and two strikes. Pitch from Morgan to McDonald is just inside. Looked good, but it's ball three. Must have just been a little up. Good pitch there. Breaking ball from Marcus. You know, been working him away, working him away. Tried to tried to bust him back inside and trick him a little bit. Just didn't get the call. Full count pitch on its way home. There it is. Called third strike on the outside corner with the breaking ball again. Great to see from Marcus. Came right back to it. Threw really two really good breaking balls there on on two two and three two. Um, caught McDonald. Uh, caught McDonald a little off uh, off stride and sent him back to the dugout. Uh, Marcus not a huge strikeout pitcher. He's more of a contact guy. So wow, you start to see a, a strikeout. Uh, type of game from Marcus that'd really say something especially as Marcus gets his velo back up you know, that one's a little bit low but as he gets his velo back up into the mid 90s um, you'll see more strikeouts from him especially if he commands the breaking ball he'll be he'll be a tough guy to hit left-handed hitter and second baseman Cade Stuff is in there now he's worked a, a 2 and 0 count that stuff doesn't really want to walk so be important for Marcus now to battle back and and try to come back at him just yeah he swings over the top of that one marcus put it low in the zone and inside to the lefty hitter two and one stuff just three walks and 59 plate appearances so not uh not a goal of his to take the free base he's all eyes on this one and moss frames it nicely on the outside corner it's two and two what a pitch there from marcus battled back nicely got it even here at two let's see if he uh if he comes back inside or if he stays away on that outer half. Stuff really struggled on Friday. Struck out three times. The 2-2 from Morgan is downstairs. Ball three. 
I had to just heat him back up there and come back on the inside part of the plate. Just overthrew it just a touch. Back-to-back -back full counts to the opening hitters of the game, and this time Morgan walks him. So stuff is on. We had a full count to the leadoff hitter, McDonald, and struck him out. Full count to the two-hitter, Stuff, and walked him. And so Dawson Perry will stand in. Perry, he's their best hitter, uh, 400. Uh, I, I guess based on average, he's hitting 400. You could argue that uh, McDonald is, is their best hitter. He's got six home runs this year. We got to check that. I, I I can't I can't imagine that that's right. That that McDonald has six home runs. He does. That's the guy. That, yeah, he, he's the guy they want to stay. That Iowa doesn't want to let beat him. So nice to get him struck out to lead off the game. Yeah. Short lead at first. Nothing in one pitch to Perry. Here it comes. This one's drilled to center. Huxdorf's going back towards the track, towards the wall. He looks up, and he makes the catch at the base of the wall, and that'll make Stuff go back to first. Two down now. Wow, Perry got a hold of that one. That ball was driven into the right center field gap. Huxdorf tracked it. Uh, not easy for the outfielders to all of a sudden have to sprint. You know, you're kind of standing there. It, it's important that they try to stay loose so that if they're called on, um, Huck tracked that down. Looked like he had a little bobble to it, but was able to able to squeeze it, corral it in, and send uh, stuff back to first base. Two down in the top of the first. Morgan out of the stretch with stuff at first base. First pitch to Nick Nelson. He's their third baseman today. Is high and outside. I'm just looking at South Dakota State's home run numbers. Uh, they've they've got quite a few. An impressive uh, total uh, for South Dakota State so far. And from a lot of different guys, too, right. that have hit a couple at least. So, Morgan missing high again, 2-0. and oh. Nobody that you're uh, – McDonald with, with the six along with uh, four other doubles. You know, you feel like there's some real pop there. But otherwise, it's just guys spread around that, uh, that have done a nice job barreling up and making good contact. 2-0 pitch catches the inside corner. It's 2-1. and one. Nice bounce back there with the curveball. The wind whipping a bit at the ballpark. This pitch is just high, three and one. Wind blowing out to right, so uh, left to right as, as we view it. It'll be part of that shift as the day goes on. It'll be interesting to see. It's foul pole to foul pole now, and then as it gets more out to right, if we actually get the shift. 3-1 pitch is right down the middle. Counts now full. So in th three of the four at-bats that uh, that uh, have been taking place here in this first inning, they've, the count's been run full. So Marcus is getting his uh, pitches up there already uh, in this first. Three balls, two strikes. Runner takes off. This one's ripped foul down the left field line. We'll do it again at three and two. Yeah, when you're planning on playing 16 innings today, you know, not, uh, not ideal, you know, to have a, you know, we're at a 22-pitch inning, I think, right now. And, and so... You know, it'll be great to get through it without any damage if he can if he can get this last out. But, uh, you know, you're going to use a lot of arms today, so you'd like to be more economical here as we go along. Right. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch from Morgan hits softly to Tello, and he's got it in the air for the third out of the inning. All right, so a, a walk to a jackrabbit, and that's it. Other than that, Morgan with a strikeout and a couple of line outs. That'll do it for the top of the first. The Hawkeyes will come to the plate trying to get on the board first this afternoon. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, Avoid touching a power line with anything. 
And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa holds South Dakota State scoreless in the top of the first. Try to put up a few runs in the bottom of the first. Here's the, the batting order for the Hawkeyes today. Michael Seegers will lead things off. Kyle Huxdorf will bat second. Brennan DeRiggy batting third for Iowa. In the cleanup spot is Keaton Anthony. Fifth for Iowa, Raider Tello. Batting sixth is Sam Honar. Seven, eight, nine, Chase Mosley, Sam Peterson, and Cade Moss. Pitching today for South Dakota State right-hander Blake Coons. Coons has a 10.24 ERA. He's 0-2 on the season, three appearances. They're all starts, nine and two-thirds innings. Only given up seven hits, but it's given up 11 runs because he's walked 10. Wow. Struck out 14. Opponents are only hitting 206 against him, but uh, in addition to those 10 walks, five hit by pitches as well. So um, Hawks will have to... Uh, be alert in the batter's box and, and, you know, when they get a pitch, they like drive it and otherwise show some patience and uh, see if they can return the favor and run up Coons pitch count. Seegers leads things off for Iowa. Third baseman playing way in to protect against the bunt. Coons misses low and outside to the Hawkeye leadoff man, Seegers, hitting 317 on the season. Been Iowa's leadoff man all year. 1-0 pitch on its way home. Michael takes it right down central 1-1. One one. Michael's kind of laid claim to that. You know, had that role through nearly every start last year as well. Does a really nice job at the top of the lineup setting the table. 1-1 one one pitch from Coons right there again, 1-2. and two. See, yours has watched these first couple go by. Coons has been upper 80 so far. Uh, touch 90 there. His fastball will be something the Hawkeyes have seen. You know, it's it'll be kind of in that 87 to 90 range, and it'll really be can they can they stay ahead? He wants to work the edges of the plate, try to nibble. Um, hasn't shown really the command to do that, and so it'll be important for Iowa to push him off the edges of the plate and then make him come back and throw strikes across the middle. Counts two and two. This one is low and outside. Count is full to Seegers. Both pitchers in the early going running a ton of full counts. It's not going to help our game time at all. Going to drive it up there, John. Seegers in the box. The three two on its way home. Fouls it off to the right side. I think if you learn from Friday, jump on these guys early and, and see what what transpires after that. South Dakota State scored first in the game. Seegers pops this one up to shallow center. Center fielder Anderson sprinting forward. Loses his ball cap. He looks up. He's got it out number one. Yeah, South Dakota State was up. They, they scored their two runs in the third, and uh, Iowa was able to answer in the in the bottom of the third, but hey, let's let's just get on these guys right away. Well, that's Iowa didn't uh, Iowa didn't score Friday unless they were uh, encouraged. There were two in the third and two in the eighth from from South Dakota State, and Iowa responded with two in the third and three in the eighth to, to get the win. It's Kyle Huxdorf's turn now. First pitch missing inside to him. I felt for you. I thought you might end up in extra innings if the way that <laughs> the, the way the comeback was looking there. So. The guys took care of business. 1-0 pitch from Coons. Swing and a foul tip back into the glove. Current temperature in Iowa City right now is 33, but it feels like 25. Beautiful. Whew. Huck had four of the nine hits Friday down in Kansas City, and really is, since he's come back and done a nice job tightening up the swing. and He's been really sharp, I think, since his his little injury that you know early in the season – uh, outstanding on Friday has really turned things up and th with the 429 batting average. Hits this on the ground to third. It's bobbled there by the third baseman. He's not going to have a play. It'll be an error on Nelson at third. He's kind of caught him on the, the short hop there, and, and Huck is on. Yeah, he really needed to. It really either needed to come forward hard when he saw the high hop or, or play a good short hop, and he kind of got caught in between 
Uh, so then when it got on him, he was really stuck, and it just kind of bounced right up, right, bounced right up, rolled up his arm, and um, put Huck on first base. It's Brennan DeRiggi's turn now, leading the team in RBIs with 20. 375 batting average, has a, a handful of home runs with three. Outfield for South Dakota State plays him to pull with the wind blowing out to right. First pitch to DeRiggi is outside, ball one. Noticed the past couple series and, and games that teams really trying to go outside to DeRiggi, which almost helps him with that opposite field power that he's got. You would think so, but um, it's had, had Brennan a little, uh, it takes him a bat or two to get kind of settled back in as he, he's, he's had a hard time. And I say, again, we... He has a hard time, and he's hitting 375. So, so really struggling with it. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it, it does seem to take him kind of an at-bat to see how they want to attack him. And then, you know, the 50-year guy understands what they're trying to do and, and is, able to, is able to counteract that and do a really nice job. Coons, the pitcher, is, is pretty concerned about Huxdorf taking off for second. He's throwing a couple of pickoff moves over there. He's got a little bit of a slower move, at least – on this one, so just trying to keep Huck close. Two balls, no strikes. They'll go over there again to first, and Kyle's back safely. I think I heard Coach Heller in your pregame with him on Friday talk about the South Dakota State pitchers are quick to the plate. So, you know, where the series before Iowa had a chance to run because the pitchers were a little slower in Lubbock. That one misses inside. Um, you know, th these pitchers have tended to be quicker to the plate, so... Um, you really have to kind of pick your spot, you know, go on first move. But, you know, if, if they're keeping you close and snapping balls over there, it's going to be a little harder to steal bases even for somebody like Huxdorf. Three balls and no strikes. Now those pitches right down the middle, three and one. Because Huck's up. He has nine stolen bases on ten tries so far this year. That's kind of snuck up, hasn't it? Because really the, has. the first couple of series, Iowa was – not stealing the bases. There goes Huxdorf, swing and a miss at home plate. The throw down is snagged by the second baseman, but Huxdorf is in there with a stolen base. It'll be a full count for DeRiggi. So give Huck 10 now, yeah. as we were talking about. So, But, yeah, there the really uh, wasn't a ton of running in, in Florida and wasn't really that much when we, were, uh, when we were in Round Rock, and it's really picked up here in the last two weeks. Three balls, two strikes with one out. Pitch to DeRiggi. That's way inside. Gets away from the catcher as well. So Huxdorf will go to third. Runners on first and third for Keaton Anthony. Yeah, that breaking ball just missed way inside. I'm uh, not sure. Not sure DeRiggi re realized or remembered he had three balls on him already because he was kind of in the box and hanging out. One of those that, uh, you know, again, you don't want to get hit by a pitch today anyway, but. Um, when it's that wild, you know, get out of the way. Make sure the runner can advance yeah. as well. All right, it's Keaton Anthony's turn, designated hitter, batting in the cleanup spot. Keaton's dipped below 300 in the average, swinging for the fences there. Comes up empty, 0-1. I, I don't know a ton about batting swings, but it just feels like his swing's gotten just a touch longer. He's had a hard time, you know, like that, the high fastball. Teams have been able to get up in the zone on him, a little bit like what we were talking about with Huck earlier. Ooh, this one hit him up and in, and Anthony is on, gets hit in the left shoulder blade. That doesn't feel good today when it feels like 25. Yeah, I don't care if that's an off-speed pitch Ooh. or not. It's still going to sting a little bit. And so that'll bring the, the pitching coach for South Dakota State out now that uh, Coons has walked and hit uh, a batter in this inning. So Iowa threatening, bottom of the first. The bases are loaded with one out, and it's Red Raider Tello's turn. First, this mound visit taking place. Tello time. I like that when you did that uh, the other day. Yeah, you know, Raider has uh, got a great listenership of family members that are tuned into our games, and I bet they're warmer than we are. I would imagine so. Raider coming from uh, out west. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're probably <laughs> doing a little bit better than, than we are today. <laughs> I like their chances that uh, their temperature is above 32. Yeah. Probably not uh, thinking that the temperature can get that low. <laughs> um, 
out in California. Bases loaded for Tello. First pitch to him. He pops it up, fouling out of play. Took a healthy cut at that one. Yeah, he saw a high fastball and thought, uh, thought let's, go, uh, let's go visit one of those cars parking for the women's tournament game going on over across the street at Carver. Got a shot to really uh, – pedestrians have to have their heads up right now with the uh, one pitch to Tello high and outside. It's, it's funny when, when there's practice you know, or BP going on, there are a couple of managers or, or uh, uh, folks out there that are – Heads up for the home runs, right, to protect the folks that are walking. Shagging through traffic. Yep. Yeah. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Tello. That's in the dirt ball, too. You, you got to think about how many cars uh, maybe take a take a BP ball off the <laughs> off the frame out there driving in that road beyond uh, center and left center. For sure. There's there's a good <laughs> chance to say hi there. And you know, we're half hour, 40 minutes from game time over there. Good crowd walking in. S Tello swings and misses the high fastball again. Uh, but yeah, that crowd's been crowd's been going in for 40 minutes. It's, it'll be it'll be pretty neat over there to have another sellout for uh, for the tournament game. And I had to ask you to make sure the game was still at two because <laughs> I saw people going in there so early. Two balls, two strikes to Tello with the bases loaded and one out. Long pause in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Tello goes down. He's out number two. I think Tello, much as I hate to think about it, was almost looking off speed there. That ball kind of got, was fastball right down the middle of the plate and almost uh, almost fooled him and you know got past him and, and struck him out. Well, a uh, familiar position that Iowa was in on Friday with runners on and, and opportunities to score and just didn't. Sam Honar will try to change that tune. First pitch swinging, and he comes up empty. Bases are still loaded with two outs here in the bottom of the first. Hawks have done a good job with, you know, the, the, they've, made the, they've made the fastball become the pitch. They, they haven't chased a lot of breaking stuff. Um, problem is they haven't made contact with the fastball right now. Honar's got the pop in the bat. The 0-1 pops it up left side into foul territory. Looks like it's going to get out of play, and it will. Foul ball, 0-2. So now here you really want to be alert if you're Huxdorf down at third. Figure that uh, he's thrown a lot of fastballs here. He's kind of stopped messing around, but now ahead 0-2, you know, maybe he's going to go try to see if he can get Honar to get himself out, but a ball that bounces... Might uh, might cause some problems. 0-2 to Honar. Fouled back to the screen. And I'll bounce off one of the poles and go right back to the to the pitcher. We'll do it again at 0-2. And, and this is early. This is kind of a, a gut check time for South for South Dakota State. Thinking like how much are they, you know, running on fumes here at the end of this big road trip for them. And boy, if they get out of a bases loaded jam, they'll certainly be fired up. Put some bounce back in their step as they hustle into the dugout and Honar can uh, do a nice job and take some of that away. Nothing in two to Honar. The pitch. Check swing. Did not go. Oh, that like, was way out of the I zone. I like your enthusiasm. It did not go. I noticed when you did the highlights in the pregame that uh, without me there on Friday, they were much smoother, and there was no uh, oohs and Ooh. ahs in between. Nothing. You're setting me up, John. Well, I, I just <laughs> I interject too much during your highlights. Well, that's, how, that's how people know that I was alone. For that <laughs> one, right? How about an ooh and an ah right here and a base hit for Sam Honar? Get us on the board. Bottom of the first. Scoreless. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded. Pitch to Honar. Swing and a miss. He goes down on strikes. Chased one outside of the zone away from him. Well, it looked like it was... On the corner, good pitch from Coons. The Hawks will leave them loaded. We've played one at Dwayne Banks, scoreless between Iowa and South Dakota State. Back after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! 
When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. All right, top of the second in game one of today's doubleheader with South Dakota State. Adam Bennis will lead things off. We're scoreless after one. Man, the Hawks had the bases loaded with one out and then uh, struck out back-to-back to end the inning. So nothing, nothing is our score in the second. Bennis swings over the top of a Marcus Morgan breaking ball, and it's 0-1. And to your point, you know, you would have liked to have tested the Jackrabbits' resolve. You know, go ahead and get on him early. It's another good Morgan breaking ball curls in for a strike so he's ahead 0-2 but just see how interested they were to play if they're down 2-0 or 3-0 or 4-0 after an inning Morgan is sharp there three pitches all of them strikes and Bennis is caught looking on the outside corner he is out number one not sure about Bennis's bewilderment with that one that was uh, that was just a good fastball other, other than he was fooled by it expecting uh, he got started off with a couple breaking balls and wasn't ready to see the fastball here's Luke Ira he's their shortstop right-handed hitter first pitch from Morgan is low and outside ball one nice homecoming for Luke he's from Solon High School just uh, just up highway one there He had a big hit. Uh, he had a big hit on Friday too, if I remember right. Early on, drove one to the wall over Petey's head. So it, it makes you wonder uh, if if Morgan and Ira uh, ever went head to head in in the high school days. Morgan's fallen behind three and zero oh to the senior infielder for South Dakota State. Yeah, Luke could be just a little bit older, but you would think somewhere along the way they might have crossed paths. Different high school classes, but still a figure of the AAU circuit. Sure. Counts three and one after Morgan pumps a strike on the inside corner. Morgan with a couple of strikeouts today. Operating out of the windup. He's set with the three one. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. High heater. Three and two. Good fastball there. Got it up on the upper part. Looked too good for Ira to stay off of and got back now where he's got a chance to get the out here. Pitch from Morgan. That's inside ball four. Worked all the way back. Couldn't seal the deal. And so just like the first inning, Morgan starts the the leadoff with a strikeout, but then walks the next batter. So it's Drew Beasley up now. Beasley's their right fielder, right-handed hitter. Ira's got a little speed. He's stolen three bases on the year. And tough day for the catcher to transition and make a throw here. So. Small lead, but he's leaning towards second. First pitch from Morgan is outside, ball one. I was able to get on that first batter, did a nice job throwing strikes there, three consecutive. And as he went back to the fastball and the cutter, he's just had a hard time locating. And Beasley's prone to the strikeout. He struck out twice on Friday. Counts even at one and one after a nice one from Morgan. I think they want to try to Try to work that the breaking stuff down in a way and figure that uh, Beasley will go after it. But you gotta you gotta throw competitive pitches. This one is crushed to left. It's trouble into the corner and it is off the wall. South Dakota State will have runners at second and third. That one was smoked by Beasley. Mm. Spinner right in the middle of the plate there. Hit that one. Uh, 328. Fortunately, the wall there was about 330, so uh, didn't quite uh, didn't quite get it all the way out. But, uh, now Marcus will have to buckle up here and yeah. see if he can get out of the jam. 
Runners at second and third for SDSU in the top of the second. One out in the inning. It's Bellows, and Bellows was really good for the Jackrabbits on Friday. He had uh, two singles and a double, so he was three for four with an RBI and a run scored. Corners are in for the Hawkeyes. Morgan with his work cut out for him. First pitch to Bellows. He skies it foul and out of play to the right side. Started off with the fastball here. Now, be interesting to see if they start trying to spin him away, too. And, you know, Marcus tried to go to that, but really missed it in the middle of the plate. And he was he was punished for the miss with Beasley as he drove it to left field. A one pitch, just low. And Bellows lays off. But we go back to it. We talk about it all the time. I mean, that's where the free bases kill you. You know, you've given up one hit, but you've got two runners in scoring position now. 1-1, one, one, tap just foul, 1-2. and two. And this is a, a big part of the game early because you know, if you give South Dakota State hope early on, they're going to play you hard the whole way through where you know, if, maybe we could take advantage of runners in scoring position. We could keep them down, but they're looking to strike first here in the second. 1-2 pitch from Morgan. Here it comes, way outside, gets by Moss. Here comes the runner. Moss flips it to Morgan, but the throw is high, and the run will score. Had plenty of time, but the delivery to Morgan, who was covering home, made Marcus jump for it, and so he's safe at home. Pretty good uh, pretty good athletic play from Morgan just to keep the ball from ending up back in the middle of the infield. But, yeah, I almost wondered if Cade had a chance with the ball ricocheting off the, the backstop so hard to make the tag himself. Instead, tried to didn't really gather himself and tried to quick backhand flip it, uh, but but had more time than he thought he did. But... You know, that clock's ticking in your head pretty quick. It's, yeah. a, it's a tough play as a catcher. You don't really expect to have a chance, but he really did there. Two and two from Morgan. Runner at third. This pitch is right back to Marcus. Runner tries to score. Marcus bobbled it. He has only play as the first where they get him out there, but South Dakota State scores another run on a comebacker to Morgan. Uh, Marcus just, th that was... Th the, the runner was moving on contact, so it was a contact play the whole way. Marcus had him just dead to right at home plate, um, but actually glanced up at him, and then ball squirts through his legs. He was fortunate to be able to, uh, to throw the runner out at first or the hitter out at first, but you know, it won't go as an error because he got an out, but that's the, that's the, that's the error that really Coach Heller's been talking about that just really hurts. It's just right. those small those small. Uh, almost mental mistake that, that causes you a problem. Coach Heller talked about bunt coverages. He talked about uh, pitchers fielding. One and one is the count to, to Anderson, and, and that's it right there. You, you just don't want to be overly critical. But the, the runner at third, he was head down sprinting for home, and, and that, that that is a base running mistake uh, in and of itself on, on a comeback or right to the pitcher. I guess you could say he's going on – on contact, but boy, you're, most people are taught when you're at third, you're going on contact unless it's to the third baseman or pitcher, and that was right to him. Counts one and two. Pitch from Morgan is outside two and two. I'm just putting on my coach's cap there for a minute. I took the well, broadcaster cap off. Yeah, exactly, and and that's the, uh, you know, you'd like to think you've got some idea, but you know maybe it's hey, he makes contact, you're going no matter what. Two two is hit to Honar at second. He gloves it. For the third out of the inning, but South Dakota State, they strike first, and they're up 2 nothing. We'll head to the bottom of the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Well, 
Well, similar to Friday, South Dakota State has scored first against the Hawkeyes. They lead 2-0 here in the bottom of the second. Hawks will have to answer, which they did uh, on Friday when South Dakota State South Dakota State scored two in the third. Iowa came right back, scored two also in the bottom of the third. Now have to try to do that in this instance against Blake Coons, the South Dakota State pitcher. The Hawks had the bases loaded in the first, but couldn't bring anybody in. A couple walks and a hit batter. Um, loaded up the bases for the Hawks, but, but really, uh, I don't know that they actually put a ball into play then. Two strikeouts after that, and uh, so you're just kind of a struggle. I guess Seegers flew out, so we did have one ball out in play, but Hawks will have to really get kind of locked in here to try to try to get going. Actually, right, it wasn't a it was an error on the third baseman. It was only one walk. Right, Seegers flied out, an error and a walk and a hit batter. Loaded the bases for Iowa in the first. Back-to-back -back strikeouts ended the threat. Here's Chase Mosley. He's got a one and one count on him. Watch the first pitch sail outside for a ball. Next one just on the outside corner chase we've talked a lot about him batting average is is a little bit low but man he gets on base like nobody else one one to mosley curve ball outside two and one yeah batting average of 172 but on base on base percentage of 489 yeah. so so really done a nice job um being able to create traffic get on base two one to chase is downstairs three and one yeah, like that's a good pitch uh, you know, good fastball, lower, lower outside part of the plate, but Chase held off, and it was just a little too low for for umpire Umland, and he's ahead in the count now. Three one, Chase rips it down the left field line, but it tails foul into the South Dakota State bullpen, and he was early on that one and really ripped it. Hit it hard, got a kind of a fastball he liked on the inner half, and got it, got the bat head out and got it around, but um, just yanked it foul. Three balls, two strikes to Mosley. He lays off, and he's on again this season with a, a leadoff walk in the bottom of the second. I don't mind seeing the pitcher throw a curveball on three and two, but, boy, it's got to be a competitive one. That, that missed by a long ways, and Chase wasn't, uh, wasn't in a, a chasing mood. That one was not particularly close. Sam Peterson is up. Healthy hack on the first pitch. Sends it back to the pad. It's 0-1. Back to the pad and out into the infield. <laughs> yeah, the, the pad's probably pretty uh, pretty cold. There's probably not much that it's welcoming in. It's uh, sending everything back. It's more of a brick wall today. Frozen spring today. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing in one is a count to Peterson. The pitch. Sam, uh, Sam hits this one in the air to deep right. It's carrying well. The right fielder is moving back towards the track, but he's got it for the first out of the inning. Mosley will go back to first. Wow, Sam really skied that one into the air. That ball carried a lot farther than I thought it was going to yeah. get. I thought it was kind of a routine out. And he kept tracking and going, but uh, kept tracking and going, so it was uh, it turned, into a, it turned into a long out. Check on Mosley at first. The batter is Cade Moss. He's the nine hitter. Not sure what that is. <laughs> Chase has got some speed, too. He's stolen four bases on the year. Moss fouls off the, the first pitch, 0-1. You, you wonder with Iowa trailing now 2-0 what, what they like to do if they try to get more runners in scoring position. That hasn't really been the problem, getting them in scoring <laughs> positions, but getting them home. Yeah, been able to get uh, been able to get the base runners out there to second and third. Just that key, that timely hit. You know, they, I think I saw in the game notes 44 two-out runs now. But um, We've we, probably been up at that number for a while because it just hasn't, feel, it hasn't felt like uh, Iowa's had those lately. But, you know, Hux, Hux RBI in, in the eighth inning there, that was two outs. Sure. So uh, I was still still able to do it. It just feels like there's, you know, they've created a lot of early traffic. You know, bases loaded one out last inning. You're not able to get any, and that's the hard part. Moss fouls this back to the screen. It's 0-2. You just you don't want to fixate on it, but uh, 
South Dakota State use their momentum of getting out of that bases loaded jam to score a couple of runs by them by themselves. Where if Iowa puts up a big number in the first, we have a totally different game. And now Iowa trailing two nothing, bottom of the second. O2 pitch to Moss, swing and a miss. Chased it high. He's out number two. Good high fastball there. Might have been strike three anyway, but Chase couldn't get up. To, or I'm sorry, uh, Cade couldn't get the bat up to the to the fastball, and that'll leave it up to Seegers to see if he can keep the inning alive. Mosley still at first. Here is Seegers. He lined out to center to start the Hawkeyes' offensive show today. Iowa trailing 2-0. Check on... Mosley at first. Coons is just trying to keep him close. I can't imagine that that's his best pickoff move, his, his fastest one. So he's just going with his alternate one. It's, it's got to be because it's, it's a very slow, you see it coming from a mile away, move <laughs> over to first. Seegers check swing. And they're not even going to send it down. Well, now they do. And he did not go around, so it's 1-0. I mean, Coons has a little bit of an unusual setup. He's got his... Left foot, his lead foot is well in front of his, his right foot on the rubber, and so it'll be a little harder to swing that thing around. Now Seegers will take this one on the outside corner, one and one. I see what you're saying with, with the with the stance there. It's totally closed off. He's much closer to the uh, third base side with his front foot. There's a quicker move over to first, but Mosley was ready for it, and he's back in there safely. Because, I mean, you're going to have to jump your feet all the way around to get into the throwing position at that point to first base. It, it, it makes him faster to home plate, I would imagine, um, but it doesn't do him any favors getting it over to first base. Let's find a gap here, Michael. 1-1, one, one, runner takes off. Michael pops it up into foul territory. First baseman giving chase. Still towards the wall there, and it bounces foul. It's 1-2. and two. Hit and run was on there for the Hawks. Chase had a really good jump, and... Michael went after the pitch. It was just a, a breaking ball down low. Um, but was just able to kind of flare it out down the right field line and chased after there from, uh, from Perry, but he couldn't get there. Fortunate to, to have another uh, opportunity here for Michael. I think the wind played some tricks on that ball to get away. Runner takes off again. Seegers taps it in fair territory. Didn't run towards first base. He took off briefly down the line and then stopped, and the catcher just tags him out. Nothing doing for Iowa in the bottom of the second. All right, we go to the third. South Dakota State 2, Iowa 0. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the third inning from Dwayne Banks this Sunday afternoon. It'll be the top of the order for South Dakota State. McDonald, Stuff, and Perry. And the Jackrabbits have a 2-0 lead on the Hawkeyes. So got to put up a zero here. Can't let that lead get any bigger. Important inning for Marcus. You know, he and I talked in Lubbock about how that third inning had kind of been his, his struggle. Uh, maybe, maybe today the second inning was his struggle now, and he'll come in and put up a zero here. First pitch to McDonald is down and in, ball one. Now the plan is to go to Jared Simpson when Morgan's day is done. Don't see any loosening in the bullpen, so uh, it's still all on Marcus in the third. 1-0 pitch, that's downstairs, ball two. Didn't miss by much there, but that's been you know the, to the top of the order uh, in the first inning. That was the, the struggle for Marcus was full count, full count, full count. 
And it's really dangerous when you fall behind to McDonald, who's got six home runs on the season. But 2-0 pitch is in there for a called strike, 2-1. and one. Really good breaking ball there. Kept it down in the lower portion. And that's another one from Marcus. This one's on the outside corner, probably off it a little bit. It's 2-2 two and two now that uh, McDonald swung at it and missed it. Showed him a good breaking ball there, cut him on that outer half and then broke it off his bat. 2-2, two, two, just high. And it's 3-2, and two. breaking ball there Marcus went with. Yeah, third straight breaking ball there. So now 3-2. and two. He'd had, had a hard time locating the fastball. See if, he, see if he sticks to the good curveball or goes back to the fastball. 3-2's tapped foul down the third base line. We'll do it again at 3-2. and two. Stuck to the good curveball that time, so. Morgan has led off every inning, each of the first two, I guess, with a, with a strikeout. Try to keep it going in the third. 3-2 pitch on the ground and fair down the third base line. It goes off the umpire, and it'll be a single for Ryan McDonald. Hawks catch a break there as Tello couldn't glove it, but the ball hit off the umpire's midsection, which kept that ball from just kind of bouncing into the corner, which easily would have put McDonald at second base. Yeah, for a moment, I thought that was going to be a, a bad break for Iowa, but you're right because that would have been deep into the corner, and it wasn't hit overly hard either, but just past Tello uh, right over the line and over the bag at, at third. Jade Stuff stands in. He walked. His first time up, Morgan pitches outside to him, ball one. McDonald's six for six with stolen bases as well, so he's a threat to go. Marcus will have to keep him close, be quick to the plate. 1-0 pitch on its way home, hit back to the screen, one and one. Does that surprise you a little bit, John, that, that McDonald is 100% on stolen bases? He doesn't necessarily look like your prototypical base stealer but yeah. my guess is based on the way he hits he's just a baseball player sure and so just kind of does everything well one one pitch on the outside corner a bit of a late call and marcus got it it's one and two that he's their catcher so i mean he kind of commands the game from there so he said probably just uh just a, just a guy that knows how to knows how to play baseball could use a ground ball or a strikeout right here, Marcus. The one-two, same place. Didn't get the call this time, and it's two and two. Missed that one just wide, maybe a little bit higher, and didn't quite suit uh, home plate umpire Umland's eye. That's a really good pitch, and, and good job by Stuff to, to lay off it. Two-two, that's too far outside now, and it's a full count. Yeah, breaking ball that time just floated out there. You know, this type of, uh, you really have to get a good grip on your breaking ball because it's it, you know, just so easy for it to kind of slip out of your hand or, or just not rotate and get the spin. 3-2, swing and a miss. He got him. He buried him with a an off speed that was low and in and stuff right over the top of it. Went back to the went to the kind of a back foot breaking ball there and really good pitch there. Uh, Might have caught the bottom Bottom corner of the strike zone anyway, but uh, stuff swung right over the top of it. Big first out of the inning for Marcus Morgan. Runner on first is McDonald. Here's Perry. First pitch to Perry's inside ball one. Boy, McDonald's dancing around there at first. I think it heard a couple of the Iowa infielders tell Marcus to, to step off there for a second, but he... Deals the first pitch inside for a ball. Marcus had him picked off at first because McDonald was overly antsy, took yeah. off, and then had to retreat. 1-0 pitch, good cut, fouled off to the right side, 1-1. One and one. one down in the top of the third, Iowa trailing South Dakota State 2-0. Iowa pitchers tend to look more out of habit than than look over, so then that way the other team can't really time it up. But in that case, a quick look over. He probably had him punched out. Sure. Counts two and one to Perry. Again, Perry's another one of those guys. A little bit of pop. Has driven in 12 runs so far, so needs to go. needs to go be careful, but go get him. Ah, the 2 1 pitch hit him. Went with a breaking ball, and it got him in the same place that Keaton Anthony got hit in the left 
shoulder blade, and now a couple on for South Dakota State. Hawks playing with fire today uh, in, the, in the first few innings. The next Jackrabbit batter, third baseman, Nick Nelson. Nelson's turn. He lined out softly to Tello at third. Runners on first and second for the Jackrabbits in the top of the third. They got a couple of hits. Two runs across already. First pitch from Morgan is way outside. Moss has to contort his body to go get it. A quick visit here from Coach McGrath. Marcus is a little bit of everywhere right now. You, you don't feel bad when he's missing close to the strike zone, but right now balls are flying just a little bit of everywhere. Just really, it's got to be incredibly tough to to grip and pitch a baseball today. You got, you got the wind chill, the real feel, whatever you want to call it, at 25 degrees. Uh, you know that's a hard ball that you're gripping on the laces, right? And and just your your hands are out in the open. I can't feel my fingers. Right. I mean, know. we're up in the booth here, and we're yeah, we're and, and we have gloves on, and we're t now. Granted, he's probably got hot hands somewhere, and. And, you know, when he gets in the dugout, Coach Heller in pregame, one of the things he emphasized was quick innings. You know, you got to get your fielders back in, and, and that's one thing that Iowa hasn't been able to do so far. Even even the first inning when Marcus put up a zero, it was, you know, it was 20-plus pitches. Um, and then, you know, struggled for command in the second inning and, and now struggling here so far in the third. 1-0 pitch to Nelson is outside, ball two. Had a ton of double plays against South Dakota State on Friday. Need one here. Iowa trailing by two in the top of the third. Morgan comes set. It's ready with the 2-0. Here it comes on its way home. That's low, ball three. And Nelson looks like a candidate for that, but you've just got to throw him a, a competitive pitch to get him to want to go. And I don't really think you're going to want to load up the bases here and um, again on a freebie of uh, even worse. Designated hitter Bennis is on deck. 3-0 pitch from Morgan. Ooh, he had the green light. Swing and a miss. 3-1. and one. Got to admit to being a little surprised by a 3-0 green light, but maybe they're just trying to keep him warm. Yeah. <laughs> Element to surprise, too, maybe. Ed. I was able to come in with some strikes in these 3-0 counts this afternoon. 3-1 pitch. That's on the outside corner. Strike two. Uh, so you've got a pitcher struggling to command the zone, though, and you swing at 3-0. You get a chance to really jump on Iowa and, and kind of crush a little spirit there. But instead, he swings at it, gets a good call, and then Marcus misses wide for ball four anyway. Wow, South Dakota State is really fired up, too, because Nelson got that walk on that pitch that was outside, and he just bat flipped his bat over to the to the dugout like he hit a moonshot or something. I think he was a little. Uh, I think he thought he should have been there the first pitch. Sure. The, the pitch before that was pretty good and and wasn't a wild strike called. But see if the Hawks can roll two on the middle infield here. Bases are loaded for South Dakota State with one out in the third. They lead two nothing. First pitch from Morgan is a called strike down the heart of the plate. This is Bennis who struck out in the second. Bennis is 273 on the season. A couple home runs, a double. So good. It's below the knees, ball one. Good pitch there from Marcus. Just missed down low. Good eye from Bennis to not go chasing. He knows Marcus is going to have to come work in the zone here with the bases loaded. One ball and a strike with one out. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch. Called strike. Blowing outside corner, one and two. And Marcus caught the bottom end of the strike zone there. Big pitch here. You know, if he can work that spot and, you know, at the very least get a ground ball and, and maybe just get the strike out to save the, save the hassle on the infield. One, two from Morgan. Called third strike on the outside corner. He got him. Two down. Just kind of dotted it up there. That low outside corner kept the ball down. Made it in a tough place to hit, but now Ira showed, showed Friday. He's got some pop here, so and obviously an experienced hitter as a senior. So Both teams in the early going with uh, opportunities.
Bases loaded for South Dakota State. Top of the third. They're up 2-0. Ira pops this one up. Shallow left. Peterson coming forward. Seeger's going back. Peterson calls him off. And Sam's got it for the third out of the inning. So this time, the Hawkeyes, they're the ones that get out of the bases loaded jam. Nothing for South Dakota State in the third. Good pitching there from Marcus. You know, strike one. I mean, that, that's what yeah. it boils down to. He, he he did a good job with, with one out and then threw a good pitch there that was down in the strike zone. Ira went after it and popped it up into short left and out of the jam. Bottom of the third we go. Iowa trailing 2 nothing. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. Shelter Insurance, we're your shield, we're your shelter. All right, approaching the middle innings, bottom of the third, Iowa trailing 2 nothing. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Kyle Huxdorf leading off the inning. First pitch strike from Coons. Well, John, we're looking for our first hit. Uh, we've had base runners, but haven't had a hit yet. Four base runners, and uh, yeah, really haven't had a ton of solid contact yet either. Kyle doesn't chase a an 0-1 breaking ball. Coons, as we mentioned in the open, Coons just 206 is all opponents hit on him. Nice Ooh. breaking ball, but it's out of the zone inside and a bit low too. Two and one. I'm just checking the stack cash. You know, Marcus up to 72 pitches already. Time is called from behind home plate. Not sure what happened there. Stepped out and looked over at the, the jacker of a dugout like he was mad about something and wrote something down. Now it counts three and one to Huxdorf now. Bottom of the third, Iowa trailing 2 nothing. But after a tough first inning, Coons did a nice job bouncing back in the second inning to limit his pitch count. Ooh. All right, Huxdorf takes this one. Ball four, just off the plate outside, and so the leadoff man is on for Iowa in the third. Huck got on on the air, stole a base in the first inning. Ended up stranded down at third base, so... The Hawks will be able to keep the Marigo around one spot farther this time. Here's Brennan DeRiggi. First pitch strike to him. A lot of room in left center for Brennan. Takes this one, and it's one and one now. We were kind of joking in the first step back. He was trying to get, uh, you know, it, Brennan, Brennan takes a lot of pitches. You know, he works the counts well and, and gets into it. And hopefully he keeps it to a pitcher's count or a hitter's count where he can really get after one. Doree's seemingly been quiet the past few days. Maybe that's just me. Uh, he is hitting 375. He's, he's getting on base. A quiet stretch for him. Count is one and one. They've checked on Huckstorf a couple of times over there at, at first. Well, I think it's fu it's funny with Brennan because you know when he hits the ball, he tends to hit it so hard. Yeah, doesn't always go for a base hit, but he makes barrel contact a lot. He's just surprised when he doesn't, right? Exactly. You're you're 
you're more surprised when his exit velo isn't around 100 than you are when, you know, when he pops one at 105. One ball and a strike. Pitch to DeRiggy. Lays off it. It's in the dirt. Ball two. Brennan's that guy when he has an 80 exit velo. You're like, wow. <laughs> that <laughs> what does, happened? That never happens. Yeah, right. Okay, still looking for their first hit. DeRiggy could provide it. 2-1 pitch. Hits it foul. Straight back 2-2. Two and two. What, are you, what are you seeing from the Hawkeyes so far offensively? Have not been able to figure out this pitcher in Coons from South Dakota State. Got a couple of walks and whatnot, but that's it. Coons has really done a good job. He's got the fastball up in the strike zone. He's thrown strikes, um, which had been kind of a struggle for him for the most part, but he's really located up, and Hawkeye hitters haven't been able to get up high enough. Runner takes off for a second. Here's one on the ground. Through into center field. Huxdorf will round second, head to third. The hit and run is on. A base hit for DeRiggy. I thought two different guys were going to catch that, so I'm not sure. I <laughs> thought the pitcher had a good play at it. I thought the second baseman had a good play at it. Um, it's one of those where the hit and run almost comes back to bite you uh, because you send the, the fielders into the spot. Um, but Hawkeyes have a chance now here. Nobody out, runners on the corners. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. I thought maybe the pitcher was going to catch up. We would have been in a lot of trouble. We'd been our break by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Keaton Anthony who stands in, runners on the corners. Nobody out for the Hawkeyes. Bottom of the third, trailing by two. First pitch to Anthony is up and in, a breaking ball, ball one. Big high floating breaking ball there, and it's actually the pitch that Anthony took off the back in the first inning, so he was glad to see it more out over the plate. How about a little bit more over the plate, John? What do you think? I Keaton's think, due for a big one. I think Keaton's got a good chance to send one out over to uh, out over into the dental parking lot. How about that? Yeah, it's, t it's time for one of those. Counts 1-0. and oh. Pitch to Anthony. That's up and in. Oh, call the strike. Good spot, I guess, from Coons. It caught the corner. It's 1-1. One one. Yeah, if you're Coons, that's the, that's the exact spot you want to hit. Kind of the the very upper inside corner of the strike zone that uh, Anthony's not going to be able to do anything with that one. One and one. Keaton hits this one in the air to right, carrying towards the wall, but it won't have enough. Huxdorf will tag and score. The Hawkeyes are on the board on the sacrifice fly from Keaton Anthony. Good ball there. and Again, it's another one of those that just goes to show how much, how much drift there is to right field. That ball... Uh, didn't really look like Keaton got all of it and, it, and it floated out there a long way. So, you know, hitters, if hitters can make solid contact, they've got a chance to, to cause some damage here with the ball carrying out pretty well. One out in the Hawkeye third. It's two to one. This one goes over Tello's head. DeRiggy will take off for second. He's in there safely. All right, Hawks in business in the third. That was a breaking ball that Tello had to duck from. Well, we've talked about it with both pitchers. You know, it, it's, you know, your hands get a little, uh, a little crusty, dried out. You know, it's, it's just hard to, to get that grip, and especially if you're relying on, on spin. So DeRiggy stands at second. The 1-0 pitch way low and outside. Looks like Coons is kind of losing a little bit here. Went back to the fastball there and, and overthrew it a bit and uh, didn't quite spike it. But um, catcher McDonald is going to go have a chat. Say, hey, I'm getting a little bit of a workout here. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you're, you're throwing them high. You're throwing them low, in, out, all that. And now a 2-0 count to Tello. Nice little slow walk back and no real rush. And just enjoying the weather, I guess. <laughs> Out for a walk. <laughs> he's got catcher's gear on. He's warmer he's, than the rest of us. Yeah, he's probably in pretty good shape. Got his ears covered. He's, he's good. 2-0 to Tello. Raider will take this one right down the middle, 2-1. Good snap back there. He took the fastball right across the heart of the plate. Iowa trailing 2-1 in the third. DeRiggy takes off for third. The pitch is inside. He's got a stolen base. Wow. How about that? Brennan DeRiggy, stolen base number five. 
How about that for Brennan DeRiggy? Little little secret. You got a three, got it up his sleeve. Got a three one count here, so you got an opportunity to put it in play, tie this game up. Pitch to Tello is downstairs. It's backhanded by McDonald. Briefly kicked away from him. Tello is on first with the walk. So this is where Coons was able to get out of the jam in the first inning. You know, he struck out Tello and then he struck out Honar. Tello able to come back this time and, and win the battle. And we'll see now, see if Honar can come back and do something here. Yeah, Sam struck out in the first in that big bases loaded spot. I'm sure he's got something different on his mind with runners on the corners and one out. First pitch to Sam, hits it foul to the left side and out of play into the seats. Decent number of South Dakota State fans occupying the bleachers behind their dugout on the third base side. Good um, number of Hawkeye fans over there to the right. A lot of Iowa kids on the South Dakota State team. I think six is what I saw in their game notes. So um, good spread, a chance to see somebody closer to home. Honar squares to bunt and it hit him. And so DeRiggy will score. Hold on a minute. There's some sort of discussion. Well, yeah, McDonald thinks it hit him. Honar went to first. He thinks it hit him. Well, the, the home plate umpire said, no, that didn't hit you. And so then that would be that the run scored. That would be favorable if it doesn't hit Honar, right? Because then the run would score and then it's tied. But you gotta be you gotta be fair to South Dakota State here. Their catcher didn't give a ton of great effort getting this ball off the off the backstop because he thought that it hit him. Yeah, but to the to the point there, never assume, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna say it hit him and send everybody well, Tello will go to second anyway, and uh, but send DeRiggy back to third. So the run comes off the board, and it's still two to one. But the bases will be loaded for Chase Mosley, and we'll take we'll take Chase in the box in this situation. Exactly, and a, and a good question from the uh, from the head coach there at South Dakota State is, you know, did he make an effort to bunt it? Because you know, if he made an effort to bunt it, well, then it's it's a strike. Right fielder um, Chase. Mosley. But now Mosley will have a chance uh, with the bases loaded to, to get this going the Hawkeyes' way. Could really snap out of the scoring runners in scoring position slump that the Hawkeyes are in. First pitch to Mosley's a called strike on the outside corner. Bases loaded and one out. You can tie the game with a sack fly or a, uh, you know, a ground ball that you don't hit into a double play, I guess. You could break it open with a, a base hit, maybe take the lead. A one pitch on its way home. That's low and outside, blocked nicely by McDonald. McDonald's going to get his work out here because, especially with Coons ahead, you know he's really tried to then spin to the spin to the, not even the edges of the plate, but you know way outside. Then you call it flip the magnet. He's been way out, uh, and so McDonald will really have to use his protector and keep it in front of him. 1-1 one, one to Chase. On the ground, past the diving shortstop. He knocked it down. DeRiggy will score. Tello will be held at third. Throw back to third. Tello's in there safely. That'll be a single for Mosley, and the game is tied at two. Ira probably saved a run with that. My guess is Tello would have had a green light there to try to score, uh, but because he was able to mostly keep it um, you know, just in short left, didn't get too far away from him, was able to... Uh, to corral it. Now Peterson will have a chance with the bases loaded. And we'll have a, another mound visit. This time just from the catcher. As McDonald will head out there. Bases loaded. One out. He's done that twice now. I think they're, they must be checking to see if he's ready because you don't usually see the catcher just wander out twice on his own without you know a pitching coach or somebody coming out to say hi. But yeah, the pitcher out there is moving rather quickly. <laughs> I would think that there's some urgency in yes. the South Dakota State bullpen right now. Well, before we get to him, let's let's make him pay here. Still got the bases loaded. You know, don't be content with just keeping it tied. Let's put up a big number and 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 take control of this game again. And I think a good person to do that will be Sam Peterson, but he won't see Blake Coons. Is now after all that, we will have a pitching change for. South Dakota State. The Hawks have put up two runs in the bottom of the third. We're tied at two. Hawks and Jackrabbits. Don't, 
Just don't oversell this yet. He hasn't come out of the bullpen yet. Yeah, he's okay, done. He's go. done now. <laughs> they were just waiting for us to to head into our break. How about that? Yeah, I was ready to go. I thought I was pretty certain. It, just a little bit of a. I agreed with delay. you. I just that guy was still throwing one more pitch. I had to get a few more pitches in, but yes, we will have a pitching change now. We'll take a pitching change break. We're tied at two, bottom of the third. Hawks and Jackrabbits. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at opal.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Now, it's been a busy weekend of Iowa Hawkeye Athletics just across the street at Carver. The second round of the National Women's Basketball Tournament going on over there. Iowa hosting Georgia. Georgia's the 10 seed. Hawks are up right now 10-8, to eight, just getting underway at Carver. Uh, Dylan Ritchie's the new pitcher for the Jackrabbits. 9.31 ERA. He's 0-2 on the season. This will be his sixth appearance. He does have one start. Nine and two-thirds innings, giving up 15 hits. I'm sorry, 18 hits, 15 runs. Ten of those were earned. Um, and the Hawks did see him uh, did see him on Friday down in Kansas City mm-hmm. as he threw through the third inning, gave up two runs on three hits. Didn't strike anybody out, didn't walk anybody. Yeah, I think he was just in for one inning, right? Just, yeah, just okay. through the one, uh, one little quick spot there. Well, he comes in in a difficult spot. As the batter is Sam Peterson, the bases are loaded for Iowa in the bottom of the third. We are tied at two. There's one gone in the inning. Peterson's got the pop in his bat. Coach Heller talked about him in pregame, trying to get him going again. and he's He's been on his way there. One ball, no strikes. Pitch to Petey. Top spin shot into left field. It's down for a base hit. Here comes another Hawkeye run in Raider Tello, Iowa with the lead. Sammy Peterson, yes. Good swing there from Petey and a good base running from Tello. Tello actually went back to tag up, um, didn't assume that ball was going to drop, so he wasn't going to get caught in between. But the ball then fell in front of the left fielder, and bases are still loaded now for Cade Mollis. I think that was the right move by Tello. It, it, you know, and uh, let's see, it's, it's Anthony is at third now. No. I'm sorry, that's Honar. Honar at third. He was he was running on contact there because he could see the ball a little bit better than Tello did off the bat. That had top spin and tumbled down. Here's Cade Moss, first pitch for a for a ball there. Well, the kicker is at, at third base, any ball to the outfield, your job is to make sure you score. And so the, you're going to score if that ball bounces in front of him, but you want to be in a position to score if he catches it. And you can't do that if you're three steps down the line. Great point. Smart base running by Raider Tello right there. Hawks lead 3-2. 1-0 pitch to Moss. Called strike on the outside corner. Base is still loaded for Iowa with one out in the bottom of the third. I would assume the reason they brought Richie in was, you know, for, he throws strikes. He doesn't walk a ton of hitters. You know, you, you really couldn't afford to leave Coons in and, and to have him throw it all over. Yeah, risk the, the, the walk situation. Moss has worked a two-and-one count. And so now it becomes important for Iowa to take advantage of that. You're going to get pitches to hit. You still have less than two outs. So now go ahead and, and drive some runs in and get it done. Outfield playing relatively shallow, especially in center against Moss. 2-1. Cade lifts this in the air to left center field. It is down for another base hit. One run will score. They'll leave Mosley at third. Honar is the plated Hawkeye right there. Hawks up 4-2. Good job, Cade Moss. Another one of those kind of tweeners that you think maybe the catch, because to your point, 
Center fielder was very shallow, thought he might have a chance to run over it. My guess is that hit off either the handle or the cap on Cade because the ball didn't come off, didn't come off with a lot of speed. And it didn't sound good either, John. Boy, not a not a day that you you want to miss the barrel of the bat. That's for sure. Iowa trying to put up a big number on South Dakota State, leading 4-2 in the bottom of the third. Once again, bases remain loaded for the top of the order in Michael Seegers. Seegers is 0 for 2 today. First pitch to Michael. That's outside ball one. I watched the Iowa women's softball last night play South Florida, and they were down 4-2 to two and just kind of kept a rally going, kept a rally going, and the next thing you knew it was uh, Iowa ended the game or had to get three outs but ended the game with a run rule, 12-4. to four, So just see if one one at bat at a time, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, that's that's how this that's how this goes. Uh, it counts one and one to Seegers now. If, if everybody just does their one ninth, you know, we've heard that a ton, uh, being on the road to to start the season. You know, it's you don't have to do anything you're not capable of. Right. You know, just see ball, hit ball. You know, make it as simple as that. One one to Seegers. That's outside ball two. You know, Richie doesn't have overpowering stuff. You know, his fastball is just in the upper 80s. Um, you know, his breaking stuff is is a little bit of everywhere. So if you can, if you can lay off the breaking stuff, make him make him bring a fastball back to you. It's very hittable. Two one base hit right up the middle. Mosley will score. And again, we're uh, just playing musical chairs, cycle to cycle baseball right now. Station, station to station. station. That's, that's what it is. That's, station you, to station. you were hunting for that one. I got you. <laughs> that was station to station baseball. But uh, obviously, it's very effective as the Hawks have piled on three hits here um, off of Richie and and uh, and scored three runs. Uh, one, one on each one. I don't mean to make an assumption about South Dakota State, but, you know, we saw Richie already on Friday, and, and to have him be the first guy out of the pen, you know, you just wonder what, what that means for their, their bullpen and, and who they're planning on throwing the rest of the day, whether it's in this game or the next one. Hawks lead now 5-2. to two. We can tell you that there are a couple of jackrabbits getting loose in the bullpen uh, rather quickly uh, down there in the line and left, and so the catcher goes back out there uh, to talk to the pitcher, and maybe the same thing as happening for the Jackrabbits where they're letting their pitchers get loose out there and then uh, the catcher goes and talks to the pitcher then he comes back and then we get a pitching change. We'll have to see. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, and that might be, you know, obviously if you're if you're Burn Richie here, he's not throwing in game 2 right. and so you're you're starting to narrow it down here uh, and maybe again the hope was that he could throw enough strikes, maybe maybe induce a ground ball cuz you know the the ball Moss hit wasn't exactly a rope but Seegers hits a good one there, and and Petey had hit a good one out there, but now you, you really want to be careful to Huck here all of a sudden, or or Hawks might be in real business. Huckstorf led off this inning with a walk and a run scored. First pitch to him is outside ball one. 5-2, Iowa with the lead in the third. Hawkeyes occupy each of the three bases right now with one out. Good job there from Hawk again, laying off what, what had to look like a Frisbee floating in there. You know, a real want to swing at it, but it was outside. 1-0 pitch. Ah, oh. popped it up. Got under it. Left center. Shortstop going back. Rather left field. Straight left field. Shortstop went back, and he got it for the second out of the inning. Just missed it. He got under it and Wa hit it straight up in the air. Launched it straight up in the air, and so that will give DeRiggy a chance to uh, blow it open here for the Hawks. I'm all right with station to station uh, uh, baseball in the middle of the inning, but before we get out of the inning, you want to you want to get all those passengers home, right? Yeah, let's let's clear a couple of these guys. Yeah, let's just not send them to the dugout without right. without pass and go. First pitch to Dorigi outside ball one. We noticed over the course of the season, Brennan has a great eye for the outside pitch. The left-handed hitter that he doesn't chase stuff on the outside corner, maybe here or there, but. He's always laying off outside. Pitchers are tack him outside, too. It, it feels like he knows where he's good and, and doesn't really want to mess with that, at least until he has to, you know, and, until he either gets behind in the count or, um, you know, maybe the left-hander can, can fool him a little if they're creating some angles. But, I mean, like they're busted him back inside, just not a, not a place that uh, Brennan sees a ton of pitches. 1-1 one, one to Dorigi, right back to the pitcher. Scooped up and underhanded over to first to end the third inning. 
A little bit of a deflating end to the inning, but the Hawks put up five, and now Iowa with the 5-2 lead over South Dakota State. We'll head to the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth inning, Iowa leading South Dakota State 5-2 after the big inning in the bottom of the third. Hawks unfortunately left the bases loaded, but got enough to take the lead. We'll go with a new pitcher now in Jared Simpson. Jared Simpson, the big lefty, 4.60 ERA on the season. He's 2-0. This will be his sixth appearance, 15 and two-thirds innings, giving up just 10 hits. Eight runs, they've all been earned. Nine walks and 21 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 182 against Jared. Probably the big knock on Jared so far this year is seven hits batters. So mm. I kind of find a, you know, some of them have been uh, trying to get a little sneaky and, and some of them just pitches got away a little bit. This is the first time we see Jared since the Texas Tech series, right? It, we didn't see, did we didn't see him in the midweek? Boy, I don't remember. I don't want to put anybody on the spot there, but uh, I'm trying to think. I know I can't Ty, remember either. Ty popped in. I thought Jared was going to, but then I don't think he did. So I think you're right. Yeah, so this would be good to see how Jared does. Just uh, kind of one of the pitchers down in, in Lubbock that didn't have his best stuff that day. And uh, excited to see what Simpson's got for South Dakota State in the top of the fourth now. Hawks are up by three. We're scheduled to play a doubleheader today. This first game is uh, nine innings. The second game is seven. Jared did throw an inning against St. Thomas. Okay. Walked a batter, struck out two, so kind of found his footing there a little bit. Right. Bottom third of the order, seven, eight, nine. Beasley leading things off. First pitch from Simpson is outside and gets to the backstop, 1-0. and oh. Not the footing you wanted to find. No, not quite. <laughs> Easily doubled and scored in the second. 1-0 pitch from Simpson. There it is, inside corner, strike one. Simpson only working out of the stretch. Doesn't start with the windup. Swing and a miss on the 1-1 one and one pitch. When Jerry can dominate the zone, I mean, I guess it goes probably goes without saying on almost any pitcher, but when Jerry can work the ball in and out and and he he just comes from a little bit of a weird angle, he's a tough, tough hit. Yeah, and when he gets that fastball high like that, he's a strikeout king, out number one as Beasley goes down. Yeah, he can snap it up there in the in the low to mid nineties. Maybe not, uh, maybe not a ton of mid 90s today on on a, on a cold day like today, but um, can really can really get it up there. See Bellows now, who grounded out to the pitcher in the second. Simpson's ready. First pitch on its way home. Called strike inside corner. We look at uh, Marcus Morgan closing the book on him. Three innings, two hits, two earned, three walks, four strikeouts. Through 72 pitches. Swing and a miss on the 0-1 pitch. Uh, Morgan faced 15 batters through those three innings. Simpson looking for another strikeout in the inning. No balls, two strikes, and one out. The pitch. 
just got a piece of it and fouled it back. Hawkeye women are through one quarter. They lead 19 to 17. A tight game over there with with Georgia. Georgia beat Florida State in the first round game. I don't know if you call that an upset. 10 over seven. That's that's borderline, right? Yeah. They beat they beat Florida State, I believe, by seven. Good solid win for them. 0-2 pitch popped up. Foul territory to the right side. DeRiggy will give a look. He'll chase after it, but it gets out of play. Press conference with, with their coach was great. I heard that. It was. Uh, I heard that it was great. I missed it, but there was a uh, a question about she was she was desperately trying to come up with with Sinano's name, and then once she got that, she was like, "Well, what's her first name?" <laughs> and then uh, she knew the number. She just couldn't come up. You know, so she hadn't really scouted that side of it. Check swing on the 0-2. Didn't go around one and two. And then uh, the other funny one was uh, she was looking for. Uh, she was looking for the eyes. She was the girl with the pretty eyes, uh, and one of the one of the reporters knew who she was talking about and said, "Well, see, I knew she'd know." <laughs> An interesting uh, <laughs> press conferences. There, there's something. One, two pitch swung on and missed for the second out of the inning. We, we do as close as we can to a press conference with Coach Heller, but that's pregame. That's about the best we could do, right? But it, it, she was talking about. Once she once she identified, she knew who she wanted to identify. She's like, yeah, she's the one. She knocks down threes and plays really good defense. So she knew who she wanted. She yeah. just, you know, hadn't spent a lot of time yet. You catch him coming out of post game. You, you got to win your first game before you worry about your second one. <laughs> and quite had her number down, huh? Exactly. Bottom of the order for South Dakota State. Reese Anderson, first pitch strike from Simpson on the inside corner. Jared looks a lot better uh, today than he did in the Texas Tech series. And, and Picking up where he lost uh, against St. Thomas. Yeah, picking up, you know, hitting inside, outside zone here. Um, got his got good velocity here. Nothing in one pitch on its way home. That's a beautiful breaking ball. Comes in the back door, 0-2. Nice to have a good clean in and get out of here a little quicker. Simpson operates quickly, ready with the 0-2. Here it comes. Ooh, just low and in. Ball one. Yeah, Anderson, 250 on the season coming into today. Just 306 on base percentage, so not a not a heavy walk guy either. And struck out 13 times so far. One, two, inside corner. Got him. Simpson, how about that outing? He strikes out the side, puts down the Jackrabbits 1-2-3 in the top of the fourth. Hawks lead 5-2 back after this. It's Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this Sunday afternoon. Hawks leading South Dakota State 5-2. In the bottom of the fourth, new pitcher for the Jackrabbits is Eli Sunquist. Sunquist, 208 ERA on the season. This will be his fourth appearance, four and a third innings so far. Three hits, one run, it was earned, a couple of walks, and ten, count them, ten strikeouts in those four and a third innings. So, Good job there. Opponents hitting just 188. And like Jared Simpson, he might have a little bit of trouble. He has hit three guys in his four and a third inning of work. So, uh, but, you know, the, I guess kind of goes to show they're, they're, they're still ready to, still willing to compete in this game. They want to kind of shut the Hawks down, probably being, 
you look at the the statistics, this is probably their second best bullpen arm behind uh, behind uh, Barossa, who's uh, the one that Coach Heller was a little worried about. So see what I, he does here. I, I had been a little bit mistaken because I thought that the pitcher that we saw on Friday was their shutdown uh, closer with with the good stuff, but. Uh, it wasn't. They were saving him for the Sunday games. He, he had also pitched on Wednesday, and so maybe he wasn't available on Friday. Um, but there there seemed to be a couple of good bullpen arms for the Jackrabbits. And as we watch Sunquist get loose here, he, you want to talk about over the top from a 12 o'clock position. We talk about Llewellyn in that regard. Wow, this guy comes in way up over the top. He reaches back kind of behind his head almost. He's got yeah. an interesting, uh, interesting develop here. Just, you know, again, gets it up there. It's going to be another one of those upper 80s guys, touch 90. Um, <laughs> scouting report, uh, scouting report that the Hawkeyes have, say, Louis Clone. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, see, it's just like, it's just like Llewellyn with the over-the-top delivery. Counts one and one to Keaton Anthony, who's leading off the Hawkeye fourth. Iowa leading 5-2. Sunquist is ready. The 1-1. One, one, here it is. That is down and in. Ball two. Yeah, I think he does have a little bit of a little bit of an issue kind of locating uh, locating that curveball at times. But, you know, it, it comes from such a weird angle that yeah, it's harder to identify it than than maybe some of the pitchers that they'd be used to. Two one is way inside. Three and one. You know, you talk a lot about how Louie tends to miss north and south. So far, uh, you know, he he's really his ball almost has inside run on the right handers, and it's really moved to the inside. And Keaton's had to dance out of the way a couple times. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. He, he is missing horizontally. 3-1. Anthony takes it. Oh, called strike. Way inside, but a called strike. And Anthony will have to come back into the box. The count's full. We kind of joke about this, that uh, you better be ready to expand your strike zone as a hitter now after you've uh, shown up the umpire. Keaton was right, but uh, there's no bonus points for being right. No. 3-2 and two is the count to Anthony. Long pause from Sunquist. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Mm, tough at bat for Anthony then as he strikes out. Yeah, let's see. He got the fastball he wanted right down the heart of the plate. And, and you know, Iowa just hasn't hasn't done a very good job of of making contact with those pitches today. There have been far too many strikeouts for Coach Heller's liking, Coach Sutherland's liking on, on fastballs where you probably wanted to push them to. Raider Tello is the batter, swing and a miss on the first pitch from Eli Sunquist. Bottom of the fourth, Iowa leading 5-2. Better location there from Sunquist. Got that fastball more down in the zone. Still middle of the plate, but um, was was down lower, harder to handle. Next pitch is is low. It is one and one. Been impressed by Sunquist to, to kind of turn things around. He was in a lot of trouble with Anthony and then fired off a few in a row for, for strikes to get him. Got a little help. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Spread the credit, huh? Sometimes that's all it takes, though. You know, it's like you make a layup, make a free throw. And yeah. Curveball floats wide there. You know, all of a sudden then, uh, you know, every shot looks easier and, and the basket looks bigger and, you know, all of a sudden you get a you get a strike call and you think, well, geez, I can throw it in that strike zone. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Two balls and a strike to Tello. The pitch, swing and a miss. Two and two. Hawks are having trouble hitting Sunquist here in the fourth. Every South Dakota State reliever has that little bit of closed closed stance out of the stretch. Sunquist is the same way. Not quite as pronounced as as Coons was, but. Um, Still uh, kind of a similar similar approach. Two and two. Check swing. Did he go? No, he didn't. Thankfully, it's three and two. That was close. That was probably as close as you can get. I'm not sure where Raider was walking either. Is, is he doesn't get a walk to first yet. If, if he was just antsy because he wasn't sure whether he was going to get rung up or not. 
but that ball pitch was pretty close just a bit inside right yeah the ball missed inside about the same place that anthony got it so you know you just never know the three two to tello swing and a miss out number two sunquist good job a couple of strikeouts in the inning Guess we forced him to throw a lot of pitches, but uh, but he's still in the end getting it done. And, you know, kind of goes to that tally four, and now he's thrown five full innings and struck out 12 batters. So uh, doesn't look like he's doing anything that the Hawks can't see, but they just haven't been able to hit it yet. Got to think it's something to do with maybe with the delivery because you just don't see it unless you're taking BP off of Llewellyn, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sam Honar gets a look at the pitcher. First pitch strike on the outside corner. Yeah, if you're live hitting Louie, you'd, you'd see it, but uh, Hawks don't do a ton of that either. Yeah. So Nothing in one is a count to Honar with two down, bases empty, bottom four, Iowa five, South Dakota State two. A one pitch popped up, shallow left center, shortstop goes back. Everybody's shielding their eyes from the sun. It's the left fielder, Bellows, that makes the catch. Out in left. Hawks go down one, two, three in the fourth. We head to the fifth. Iowa leading South Dakota State five to two. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Top of the fifth inning, Iowa leading South Dakota State 5-2. We'll see Jared Simpson again for the Hawks. Had a good inning uh, back in the fourth. Yeah, blew through, went three up, three down. Hawkeye women on a little bit of a run to start the second quarter, lead 31-21. to Six and a half minutes to go in the second. Yes, yeah, so that's a good start then to the second quarter then, isn't it? We really got out after it, and as you might expect, we've had uh, – Caitlin Clark off to a little bit slower start. She's got six points, four assists, and a couple of rebounds. But McKenna Warnock, three for three, made a couple three-pointers. She has ten points in the early going for the Hawks. All right. So Iowa taking care of business right now as it stands just across the street inside Carver Hawkeye. Outside here at Dwayne Banks, we're at the top of the fifth. Iowa leading 5-2. Top of the order in Ryan McDonald. First pitch strike to him from Simpson. Second one is on its way home. Same place. Called strike inside corner, and it's 0-2. You know, last year when Iowa hosted Creighton, I was here, and it was not particularly warm, although it was much better than this, mm -hmm. than when Iowa played Texas Tech. And we got a nice crowd that, uh, that hung around and watched. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that when swing and a miss for strike three from Simpson, um, I'm not sure that we'll have uh, – uh, as much of an accommodating crowd for this one as, as they as they head home or head back to their cars that I don't think they're going to hang around here very long to watch Hawkeye baseball. Not not at this point of the the, the day the way, the way it's going. I don't know. They we've been joking about it, just trying to have some fun. But they'd say, "Oh, it's going to warm up today." You know, I just to, find that hard to believe, and I don't know if it's thirty seven. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's not a, a warm front coming in. Cade Stuff stands in, swings, and misses at the first pitch. It's not like we're going to go from, you know, 30 to 50 today. It's a couple, and I don't know that we're going to be able to feel anything as it is. We're frozen up here. We're a couple of ice blocks. I'm old. Talking my about my baseball. back starts to cramp up. It's, it just gets tough for me. Simpson's doing a good job, though. He's hot on the mound for the Hawks with a few strikeouts, and he's in the position to get another one. 0-2 on Stuff. In the fifth. Lefty on lefty matchup. 
bullpen is quiet for the Hawkeyes, so Simpson's going to get some good run here. 0-2 pitch. Check swing. Did not go. Pitch was just high. Tried to go hunting for maybe a little bit of a cutter on the outside part of the plate, but really missed his spot. Missed up and in the middle of the plate. Fortunately, I guess he missed way up, and so stuff had no reason to swing at it. That was the chase pitch there way outside. It was probably the pitch he was more after last time, but uh, see if he just goes back after him now. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. Simpson's ready in the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Out number two. Checking the flags, it does look like you know, the wind has changed. It looks like it's more blowing almost straight out now, so we are maybe getting more of that south wind. But I was supposed to. Uh, I was supposed to report. You know, Jack Whitlock had won uh, had won uh, the pitchers' hacky sack game a while back. But big congratulations, I guess, go to Kate Obermuller now as he got his first win. Oh, today so, was that today? That, uh, in Kansas City, oh. Kate, Kate got his first win. So I need to make sure you get him shouted out. So. That's going to become a, a regular piece of programming, isn't it? It is. <laughs> That's I, your responsibility. I, 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 I learned the rules last year, and I had kind of forgotten some of the intricacies. So today, um, <laughs> as I was hanging out with the, with the pitchers down there, I, I, I relearned how, the, how the, uh, the procedural rules of the game. So I was on top of it. One and one is the count to Dawson Perry with two outs in the top of the fifth. We n I never played. Uh, I never went the hacky route. Uh, as a baseball player, but the they get competitive. I know the indoor facility we were at on Friday taking some BP where Cade won that. Uh, it was getting pretty heated in there. One one pitch drops low ball two. Yeah, they're, they're in, there's some of them that you can tell have really done it and and have probably done it outside of of a baseball circle because um, they they move well. They're they're pretty good at it. And there's some uh, <laughs> there's some that that uh, look like they're dancing the robot, and it might not be quite as. And I'm not gonna call any names out as get a swing and miss there, even in count two and two. So I won't call anybody out that way. But uh, yeah, Jack Young, Nick Gatilla, those guys look like they know what they're doing. They they can move a little bit and and. Uh, um, and well, they have. I don't know if they've won yet. Have they? We better we better I, hold on and find out. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm Swing and a miss, foul tip, and it gets out of the inning. How about Simpson? Six straight strikeouts. Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty darn good. Good job, Jared Simpson. He struck out the side in back-to-back -back innings. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Iowa leading 5-2. Let's add to it. Gentlemen, coming up right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Iowa leading South Dakota State 5-2, heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. Going to try to crack the code that is Eli Sundquist. He's done a nice job against the Hawkeye hitters in his one inning of work, and he's back out for another. Remember, today's game is a doubleheader, scheduled to be so. The first game uh, is nine innings. The second game will be seven. There is a 10-run rule uh, in place in this first game, it'd be a, if you're up by 10 after any time after seven innings. We're in the bottom of the fifth, Iowa leading 5-2. If they want that to happen, got a little work to do. First pitch to Chase Mosley is inside ball one. Good eye there from Chase as the fastball just missed, uh, just off kind of the lower bottom part of the tic-tac-toe board there. 
Chase led off the second inning where he was walked. It's good plate discipline. 1-0 pitch. That's inside. Ooh, called a strike. And it's 1-1. One one. I thought for a minute that that hit Chase. <laughs> I thought it hit his armband. And, um, home plate umpire Umland has had a fairly generous inside part of the yeah. plate and inside of that. 1-1 one, one to Mosley. That's downstairs. Ball two. Hey, if I'm the umpire, I have a gigantic strike zone right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, it, if it's close, you better be swinging the bat, man. Otherwise, uh, we'll be calling it for you. Two balls and a strike to Mosley. Chase skies this one down the line and right. Right fielder giving chase over towards foul territory. Ooh. And it'll land... Uh, in play, but foul, and it's two and two. I guess maybe he realized he couldn't get there because that just didn't look like a didn't look like a. I'm really going to run this down and make a play ball for something that landed well in the field of play. Hey, he had a shot at it. I mean, it's a it's a long run from where he's positioned now. Don't don't get me wrong, but. That way the wind's blowing, kind of pushing it back that direction. Two balls, two strikes, pitch to Mosley. That's high, ball three. Yeah, Chase might ultimately turn into one of my favorite Hawkeye hitters. Just does a nice job, uh, you know, and of course I'm going to jinx him here, but <laughs> he's going to end up striking out. But it just does a nice job kind of commanding the plate, and, um, knows kind of where the zone is and gets after it. Full count pitch from Sunquist. That's high and outside ball four. He didn't jinx him, John. You're good. You're he's all right. A, he's a tough out. I mean, that's the, you know, I don't know that you get to yell that a lot about a guy that hits 172, but, yeah. but but he really is a tough out. And, and you know, credit to him for a guy that had a ton, a ton of success at the junior college level to come in and, and not really let that phase him, you know, that. That, okay, hey, the batting average is just one measure of success. There, there are other measures that make this good at bats. First pitch to Peterson, called strike, low and outside corner. Look at the gap in right center field, wide open. The center fielder is playing left to the left of the Tiger Hawk logo out in shallow center by about probably. 10 steps or so that is monstrously shaded to left center i mean if if you picture your your slow pitch softball days where you've got four outfielders he's playing where the left center fielder plays right a one pitch to pd that's in on the hands ball one and it, you know that's probably doing their scouting report sam is a, is a pole hitter uh, for the most part but the way the wind is blowing now to to right center and to right field a gapper would nearly score chase probably get him in for sure yeah if he puts a ball out toward right center field mosley will score for sure yeah, waiting on the one one they'll throw it over to see if mosley's headed anywhere george has rallied back taking the lead 35 34 under three to go in the first half hawks committing quite a few turnovers it, it looks like one ball and a strike Long pause and another check on Mosley at first. And th those are just keep them close pickoff moves, right? It hasn't particularly worked. You know, Mosley's, Mosley was on the move earlier. And, you know, and you know, with Petey's not exactly a huge contact guy, so it's not really going to hit and run here. Here's a call and strike at the knees. And it's one and two. You know, one of the things you'd like to see Petey probably cut down on is, you know, he struck out 20 times this year coming into today. Um, and so you need to kind of clean that number up a little bit. Uh, you know, hasn't doesn't have one yet today, but. Uh, that's what that's what coach talked about is that uh, impressed with Peterson's approach the past few games and, and weekends that cannot okay, chasing stuff as much as we were at the beginning of the year. One two pitch. That's low and outside. Gets away from the catcher. Mosley can get up to second. How about that for Chase? Good read there. Great jump there. Ball didn't score it too far away from McDonald, but Mosley was on top of it and was able to take the base. And you know, going back to Petey, you know, there was uh, 
think it was the Saturday game at uh, uh, at in Lubbock that he just lost his plate discipline just a little bit. Um, got pinch hit for, but then came back Sunday and did a did a much better job and has, has really kind of carried it through the midweek game and today. 2-2, two, two, in on the hands and fouled out of play over our heads. And, you know, every, it sounds like we're nitpicking, but every, oh. everybody has their moments. I mean, you play you play 56 games or whatever whatever Iowa ends up getting in this year, and, you know, it, the, the guy that doesn't play one bad one, it will be the first one that doesn't play a bad one, so... 2-2, two, two, popped up on the infield. Third baseman comes down the line. The pitcher is in the area. The third baseman makes the play. That's Nelson. I think he palmed that. That one hurt. He really did. That, that one's going to leave a mark as he takes his glove off and rubs his hand a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. That, uh, that one didn't sound right. Good pitch there. As Sunquist got back into the, you know, got a, got a good pitch on the inner part of the inner part of the plate. PD had to had to fight it off, but was only really able to kind of chop it up in the air. Bottom of the order in Cade Moss, first pitch right down the middle, strike one. Hawk women retaking the lead here as we get closer to halftime. High scoring game over there, just like they typically are. Any any basketball played in Carver's got a shot to be high scoring. Good pitch from Sunquist, but it's outside one and one. Got a little bit of a chuckle out of the Southeast Louisiana coach that uh, you know wanted to talk trash about. Well, you haven't seen a, a haven't seen Caitlin Clark, but you haven't seen our guard, and we know Iowa doesn't like to play defense, and we we we, we really like to bear down. Well, how does eleven points in the second uh, half hit you, coach? Mosley takes uh -oh. off for third. He's in trouble. Oh, dropped it. The ball's dropped by third. I think Chase is a little banged up, and he's at third base. He's limping back to the bag. This has been a mess from the start, and Chase is hurt. He's called safe at third. The throw went to third. It was bobbled. Chase is down, and this is a problem. I'm surprised, actually, Chase isn't going to be called out because he didn't slide. Um, I don't know whether he pulled something beforehand and that's why he didn't slide and ended up kicking the ball out I, of. I think you're right, John, because he, he did not slide. He was going to be in trouble anyway uh, when it comes to outer save. He did not slide. He pulled up short, overran the bag. South Dakota State thinks for sure they got him out uh, because they tagged him on the way to the bag, but the ball came out of the glove on the tag, I think. Oh, for sure. The, the question then was, you know, it, it – Took Chase a long time to recover and get back to the base, and so they had a chance there. Um, you could see the coach, uh, coach talking to the umpire about you know, does grabbing your hamstring qualify as a reason not to slide? Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be that'll probably be all we see of Chase today. Would be my guess. Just if for no other reason than safety's sake to, to make sure you don't aggravate anything. Well, it certainly won't get any better in the cold, right? Correct. I mean, and that's and so, that, that just doesn't look good for Chase, who's got his arms around uh, trainer Jake and another athletic trainer there, and he's being basically carried off the field now. That's how to put Braden Frazier there. You hope it's just a cramp or a you know something that uh, maybe he just pull it and not. Uh, not anything more serious than that, and of course, you know, not playing any sort of, uh, not playing any sort of doctor. You know, that's right. the, the, of course, that's the the lousy risk you run with the cold. You know, it, it's we talked about it with Huxdorf early in the game when he had to kind of turn on the Jets to make the play in right center field. Uh, you know, it's not easy to go from kind of a a dead stop to to going. And I know he's at second base. He's got a walking lead, all that stuff, but. Um, still tough to turn it on and you know tough now for Braden Frazier to come in and pinch run he's probably been sitting in the dugout with the heater and and his parka on and and you know not really any hey you're gonna go into the game why don't you get loose it's just hey now you're in the game uh, I need you to get out to third base here real quick and that'll bring the infield in and yeah you just think okay ground ball in the infield I'm probably not testing if I'm Braden Frazier 2-1 pitch to Moss swing and a miss two and two South Dakota State coaching staff not pleased with the decision to 
keep that runner at third. They thought that Mosley should have been out before he got injured. But Frazier's inserted into the game now. He's at third. Two balls, two strikes with one out. The pitch, Moss fouls it back. Again, Hawks lead 5-2. to two. And again, I think their beef is he didn't slide. It's not, oh, he should have been out, because clearly the ball came flying out of the glove, but it came flying out of the glove because you know, Chase didn't slide, couldn't slide. You know, he wasn't trying to barrel the guy over or anything. He was trying to take care of his of his leg at that point. 2-2, two, two, up and in to Cade Moss. Count is full. On deck is Michael Seegers. Iowa looking to have a big inning here. Haven't scored yet, but just feels like uh, the wheels are turning for the Hawks in the bottom of the fifth. Up by three. Find a way on, Cade. The 3-2 inside, ball four. Sends it to the top of the order. Runners on the corner, still just one out. You know, feels like uh, you know with the injury, and it feels like the inning's kind of been forever. Right. But you know, just one out. A couple runners on now. Hawks have a chance here, and you know, you, like we just talked about with with Frazier still being relatively cold. I don't know if you play any real creative games with with Seegers at the plate, but you know, a guy that handles the bat really well and can do some different things. Seegers with a sharp line drive in his last at bat. First pitch to Michael. He squares the bunt, pulls it back, called strike. Curveball. <laughs> the curveball, I tell you what, from Sunquist, who's over the top, totally, just like Llewellyn, like we've mentioned. That thing starts like looking like it's going to come six feet of vertical break. <laughs> yeah, see, like that right there. That's <laughs> It's the that's ultimate wild. in 12 to 6 curveball. Wow. Nothing in one pitch to Seegers. He squares to bunt, goes to bunt it, and fouled it off. And it's that's just not an easy that that one had five feet of drop in it. So I mean, it's just not an easy pitch to bunt, and I, I doubt Michael has to worry about it anymore now. Down zero and two. That that pitch is difficult as it is, and you try to bunt it where you're not you're not swinging through at it. I mean, it honestly, makes it harder. Oh, two to Seegers. He fouls it back. He's swinging away now. Yeah, looking back at my slow pitch softball days, it's like trying to bunt one of those oh. pitches that's trying to hit the carpet. And except for that ball is coming at seventy-five miles an hour, so you know a little bit different, a yeah. uh, little bit different looper. No balls and two strikes with one out. Runners on the corners for Iowa. Bottom five. Iowa leading five-two. Pitch to Seegers. There's the curveball that's way high. One and two. Hawk women forty-one forty at half. Wow. So they're holding the lead, but uh, not uh, – you mentioned it earlier. Hawks with 10 turnovers in the first half. Mm. To clean that up in the second, Sweet 16 berth on the line for Iowa. Try to get by 10-seeded Georgia. 1-2 pitch to Seegers. Runner takes off for second. Pitch is high and in. Throw down is in time. They got him at second. Frazier did not try to score from third. Uh, interesting. South Dakota State played it straight, and I, I don't know that that's exactly what Iowa had in mind, that Cade Moss was going to straight steal on a fastball. Um, so, you know, you kind of want Braden to be a little bit more active down there. 2-2. Two, two. That bounced on the plate, and the count's full. And now the... Boy, the whole tenor of the inning changed right there with uh, with the out. Now you're sitting with two outs. You still have the runner on third, but uh, you know instead of trying to score a pile, you're just trying to make sure you get that one more in. Seager's a good plate discipline this year. The three-two pitch, check swing. Did he go this time? Oh. Yes, he did. They throw it down on a drop third strike. For the third out of the inning. And Seegers is down on strikes. We're behind, so we're, we're behind home plate, so my, my, my beg to differ is a terrible angle. So, Well, Hawks cannot score in the fifth after having a couple of runners on. Hawks lead 5-2. We're headed to the sixth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, 
our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Top of the sixth inning, Iowa leads 5-2. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, Braden Frazier's inserted into the game in right after the Chase uh, Mosley injury. Jared Simpson returning to the mound. First pitch from Simpson's lifted in the air deep to left. This is trouble at the track, at the wall, and making the catch is Sam Peterson right at the base of the wall. What was so hard about that? Woo! Just a routine fly ball to the base of the wall, 366 feet away from home plate. (laughs) That ball kept carrying and carrying. It was some trouble. Out number one. That's the first South Dakota State batter to make to, contact, uh, to make contact <laughs> on Simpson. Other, he, other than a foul ball. Yeah, he had set down the first six that he had seen with the strikeout. Nelson ends that. Okay. One down in the top of the sixth. You can't strike out them all unless you strike out the first six. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right, John? There's a saying somewhere in yeah. there. Adam Bennis is the hitter. He's worked a 2-0 count now from Simpson. Iowa leading 5-2. Jackrabbit scored two in the second to open this game up. Swing and a miss from Bennis. Iowa got five in the third. Yeah, and Iowa's had a couple chances to extend or put it away, but uh, haven't really been able to to capitalize on that. Hawks 0 for 5 today with two outs. But to be fair, so are the Jackrabbits. So yeah. neither team's been able to come up with a two-out hit. They, if they do their work, they've been able to do it beforehand. Um, as Iowa overall 4 for 10 with runners in scoring position. So it feels like they've left a million out there. As Simpson gets the swing and the miss for strike three. Um, but they have taken advantage of some of the opportunities. You know, the, yeah. we, we kind of joked about it, the station-to-station station, uh, adventure they went on. Well, the, the left on base numbers for Iowa have been have been pretty hard, uh, uh, pretty high, rather, the, the past couple games. They've got eight left on through five today. Yeah, what left... Uh, Left the bases loaded twice and, uh, you know, kind of ran into an out that time to hurt themselves a little bit. Ira the batter, first pitch from Simpson is high and outside. Second one on its way home, swing and a miss. They cannot touch Simpson with the exception of Nelson. So we should be good for seven or eight more batters. Yeah, just let him go the rest of the way, right? (laughs) Keep on scooping the loop around. One ball, one strike with two outs. Top six. Nobody on for the Jackrabbits. 1-1 one, one pitch in there called strike one and two. Scotty looks like a sentinel down in the bullpen all by himself over there, just kind of <laughs> watching what's going on down there. Pacing around. Yep, wandering back now. Feeling lonely. Let's just keep him lonely. Let Jerry keep doing <laughs> his thing. 1-2 pitch. Right back to Simpson. He's got it. Lobs it over to <laughs> Derigi. That was the... 
slowest throw that Simpson's ever had in his life, and he whipped it over there on a lob. Good job by Jared Simpson to record the third out of the inning. What an outing for him. He's got seven strikeouts in three innings. All right, bottom of the sixth on its way. Iowa leading 5-2. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Bottom of the sixth in Iowa City. Hawks lead 5-2. Trying to add to it. And a good part of the order with Huxdorf, DeRiggy, and Anthony do up. Jared Simpson's been great, but tip your cap to Eli Sunquist of South Dakota State. Uh, he's come in, done a nice job. This is Sunquist. Back out for another inning of work. He's got a couple of strikeouts this afternoon. Still hasn't given up a hit. Just a couple of walks for the Hawkeye base runners. Hochstorf stands in. First pitch strike on the inside corner. And Coach Bishop will have a choice to make. You know, do you, Where does he go in his bullpen? Because it looks like he's got two really live arms in his bullpen, but... Huxdorf shoots oh. this in the oh. air to right, carrying well. Get going, baby. It's one hopping off the wall. Huxdorf rounds first, heads for a second, and a leadoff double for the hottest Hawkeye hitter right now, Kyle Huxdorf. Great contact there. Drove it out into the gap. Um, seen the left or the right fielder chase down a couple balls, and once that ball started to get over his head, it, it d- doesn't look like he's going to run a bunch of balls down, and so good job there. And, Hawks are in business again here in in, uh, the bottom of the sixth inning. Need to take advantage now. Right. Make him pay. Get that leadoff guy on. Puts the pressure on him. DeRiggy is the hitter. First pitch to him. Takes it on the outside corner for a strike. Good fastball there and and kind of up and and a little bit away. See if DeRiggy can turn on one. Or go the opposite way if they want to keep pounding him outside. I'm flexible. Sure. Nothing in one pitch. Mm, good breaking ball. Caught the inside corner. And it's 0-2. And now this fastball, if he throws the fastball again, you know, picking on the middle to outer half of the plate, it'll get away from Dorigi. So it'd be interesting how he handles it with a left-hander. Long pause, the 0-2. That's in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher. Huxdorf tries to get to third. Here's the throw. Not in time. Huxdorf will move up. 90. Really good job there. Another good read from Huck. Um, Ball took McDonald toward third base, so ended up with a really short throw to try to get Huxdorf out. But but good hustle and, and good quick decisiveness from Huck. Got him into third with now nobody out. Sacrifice fly. Base hit. Any way to to get home that run, a ground ball to the right side, anything would do here for DeRiggy, but he's down in the count, one, two, here it comes, on the ground to the right side, to the second baseman. He's got it, he'll throw it over to first for the out, but Huxdorf scores on the backside at six to two. RBI ground out from DeRiggy, probably not exactly what he had in mind, but again, when you're down 0-2, um, you know the worst the, the worst out you can make there is is striking out so put it in play with the infield back and and drives in a run easily now i'm not entirely sure but is that the first ground out of the game that wasn't to a pitcher i believe it was 
Yeah, I didn't, uh, <laughs> now that you say that, I don't remember anybody else throwing one. The, sh- the third baseman had a chance to handle Huxdorf in the first and couldn't do it. Yep. That is the first ground out of the game that hasn't been a comebacker to the pitcher. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. And it takes place in the bottom of the sixth. All right, Keaton Anthony's up now with one away. Keaton pops this one up straight back over our heads. Thought maybe it had a shot to to land on the top of the press box, but it goes straight back and past. Keaton's trying to get his day going. He does have an RBI on a sacrifice uh, fly, but he struck out his last time. A whopping 0 for 1 today. 1-1 <laughs> one pitch is a breaking ball called strike at the knees. Fourth plate appearance, and he's 0 for 1. Hit by a pitch in the first. All right, drive one here. The count is 1 and 2 to him. That's low, ball two. Now that, to, to locate that, uh, the breaking ball with five or six feet of vertical movement is uh, your release point has to be pretty <laughs> spot on because it really doesn't move much left to right. It just, it, again, it's literally 12 to 6. Tumbles. This one hits Anthony. Pitcher threw it behind him, and it got him on the leg. Second slow walk down yeah. the first for Keaton. That one, that one looks like he, he <laughs> took him a long time, but he finally started to about, about the 80-foot mark there. He might have started to rub it out a little bit. The home plate umpire, he kind of helped Keaton get on his way down to first. Keaton locked eyes with the pitcher there for a second. I don't, I don't believe there's any... Intent behind that? No, you're down six to two, and you're you're ahead in the count one and two or two and two. You're not uh, you're not going to try to hit him. Third baseman Tello stands in. First pitch curveball, strike one. <laughs> John, John, you just look really uncomfortable right it's, now. <laughs> it's a little chilly. <laughs> Our great. I'm trying to find a way. <laughs> Our BTN Plus camera person over there, she looks frozen. <laughs> oh, one to Tello. That's low, ball one. And we do have another game after this, so we'll have to power through and figure it out. Right? So we've got that going for we, us. We do, yeah. <laughs> what they say when you're when you're cold, when it is cold outside, if, you're, if your feet freeze, that's it's hard to overcome that one. I think I'm at that point. Okay. We need the hot hands in your shoes. Yeah, one ball, one strike to Tello. This gets away from the catcher. Anthony will move up 90. Well, they're going to throw it down, and he is safe. That was a little bit closer than I thought. Uh, McDonald's done a pretty good job of keeping those balls handy. Yeah, they've gotten away from him, but but they're they're forward, and so it's allowed him to make a throw. And you know, Keaton just took that uh, took that ball off his thigh, yeah. so um, he's probably not exactly in the how fast can I run camp right now. Now he's in scoring position for Tello to bring him home. Iowa leading 6-2, bottom 6, 2-1 pitch. Line drive into the right center gap and down for a base hit. They're going to send Anthony home. Here comes the throw into second, and so Anthony scores without an issue. Tello time on the base hit, and the RBI at 7-2. Raider Tello, great job there. Took the fastball that was on the outer half of the plate, didn't try to do a lot with it, just served it up over the second baseman's head into right center field. Easily scores, easily scores Anthony from second. Sam Honar comes up, keep the inning going. One out, bottom six, Iowa up by five. Sunquist is ready, first pitch to Honar, up and away, ball one. Probably starting to extend Sunquist's stamina here. You know, fourth appearance of the season. He's really he's thrown four to third inning, so hasn't really been long in any game yet. So he's in his third inning of work here. So might be kind of capping him out a little bit. Pitch is low and a great block there by McDonald to keep Tello. Tello had a good read on it. He was almost 
thinking about going to second, but he never committed to it. And good thing he didn't because McDonald had a good stop behind the plate. They've got the infield really shifted over to the pull side for Honar, the left-handed hitter. And we saw Honar in Mobile take it, hit fly balls to left field quite a bit. So mm, takes this one inside ball three. He might be a pull on the ground guy, but it, but he can serve it up to both sides. And you see the outfield playing a little more straight away. As you see the left fielder doing some windmills out there to try to keep his arms warm. We talked about long innings are really tough on the fielders in this yep. weather. Yep. Three balls, no strikes. Pitch to Honar. That's in there for a strike on the outside corner, three and one. Yeah, I'm not sure very many Hawkeye hitters will have a green light, three and oh, particularly in this situation. Wind has shifted now. It, it's done what they said it would do, come out of the south and head towards Carver in left field as the 3-1 is outside for ball four. Got to think this is close to the end for Sunquist. Yeah, we got time called. Yeah, going to the bullpen. Yeah, he was walking. The relief pitcher was walking down too. And that'll do it for Sunquist. Had a, had a pretty good outing for South Dakota State, but his time is done. Runners on first and second. For the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the sixth, Iowa leading 7-2. to We'll take a pitching change break. Be back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Bottom of the sixth inning, Iowa leading South Dakota State 7-2. to The Jackrabbits have just made a pitching change and another familiar face in Dylan Dries, and we saw him on Friday. Dylan Dreesen, 6.43 ERA, has two and three on the season in his five appearances. Seven innings pitched, nine hits allowed, five runs, five walks, 11 strikeouts. He threw an inning and a third on Friday, picked up the loss. He gave up two hits, three runs. They were all earned. Walked one hitter, didn't strike anybody out. So Hawkeyes will have seen him before, have a chance to... Uh, Guess they won't be able to give him another loss this series unless something really bad happens. Ooh. But uh, but might be able to pile on uh, pile on some ERA here. Well, I got to be honest. When we saw him on Friday, I thought that this was the pitcher that that the, the coaching staff was was worried about or you know didn't want to see in in crunch time. And and I was mistaken. They have another uh, couple of good arms in their bullpen, but. This pitcher right here, he, he was pretty good against us. Uh, although he got the loss, he, he had done a really nice job in the time that he was in there. Well, I assume he came in, closed out the seventh in a jam, and then came out in the eighth, and the Hawkeyes were able to get to him. So, well, Braden Frazier is in after Sam Honar got on the walk. So he's at first. Tello's at second. Frazier is into the game for Mosley, who was injured a couple innings ago. 1-0 pitch is a called strike at the knees. Boy, Dreesen really exerts himself. You can hear him grunting on every pitch. I was just thinking, the uh, again, dating myself a little bit, the Monica Sellis is kind of the one that started it in tennis. Now all the tennis players do it. Yeah. Fouled back to the screen, 1-2. Good job there from Frazier to stick with. He'd seen two low fastballs, saw a, a curveball up high and stuck with it and was able to get a piece of it. Frazier's been kind of in and out of the starting lineup at times and a rotation in right. Nothing in two is the count to him. The pitch 
On the ground, through into right field for a base hit. Will they wave Tello? Yes. Here comes the throw home. It is up the line, and Tello will score. Hawks lead 8-2, to two, RBI single, Braden Frazier. Nice job from Frazier there. Was behind in the count, but again, as you see when the Hawkeye hitters do a nice job, even though he was behind in the count, good low breaking ball. Uh, from Dylan there, Dreesen, but Frazier stuck with it, didn't try to overpower it, just kind of put his bat on it, drove it out there. And we're getting into a getting closer to a range now where Petey can do some real damage. He's in the box now, runners on first and second, first pitch called strike on the outside corner. Dreesen a a tall righty. A good fastball there. Dreesen gets it up there. You know, he's in the low nineties. Good breaking ball and a good change. but a one Peterson was on it, but fouled it straight back, and it's 0-2. Good play off the screen. Hey, he's got five walks in seven innings, so you'd think that maybe there's a little bit of control problem, but he's really located well right here so far in his pitches today. 0-2 to Petey. This oh. one's crushed. Deep left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Home run. Sam Peterson. Boom. Send it out. 89 mile an hour fastball on the inner half. Petey tracks it. Sends it 395 over into the new rest or 375 over into the new wrestling building. Ho ho. We need one more. He got a hold of that one. And it is 11 to 2 in the bottom of the sixth. Still just one out here in the one out here in the uh, in the sixth. So you're saying there's a chance. And what we're alluding to is in a doubleheader in this first game, a nine inning game, it'll be a, a run rule after seven. If the Hawks are up by ten at that point, it's 11 to 2 right now. So you need to get one. One more and then hold them in the top half. This might be the ultimate worst thing is to sit on a nine-run lead for the, through the bottom of the ninth. That would be rough. <laughs> we're we're going to see what happens. Cade Moss is the batter. The count's one and one. Uh, rather, two and oh. Count is two and oh. Bases are empty with one out. Pitch. Cade lines this. Base hit into left field. Moss is on with a single here in the sixth. Hawk women are locked in a battle, 49-48. Iowa leads four minutes to go in the third quarter. Mm. Now they got beat in the round of 32 last year, right, to, to Creighton. So they, you know, they've been in battles before. They've been in battles before. <laughs> they'll, uh, they'll get her figured out here and get that high-flowing offense running. Top of the order in Seegers now. Moss at first. First pitch to Seegers is outside, gets away from the catcher, and Moss is at second. Just one out in the bottom of the sixth. I was plated six runs in the inning. They lead South Dakota State 11 to 2. Dreesen now all of a sudden. Again, one of those curveballs that just held on to it way too long and just kind of spiked it outside, and McDonald had no chance. 1-0 to Seegers, line drive foul over towards the baseball facility to the right. The indoor offices shared by the baseball, softball, and, and track programs. One ball, one strike, one out. Dreesen works quickly. Next pitch to Seegers. That's up and in, ball two. Fastball right, uh, right under the chin. Seegers lean back out of the way. Moss with a nice lead at second as this pitch is on the outside corner, two and two now. If you can get to Huxdorf, you'd, you'd really be in good shape. I would have batted around then. And they're, they're probably going to, barring a, a double play. The 2-2 two -two to Seegers. Ah, swing and a miss. And he's out number two. Good fastball there again. Came right back, challenged Seegers over the middle of the plate. Michael couldn't quite catch up to the 91-mile-an-hour fastball. 
That'll leave it up to Huxdorf to get us three outs away. Just takes a single now. Just a, just a base hit would get it, give Iowa the, the 10 run lead as we head to the seventh. First pitch to Huck is a called strike up and in. That's a tough pitch to really do anything with. So he laid off. Yeah, he's not he's not going to be able to do us any favors with that one. But Moss at second. He'll be going on contact. 0-1 pitch to Huxdorf. On the ground, up the middle, and through into center. Moss will be waved in. He rounds third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off at the mound, and the Hawks lead 12-2. Huxdorf again. Yes! Good piece of hitting there. Again, didn't, didn't try to do anything crazy with it. Just really sent it right back up the middle. Um, and Hux had... Hux had the number so far. He's on a heater right now. He's got four hits on Friday, two today, so six for nine here in the series so far, uh, including a couple of a couple of very valuable RBIs. It's Dorigi's turn to keep it going. Iowa leading 12-2, bottom of the sixth. Got their 10-run lead. Can add to it before going to secure the final three outs. Nice curveball from Dreesen on the outside corner. Call a strike. The count's one and one. Big three-pointer from Gabby Marshall. Hawks lead 56-52 with a minute to go in the third. Keep getting stops, ladies. 58-52 now. That's good. McKenna Warnock. Four Hawks in double figures, so that's a big... Uh, you know, you don't always see that. You know, it seems like it's a two-person show a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> Kaitlin Clark struggling a little bit from the field, but doing her thing with nine assists. Facilitating. If she's not scoring, she's facilitating, right? Exactly. But with a pickoff move towards first, it was a good move from Dreesen, but Huck's back in there safely. Yeah, I'd be amazed at this point if Huck is running. There's no, oh, yeah. no point in it right now. 2-1, called a strike on the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes to the Hawkeye first baseman, Brennan DeRiggi. Dreesen looks in for the sign. He's got it. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Called third strike Ooh. on the inside corner. Froze DeRiggi, and he is out number three. All right, the Hawks have the 10-run lead. Three outs away from run ruling South Dakota State in game one of today's doubleheader. Jared Simpson will come out and shut the door. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. All right, top of the seventh inning, Iowa leading South Dakota State 12-2 with the doubleheader rules. Uh, Hawks are in a position to 10-run the Jackrabbits now. You get three outs without giving up any runs, and game one of the doubleheader will be complete based on run rule. And then there will be a 30-minute break uh, and then get ready for game two of the doubleheader that would be coming up. Uh, later on this afternoon we'll have a continuous broadcast we'll recap this game and we'll talk about we'll some play, other things we'll that do are going play on. by play of the women's game yeah the timing of it's going to be pretty good right they're at the end of the third quarter hawks are up four over there at carver hawkeye arena in the ncaa tournament 58 54 leading georgia all right drew beasley's the batter first pitch from simpson was high and tight second one on its way that's outside ball two Interesting, too. You know, Jared sat for quite a while there, so 
you know, the the rhythm and momentum that he had there through through the three innings now, he's gonna have to kind of refine his zone after after sitting in, in cold weather there for, for quite a while. Yeah, and he's m- missing kind of all over the place now, 3-0. and oh. As you know, the Hawks put up seven. I don't know exactly how long that inning took, but it wasn't quick. No. <laughs> 3-0 from Simpson on the inside corner, calling strike three and one. Good job there by Jared to, to not give him the free base right away and in the in the cleanest version of a a four pitch walk Beasley's probably got the green light back on him three balls and a strike here's the pitch from Simpson swing and a miss took a little something off right there came in at 87 yeah both pitches he threw uh you know the 86 mile an hour before that and so if he's got a little bit of a little bit of a cutter or some other little off speed it's not a not a ton of spin on it so it's not breaking sharply three two from Simpson Ah, just high, ball four, and so eventually Beasley draws the walk to lead off the seventh. Hawk pitchers have done that a couple of times. Marcus did that once where he was behind 3-0, did a good job to fight back in the account, in the count, and then still lost him. But a chance to attack the bottom of the order here, see if you can still get 8-9. You'd rather get through without giving McDonald a swing at it with the wind starting to blow out now. Simpson with seven strikeouts and three innings pitched. Small lead at first from Beasley. Here's Bellows with a base hit in the center. Drops in front of Huckstorf. First two batters are on for South Dakota State in the top of the seventh. This is karma biting us for being so excited about the 10 run lead, really. Yeah, got got the outs to get. Got to get them. And now it's Reese Anderson. Get some action in the Hawkeye bullpen. Nothing urgent yet, but you get some guys starting to move around and just to make sure. First pitch to Anderson. Breaking ball high, ball one. You know, other than stuff, no left handers really in the uh in the Jackrabbit lineup, so no real advantage like when the Hawks played down in Lubbock. They had six batters there in the left handed batters. Loaded box, so. with them. Simpson really can't find it now. High and away, ball two to Anderson. Should get a little bit more, a little bit more urgency, just uh, for no other reason than to just kind of, hey, settle down, just do what you do. It's not a terribly long outing. He's thrown, thrown three innings so far, but just forty-six pitches, so he's been extremely efficient. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's probably more the more the extended break there between innings. He's gonna have to gonna have to lock in and and kind of regain that mental focus right now. Is that Jacob? I think it's Jacob Henderson getting loose in the Iowa bullpen. Two zero pitch is high ball three. Right around, but didn't get the call. Iowa leading twelve two top seven. Simpson's ready with the 3-0, and it is on its way home to Anderson. There it is, called strike right down the middle, 3-1. Yeah, we're going to have a bucket load of fun if all of a sudden the bases are loaded for McDonald coming to the plate. Ooh. Simpson's next pitch, there it is, same spot, maybe a little bit more inside, 3-2. and two. How big would a strikeout be right here? You, you'd you like a ground ball for a double play, but a strikeout, how about that? I'd take that. I'd take a 6-4-3 double play as well. A little rollover double play ball, maybe 4-6-3, although Honar's way up the middle. How about the strikeout? We'll start with that. Simpson throws it right by Anderson. Swing and miss, down he goes. You ask for it, you got it. Is Simpson, great job battling back. And now he'll face the toughest hitter in the Jackrabbit lineup. It's Ryan McDonald. He's one for three today with a pair of strikeouts. Runners on first and second for South Dakota State and one out. First pitch strike from Simpson. It just took him 10 or 12 pitches to get loose again. It was just a little quick bullpen session. Yeah, just had to warm back up. 0-1 pitch, just off the plate outside, 1-1. One and one. Let's 
Simpson is very locked in. He's just not taking too much time. One ball, one strike. The pitch inside corner called strike one and two. One out for the Jackrabbits in the top of the seventh. Iowa leading 12-2. Yeah, I still think the best pitchers work quickly, especially when it's cold. You know, it, get get your sign, get locked in, and go get it done. Give your fielders a chance to help you by being on their toes and warm. Moss setting up a bit outside. One-two pitch. Uh, too far outside. And it's two and two. Tried to float that curveball out there. Just couldn't quite get it to, couldn't get it to snap back in. Simpson's got the sign that he likes, the 2-2. Feels it and deals it. Swing and a miss. He got him. Chased it way outside. He's out number two. You know, he showed that curveball kind of in that same tunnel. So even though he didn't get the curveball to break in, now he shows him the fastball out there. McDonald reads curveball that might be snapping back into the zone and goes out fishing for it and can't get hooked up. And Hawks will have a chance now here with Lefty on lefty to finish up the seventh inning. Cade Stuff, first pitch to him is a call and strike on the outside corner. Hawks back up by six now, seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Georgia's just not going away, are they? They're not. Every time Iowa gets a lead, Georgia battles back. 0-1 pitch, outside corner again, 0-2. Great outing from Simpson so far. See if he's got uh, got the stuff to finish off stuff. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, then, then once I started, I couldn't no stop. There was no going back. Yeah, I got in there and had to go. 0-2, oh, outside corner, got him. Called third strike, and that'll do it. In game number one of the doubleheader, Hawks win it 12-2 over South Dakota State. Following a five-run third and a seven-run sixth. Hawks win it 12-2. Hawks, Hawks didn't take advantage of all the opportunities, but uh, but really did a nice job when they had a chance there of, of piling them on. It's like, uh, we're get, I was, I was kind of hoping that maybe there'd be an extra flash sign, but they're, they're just coaches confirming that we'll be, we'll be 30 minutes when we'll get... Uh, We'll get game two started. All right. Well, a good job by Iowa in game one of the doubleheader to win it 12 to two. We'll get ready for game two, which will be a seven inning game that starts in, in about 30 minutes. So at about 410, we'll have a continuous broadcast that'll carry on until first pitch of that one. For now, Iowa wins game one, 12 to two. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa wins game one of the doubleheader, 12-2 over South Dakota State. Seven-inning game will follow. And we just got word it'll be it'll be 420, so we've got about 40 minutes before we uh, get ready for that one. 420, that's gonna be pushing, uh, that's gonna be pushing towards nighttime. But I guess if you're playing seven innings, you'd think it'll get over a little quicker than uh, than this one. Than this one did. And you know, we don't really know exactly who will be pitching for Iowa. Those will be things that uh, we'll need to uh, we'll need to sort out when when the game gets a little closer. We did talk with Coach Heller in, in pregame that all right, maybe it'll be Cade Obermuller getting the start. So we'll just have to wait and see what 
Iowa elects to do in game two uh, coming up. Finally, a breakthrough for Iowa uh, in that game where it just looked like uh, letting South Dakota State hang around for a little bit, but nope, not quite yet. Uh, 14-3, and three, the Hawkeyes improved to after a big uh, sixth inning right there at the end. Well, and and let's go to let's go to Jared Simpson. You know the uh, Marcus had a Marcus Morgan had a nice start. Three three innings pitched, two hits, couple runs. Did walk three, um, struck out four. But then Jared Simpson came in and just basically said enough is enough. Um, Threw four innings, gave up just one hit, walked one, and struck out ten of the twelve outs that uh, that he needed. So really good job. Got into a little bit of hot water there in in the, the seventh inning, but was able to to buckle back up and and finish it off when uh, when we thought we might have to go some more. How about these offensive leaders for Iowa today? Uh, Sam Peterson in game one was two for four with a home run, four RBIs. Kyle Huxdorf two for four with a double and an RBI. Cade Moss two for three with an RBI, and then Seegers, DeRiggy, Tello, Mosley, and Frazier each had a hit and an RBI today. So the production was up and down. It just came in bunches when you look at uh, the inning, right, in, in which they came. Hawks were Hawks were 393 hitting as a team, 500 with runners in scoring position, 8 of 16, and you compare that to the Jackrabbits who were 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. So Hawkeyes really, you know, we kind of lamented their, their lack of being uh, – efficient on all the chances but boy they they sure took advantage of of a bunch of them were able to pile up a couple runs six for eight with runners on third and less than two outs Uh, so just a a good job from from the pitching staff and from the uh, uh, and from the hitters Blake Coons gets the loss for South Dakota State two and a thirds innings pitched gave up just two hits but five earned because he walked four Hawkeyes struck out three had two wild pitches. He faced 16 batters. The Hawks uh, really were, were patient enough with him early uh, to, to make him miss the zone, uh, at least for four walks. Dylan Ritchie came in in a tough spot, and he's really who gave up the runs. The runs were earned and credited to Coons, but it was Ritchie that gave him up in the, in the early innings. Yeah, he, he really, Ritchie comes in and does a really nice job of throwing strikes, but... Uh, problem was Hawks were able to put the ball in play as Richie throws two thirds of an inning, uh, but got three hits off of him in the in the five batters. So those those three hits were all line drives or, or uh, maybe a little fisted one out there, but but all three reached the outfield grass and drove in a run. Eli Sunquist came in for South Dakota State after that and did a pretty good job, two and a third innings, uh, two hits, gave up four earned though because he he struggled towards the end with three walks did strike out three but a few wild pitches there for South Dakota State and then we saw Dreesen again at the end Jared Simpson gets the win for Iowa Hawks win 12-2 they run rule the Jackrabbits in the first game of the doubleheader all right we'll take another break when we come back we'll continue on as we get ready for game two between Iowa and South Dakota State right after this this is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield at U.S. Cellular we think phones are great but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Game two of the doubleheader coming up in just about 30 minutes from Dwayne Banks Field, Iowa and South Dakota State. The Hawkeyes now 14-3 on the season following the 12-2 win over the Jackrabbits in seven innings. We'll play a seven-inning game coming up when we get ready for game number two of the doubleheader to wrap up the 
the series with South Dakota State. Uh, Hawks have already won the series now over the Jackrabbits. Let's go over the highlights of today's 12-2 win over South Dakota State. 1-1 one, one to Chase. On the ground, past the diving shortstop. He knocked it down. Derigi will score. Tello will be held at third. Throw back to third. Tello's in there safely. That'll be a single for Mosley. And the game is tied at two. Here comes another Hawkeye run in Raider. Tello, Iowa with the lead. Sammy Peterson, yes. 2-1. Cade lifts this in the air to left center field. It is down for another base hit. One run will score. They'll leave Mosley at third. Honar is the plated Hawkeye right there. Hawks up 4-2. Good job, Cade Mott. Huxdorf shoots oh, this in the oh. air to right, carrying well. Get going, baby. It's one hopping off the wall. Huxdorf rounds first, heads first, second, and a leadoff double for the hottest Hawkeye hitter right now, Kyle Huxdorf. 2-1 pitch, line drive into the right center gap and down for a base hit. They're going to send Anthony home. Here comes the throw into second, and so Anthony scores without an issue. Tello time on the base hit, and the RBI at 7-2. 2 to Petey. This oh. one's crushed. Deep left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Home run. Sam Peterson. Boom. Moss at second. He'll be going on contact. 0-1 pitch to Huxdorf. On the ground, up the middle, and through into center. Moss will be waved in. He rounds third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off at the mound, and the Hawks lead. 12-2. Huxdorf again. Yes. 0-2, outside corner, got him. Called third strike, and that'll do it. In game number one of the doubleheader, Hawks win it 12-2 over South Dakota State. Following a five-run third and a seven-run sixth. Iowa wins it 12-2. Hawks with 12 runs, 11 hits, and played clean baseball on the field defensively. No errors. For the Hawkeyes, South Dakota State, two runs, just three hits, one error in the field for the Jackrabbits. All right, Iowa now 14-3. and three. South Dakota State drops to 4-11. and 11. We're getting ready for first pitch of game number two coming up in just about 30 minutes. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field. I'm John Evans. John Leo stepped away for just a quick second. As we wait for game two to start, we're oh, 30 minutes away, give or take here, as we'll have uh, a surprise Hawkeye starter. Haven't had official word yet on, on who will get the ball here for game two of the doubleheader. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to be Kate over Mueller, but we'll, we'll wait for final confirmation on that. And if South Dakota State six, sticks to their plan, it'll be Brady Hawkins that'll get the start um, for them. So we'll see how that shakes out. Hawkeye women lead 68-63, under three minutes to go um, in the fourth quarter. So game's tightened up. Defense has really, uh, really started to, to rule the day over in Carver as the Hawks will look to hold on and advance to the Sweet 16. It's a little early in the season for Iowa to start Iowa men, Iowa men's baseball to start looking at um, at RPI, but that's um, still something that that always aware of as the season goes along, as the Hawks try to 
um, try to boost their RPI, make sure they keep it in a, in a good spot. And so as you look around, um, you know, you've got certain teams you start rooting for, you know, Iowa rooting for, uh, for Texas Tech. Uh, Texas Tech leads Oklahoma State 8-1 to one in the bottom of the fifth inning um, down in Lubbock as they open uh, uh, Big Ten, or I'm sorry, Big 12 play. So they've split the first two games, but you know, a win there for Texas Tech would, would help out the Hawkeyes. Um, looking back down, Quinnipiac lost today. Uh, Oral Roberts beat St. Thomas. Michigan State is looking to close out Indiana State. Um, that game won't matter as much to the Hawkeyes as um, Hawkeyes have a three-game series later on with Michigan State. So in some ways, they're almost better off with, with a Michigan State win because Hawkeyes will have three games to play with them later. Um, that's the first game of a doubleheader, so they'll play again um, later this afternoon. Portland's ahead of Pepperdine. Um, so not a lot of great news across most of those fronts. LSU does lead Texas A&M. That would help Iowa out a little bit. Baylor down to Kansas State, so no favors there. But Sam Houston State did a number on uh, their conference rival, so Hawks catch a little boost there. Hawks are currently, let's see if I have updated the stat here, are, are down to 30th in RPI. Um, as Iowa loses a few RPI points today. Um, actually, just even by playing the game, so a little interesting, little interesting kick there for for the numbers. But you know, last year Iowa was running toward the end of the season, right around 50 or so. Um, you know, got into kind of the the end of the low 60 number, but but really need to try to stay try to stay in that area. The win against LSU, um, you know, one of three. Uh, against Texas Tech, but you know you're still going to have two top top 50 wins by the end of the season, which will be huge for the Hawks. Um, you know, and it'll, it'll go a long ways toward helping them um, advance into those types of things. And, and you know, as the committee has their discussion on on who belongs in the tournament, who belongs in a regional, um, that'll go a long ways if the Hawks don't happen to win the the Big Ten tournament come uh, come the end of May. We'll go ahead and take uh, another break. 68-66, Iowa women clinging to a lead. You're currently listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455.
Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, we're working towards first pitch of game number two of the doubleheader, 20 minutes away. Uh, getting down to it uh, at Carver Hawkeye across the street, the Iowa women's basketball team with uh, just under 20 seconds to play, leading 70 to 66. Hawks have possession and have drawn a foul on Georgia, and so it looks like uh, free throws probably upcoming for the Hawkeyes trying to close things out after turning it over and Georgia had taken it all the way to the rack but missed a layup and now Iowa leads 70 to 66 with under 20 seconds to go not shooting free throws yet and it looks like a timeout being called on the floor and of all the tough ways to turn it over throwing a throwing a long pass toward half court gave Georgia a run out yeah how does that happen uh Hopefully, uh, you know, we're, it's, it's funny from our broadcast position, we're looking across the street and inside that building over there is, is a high octane, high level basketball game, John. Well, and that's what uh, we've, we just have to look at the at the big scoreboard, the Banksfield scoreboard right there. We just have to look at that. That's our big window right into uh, yeah. right into the floor there. I would trying to advance to the sweet 16. Looks like. 13 seconds left trying to read it from all the way over here yep that's what i've got timeout wrapping up iowa leading 70 to 66 and so I, well i guess yeah i would be able to advance to half court there with the timeout so able to get it in georgia doesn't look like they're fouling and now they're still trying to track down what looks to be kate martin still don't have her yet into the corner with five seconds to go no foul and then they shove a hawkeye to the floor got a hold of gabby marshall and pushed her into the cheerleaders and she's a bit slow to get up and she comes up Looks like she's got a bloody nose now. Wow, with four seconds left, it gets chippy between Georgia and Iowa, and the Hawks are up by four. Looks like they're going to get to the Sweet 16. Wow, she took one right off the chops. So let's see if they send that to the monitor, too. That might, uh, that could be even better if they send that to the monitor, and Hawks will get uh, get an opportunity to close it out that way. Hasn't Gabby already lost a tooth this year? I believe you're right. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they will go over to the, the monitor for... Uh, a review it looked like she really took it on the chin or the or the nose there and kate had uh you know kate had the mask that she played in for or played on for a while and... right so the hawkeye women are up by four win gets them to the sweet 16 they're a two seed in stanford's region 18 points from caitlin clark 12 assists at 20 points for Monica Sinano to go with nine rebounds. We're about 20 minutes away from first pitch of game number two. It'll be a seven inning game with South Dakota State. No, uh, I, I didn't follow closely, I guess. No Hannah Stolke today, according to the box score. Yeah, I'm not sure what that development has been, but uh, Obviously, that's a big deal. So yeah. it really is a good win, and hopefully now you get her, you get her healthy. I don't think she's amused at what she just got called for. So yeah, maybe. they just showed a Georgia player on the screen, and she says, "You know, are you kidding me?" So whatever happened, she she must be in some sort of trouble. I mean, Gabby took a a shot to the to the mouth, and yeah, it looks like. Called it intentional or flagrant. Yeah, so. Caitlin's at the line for a couple of free throws with three seconds left. First free throw is good. 71 66. Looks like the Hawks are going to win it and get to the Sweet 16. Packed Carver Hawkeye. And, you know, just in a couple of minutes, John, we're going to see them all flow <laughs> out of there. And maybe a few will stop by the baseball diamond on the way to their cars, right? Hopefully they'll be ready to hang around now. It's uh, it's, it's it's warm and nice out there now. So they should be ready to hang, hang with us. Yeah, come on over. It's. Uh, Warmed up to 38 degrees. So three seconds left. And Iowa leading 72-66 after Caitlin hits both free throws. And uh, the Hawks will have the ball, right? So this will this will basically do it. Yeah, really just get it in, call it a game. And they do get it in. And wow, really getting chippy as another Hawkeye tumbles to the floor. With 1.6 left. 
Yeah, no, this is where you just get, show your discipline. None of it matters. Yeah, they didn't need to foul you, but just. Well, Kalen takes a two-handed shove to the back, and I don't know. As Caitlin goes down, looks like she's all right, though. Still a second left. Call her for another intentional foul. Jeez, that's uh And they did. <laughs> Clark's at the line for free throws. Iowa now up by seven, make it eight. Caitlin's perfect I'm not sure from they can, the line. I'm not sure they can call enough fouls, though, to get to where the... Uh, to where some people might be a little bit more interested in this ha, game. Ha, ha. I think they could be out of time, John. Only 1.6. Hawkeyes are inbounding again. And it'll be a... Oh, technical a, violation? Yeah, I think that'll be a Trav... It, well... No, it's the, the Georgia player was across Oh, the, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah that's oh, how you get the oh, technical foul. And right. you get more free throws. This could work out. Hawkeyes are inbounding at midcourt with 1.6. They get it in. And that'll do it. Iowa beats Georgia 74-66. to The Hawkeye women are headed to the Sweet 16. How about that? That away. Didn't make it last year with the upset from Creighton, but it made it the year before. And obviously, as a two-seed, the Hawks don't want to be done quite yet. The ninth Sweet 16 appearance in program history. And uh, how about some stats, John, from the game, if you got them pulled up? Got you pulled up. I got you back here. Leading scorer, well, actually, the free throws got the got Caitlin Clark to be your leading scorer. As she was just six of seventeen from the field today, but twenty two points, twelve assists, and three rebounds. Give Monica Sinano twenty points, nine rebounds. Give McKenna Warnock fourteen points, eight rebounds. As the Hawks did a good job, they got beat on the glass, forty one to thirty. Um, but the big players, big players, did their job, and then give Gabby Marshall, boy, what a what a resurgence from her in the last month or six weeks of the season. She goes five for eight from the three-point line, scores 15 points, has a couple steals as the Hawks survive 17 turnovers. Wow. Um, only get to the line 13 times, and we saw four of them there in the last three seconds. Um, so Hawks don't spend a lot of time at the free throw line and are able to kind of gut their way out in a in a – defensive struggle which is not exactly what you would uh, expect a, uh, a Hawkeye women's basketball team to win and and good defensive effort right 66 points for Georgia that's pretty good uh, for Iowa in a defensive uh, type of game the Hawkeyes will face the winner of Duke and Colorado in the Sweet 16 so an ACC team and a uh, Big 12, uh, no, an ACC team and a, and a Pac-12. Pac-12. Uh, I'm living back in my childhood, John, <laughs> with Colorado not quite in the in the uh, Big 12 anymore. You look at the – How many years are they really going to stay there anyway? Yeah, who the, knows? The whole, who, the whole world's in flux at this point. Uh, you've got the bracket pulled up. What else is catching your eye? Maybe note on a couple of Big 10 schools that are still still involved. Uh, Indiana, the one seed, will play uh, – they'll play tomorrow. They play Miami. You've got uh, Michigan, who will have their hands full uh, later tonight against LSU. Um, you've got you've got Toledo, who upset our our other friends down the interstate in, in Iowa State in the first round. Ohio State in a 3-6 matchup tomorrow with North Carolina. Um, Iowa gets the win. Duke, Colorado, you mentioned. Um, Maryland's still alive. They're a two-seed. They'll play... Uh, they'll play Arizona here in about 20 minutes. Notre Dame on top of Mississippi State by eight at the end of the third quarter. And that does it for all the Big Ten teams. All right. Well, congratulations to the Iowa women's team advancing to the Sweet 16. They'll take on the winner of Duke and Colorado. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll get a little bit closer to first pitch about 10 minutes away of game number two of the doubleheader, Iowa and South Dakota State. Coming up right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores, where right now kids can eat free. 
another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Game two of the doubleheader between Iowa and South Dakota State coming up in just a few minutes as the fans start to file out of Carver Hawkeye Arena. We watched them go in earlier today before game one of the doubleheader, and now we watch them come out, and they're pretty happy as they head to their vehicles with Iowa, beating Georgia to advance to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. The Hawkeyes move on, and today at Dwayne Banks, Iowa is now 14-3 and on the season, trying to get to 15 wins in 18 games, which would be an accomplishment, a a remarkable feat uh, to be a Northern school and to start off so strong, uh, positioning Iowa very well uh, for the postseason. Got to take care of business in this now seven-inning game against South Dakota State coming up in just a little bit. Let's take a look at the schedule, the upcoming schedule for the Hawkeye baseball team. We'll have our midweek game on Tuesday this week against Grandview. That'll be at 4 o'clock, scheduled to start at 4 o'clock. Weather's a little bit warmer for that, so hopefully uh, be able to get that one in. Uh, Scheduled for 4 o'clock, we'll have the broadcast here on the Hawkeye Radio Network. The weekend series... Uh, We'll welcome in Western Michigan. The Broncos come to town. Iowa and Western Michigan Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, Friday's game starts at 4, Saturday at 2.05, Sunday at 1.05. And then the midweek after that, as we extend the schedule view uh, just a little bit longer, will be at Illinois State on Tuesday, March 28th, at Illinois State for a road midweek game with the Redbirds. 5 o'clock first pitch in normal Illinois before the Big Ten season starts, and that's when things really get cooking. It's Iowa and Maryland for a three-game set with the Terps Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 31st, April 1st, April 2nd. First pitch on that Friday is at 4.05. Then we'll go at 2 on Saturday and noon on Sunday against the Terps. Uh, When you extend it even further, the Hawks will go on the road after that for a a pair of Big Ten series at Indiana and at Minnesota, a big-time home series with Nebraska towards the end of April. That's a look at the extended schedule to get into Big Ten play. Uh, For now, we've got one more with South Dakota State coming up in just a few minutes. We'll take a break. We'll come back and hopefully have starting lineups for Game 2 ready to roll right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this Sunday afternoon as we approach evening, 4.15 local time. It's the Hawks and the Jackrabbits gearing up for game two of the doubleheader. Iowa took care of business in game one, 12-2. Finally broke through uh, in the the sixth. And uh, it was a game that was scheduled to be a game that was scheduled to be a a nine-inning game, but with the run rule in place, Iowa made it a seven-inning a seven inning game and won by 10, 12-2. So we'll have another seven-inning game. There's no run rule in the seven-inning game, so we will play a full uh, seven unless we go to extras today uh, in the second game against South Dakota State. 
That would just be rude. That yeah, that would be the opposite <laughs> of what uh, the plan was today, right? But so. you know, we we kind of joke about that though. But it, but it, you know, you think about a doubleheader and you think about how you get through 16 innings. Um, you know, in the case of today, now for the Hawkeyes, they only have to figure out how to get through 14, and and really important important job there from. Uh, you know, from from Jared Simpson and and Marcus Morgan to take care of business there, Hawks only had to use two pitchers. Um, we'll be able to really kind of run run about however they want here, and, and you'll see Kate Obermuller start the game, um, but then they'll have uh, you know just kind of a whole range of options now to go to um, to finish out the game, and and you know Cade throws the way he do, has been. Um, you know, you might see. You might see four or five out of Cade today as he tries to lengthen out just a little bit. Cold might offset that somewhat. Well, we just handed the starting lineup, so we'll get to those in just a minute. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the starting lineups of game two of the doubleheader with South Dakota State right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. All right, welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field, gearing up for first pitch of, of game two of the doubleheader. We've got starting lineups and batting orders now for both teams in this game two. Uh, we'll start with South Dakota State, who's now 4-11 and after dropping the first game of the, the doubleheader. Ryan McDonald will lead things off. They've got a few changes, quite a few actually. Jess Bellows will be batting second. Dawson Perry batting third. In the fourth spot is Nick Nelson. Batting fifth is Luke Ira. Drew Beasley batting sixth, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Segadal, Brandon Velico, Velico spelled V L C K O. <laughs> Brandon Velico, he bats eighth. Reese Anderson will bat ninth. Uh, for the Hawkeyes, Michael Seegers leading off. Kyle Huxdorf batting second. Brennan Derigi batting third. Keaton Anthony is fourth. Batting fifth is Raider Tello. Sam Peterson starting again in left. He'll bat sixth. Seven, eight, nine are, are a few of the changes for Iowa. Uh, Braden Frazier's in right. Gable Mitchell gets the start at second. And then Garrett Christensen, he will catch for uh, the Hawkeyes today. The pitcher for Iowa will be Cade Obermuller. And so we're really excited to see Cade uh, once again extend his role on the weekends. It'd be nice to see uh, he had the weekday start, um, you know, through a couple innings there, uh, you know, kind of got stretched out, but but really did a nice job coming in uh, to close out the Sunday game in Lubbock when, you know, Iowa needed a win, um, had taken the lead in the top of the ninth. Um, Cade gave up the home run in the bottom of the ninth uh, to, to make it a one-run game with nobody out um, and, and coming through the heart of the, the tech order, but Cade did a really nice job just kind of buckling up and uh, getting uh, getting those last three out so Iowa could get out of Lubbock with a win. And uh, Cade, Cade really kind of showed his stuff there. And I think, uh, you know, he's going to be one of those guys that, that Hawkeye fans will enjoy for the next couple of years as well. He's kind of fearless, isn't he? Uh, maybe fearless isn't the right word, but he overcomes whatever fear that is because competitors always have a little bit of fear in them, right? You know, it's 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 the the challenge to to overcome that. And Kate is just pff, what? doing it from the start. Yeah, you you know what the conversation between he and I was yes. on the bus, <laughs> um, and I can't uh, I can't replay that one exactly, but but let's just say I asked him, um, you know, what he was thinking after he gave up the home run. Um, and 
and at least outwardly there was a lot of confidence there. It was just like, you know what, I needed to get three outs, and I knew I, I was going to go get them. And so uh, to your point exactly, he's um, – he, he carries himself like somebody that's been in competition before, right. I guess, is the is the way to put that, where, um, you know, stuff happens. Teams are going to get a hit off you. It's not um, it's not the end of the world unless you make it a big deal. Um, and, and he really seems to have a pretty good head on his shoulders that way. All right, the Hawkeyes are about to take the field. We'll take our last break before we get ready for first pitch of game two of the doubleheader. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Second game of the doubleheader, just about ready to get underway between Iowa and South Dakota State. Just went over the batting order for the Jackrabbits. On the mound for Iowa is Cade Obermuller. The stats on Cade. And the freshman's making his fifth appearance in Hawkeye Black and Gold. His second start, 235 ERA. He's 1-0 on the season. Thrown seven and two-thirds innings, given up just two hits, three runs. They were two of the three were earned. He's walked four and he struck out 14 opponents hitting a measly 087 against Cade. Have a hard time touching him. He's ready for the first pitch to Kyle McDonald. It's on its way and Obi misses high and outside for ball one. Oberbuehler, when he started, when he made his first start uh, in the midweek here, let the first two get on, but then after that was was nails. So for him to settle in. 1 0 pitch is just high. Ball two. Cade's in the, you know, the, typically in the low 90s, can work it up a little bit higher, but um, going to be there. He's got a kind of a sweeping three quarter delivery from the left hander. So a tough angle again, a little bit like Jared Simpson. And this one hits him. And so kind of like the first start for uh, Cade in the midweek. It's the first batter. When K when Cade came into the uh, Texas Tech game, Llewellyn, Llewellyn left with one out, uh, and Cade immediately put two guys on base and then shut it down from there. And you know, so that's uh, uh, you know, it'll be uh, it'll be a little bit of, of how does he start a little bit faster, stay locked in um, a little bit quicker, but he'll be all right. Batter is Jess Bellows. First pitch to him is a ball. Just missed with a breaking ball. Tried to tried to kind of put a little backdoor breaking ball and just missed a little high and outside. Obermuller's got to find the strike zone. The leadoff man on in the top of the first. Next pitch, high and outside. All right, Cade. Give home plate umpire Jason Stidham something to, uh, to call a strike. Yep. He's 0 for 5 here so far. Obermuller out of the stretch now. And the pitch, there it is, in there for a called strike. Still really working the top part of the zone. Hasn't been able to kind of find his find his release point to get it down a little bit. Everything's been been up high so far. Small lead at first, long pause, pitch from Obermuller. That's high. Another ball. Yeah, right in front of us is going to be cold. The sun, the sun's, the press box is blocking the 
the bleachers down there, and so you, everybody's kind of down the first baseline or the third baseline because you do not want to be right behind home plate today. Counts two and one. Overmuller cannot find the zone. Or rather, it was three and one right there, and so it's a walk to Bellows. First two are on for South Dakota State in the top of the first. Everything is up. He's just he's he's just missing up in the zone, and I think. Uh, Coach McGrath's going to go out and give him a little heads up on, on yeah. what's going on. Yeah, we'll have a, a mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath that should should do the trick here for Kate. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Now Dawson Perry will be the batter for South Dakota State in this first inning of a seven-inning game with the Jackrabbits. You know, and in talking to Coach Heller, this was kind of the, you know, the the less than ideal scenario yep. was was to get behind in a in a seven inning game because you know, obviously it's just you've got less time to make a run, and if you've got a closer down there in the, the South Dakota State bullpen, it's it's the recipe for them to steal a game. First pitch to Perry is a called strike on the outside corner. Yeah, that'll be the. That'll be the key. You know, you just you just beat them by 10, but this is a game that starts at 0-0 now, John. And, you know, you're playing seven innings, which actually gives you less time to do what you need to do to win it. And you don't want to start in a hole. Runners on first and second. Pitch from Obermuller. He's found it now 0-2. As you mentioned, he was kind of missing high, right? And now he's really brought that down to a, a level that's hard to hit. Yeah, buckled back down into his zone and... You know, you'd like to think uh, at this point the Hawkeye bullpen would be in, in much better alignment than the Jackrabbit bullpen, but O two's outside. But again, you've got a, you've got the best reliever from the Jackrabbits who hasn't pitched yet. He hasn't had an opportunity to come in. Um, although I'm still surprised that I mean that sh should have been the guy on Friday. You would have yeah. thought um, but... he did he did pitch on Wednesday, so maybe. But I, I agree with you. I, that that's kind of the assumption that I made. And I, I wasn't right about it. The one two on its way home. Check swing, and it didn't go. Actually hit him. And they say that it hit him, and so now the bases are loaded. Hold on a minute. Coach Heller's out of the dugout. I, I just I I don't know about. They, they sent it down for an appeal to first. They say he didn't go around. John, he he basically swung the bat it sure looked that way um he, he was his hips were turned to carver and left and the the bat was through yeah he he should have been punched out on a ball that hit him which nobody ever wants that but well significant adversity now for Obermuller with the bases loaded and nobody out in the top of the first nick nelson is the batter and work to do the infield playing back for Iowa not even the corners are in in this situation oh you'll take two and just get out of here swing and a miss well you know your conversation you had with Cade on the bus that could be kicking in right here about how he's just going to rear back and throw it one ball one strike Obermuller is ready the pitch just outside, ball two. Yeah, he's going to have to just trust his stuff. That's a good pitch there. Just missed a, just a touch outside um, as opposed to some of the other ones that he maybe been throwing uh, a little bit more wildly, but he's just going to have to to buck up here and, and try to get an out. Two balls and a strike. This is tapped foul, two and two. You know what we're looking for here, John? You're looking for a punch out. Yeah, I'm, you know me. I'm looking for the. I'm looking I think we're all looking for the slider, don't you think? Unless you, unless you get something right back to you, we can come home with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. You I'm don't want to give up any runs. I'm so. thinking one, one, two, three, double play. <laughs> there you go. Two balls, two strikes. Obermuller's ready. Bases loaded. Nobody out. The pitch outside. Ball three. And now you really got to bring it in. You got no place to put him. Good snag there from Christensen to save a run. And this can really dictate how the how the game goes. Uh, if you if you walk him, you walk home a run. 
See if he can strike him out. Three balls, two strikes. Obermuller takes his time. The pitch on the ground to the left side past the diving Tello into left. One run is in. That's all they'll get this time as Peterson gets the ball in quickly. And just one run comes across for South Dakota State's Nick Nelson, the RBI single. You know, just, just one hit. We talk about it all the time. Free bases are killers. And, um, you know, again, you've got a team you just run ruled. Uh, you know, don't don't let them be interested. Yeah. And, and you know, with uh, with the walks and the the hit by pitch, you've you've now made the other team interested. Bases remain loaded. Obermuller dealers deals a first pitch ball off the outside corner. Ish. Yeah, that's that's the other thing too. The the umpires shuffle around, and so uh, it's a totally new zone, right? Totally new zone, and uh, you know, Cade hasn't had a ton of pitches close, and so that's. And this gets by the catcher and Christensen, and another run is going to come in. You know, you're not doing yourself any favors by by missing so wildly. Umpire is not really thinking, boy, I ought to call that a strike. It's it's oh, that's probably a ball based on how he's thrown so far. So now 2 nothing South Dakota State. They got runners on second and third, and that is going to do it for Obermuller. I think it's Jack. Co yeah. yeah, Coach Heller is coming out of the dugout. He's coming to get Cade, and we'll have to see who the pitcher is that's coming in for Iowa. We'll address that when we come back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. You learn a lot about who a coaching staff trusts in their bullpen in a situation like this is not only is there two runners on, but a 2-0 and count. And Coach Rick Heller turns to Luke Llewellyn. So guy who got the save on Friday now comes in to get the uh, uh, be a save of some sort here in the first inning. As Hawks already trail 2 to nothing after allowing just one hit. Llewellyn comes in with a 2.45 ERA. This will be his seventh appearance, 1-0 and on the season with a save. Seven and a third innings, four hits, a couple runs, five walks, ten strikeouts. And he gave up a couple home runs there in Texas, in Lubbock at Texas Tech. Um, as those Texas Tech hitters, if you missed a fastball in the middle of the plate, knew what Ooh. to do with it. So, they were good, weren't they? They're in a good series with Oklahoma State right now. Looking to close that out. Last time I checked, they were they were about to finish out the series and win it two to one. So helping out the Hawks a little bit. Now Louie, I'll see if he can battle back from a two zero count here. Well, this is going to be tough because he does he does come in with runners on second and third, nobody out. South Dakota State's played at two already, and we talked about it a lot today. This being a seven inning game. You just don't have a lot of time to, to fall behind, right? And especially with what we know about who South Dakota State has in their bullpen. Not to say that Iowa can't hit that guy that's in the bullpen, uh, but everybody seems so concerned about that. You know, you're, you're kind of hoping, too, that Iowa could back the good battle back as Louie gets it back to 2-2 two and two now. You know, you'd like to think that, that the Hawkeyes can put up some, some numbers on uh, – uh, some numbers on Hawkins, who hasn't had the best of goes in his three mm -hmm. starts this year. So, um, you know, maybe this will be kind of one of those blasted out Sunday games. Louis ready with the 2 2. Call third strike. Got him. Oh, the home plate umpire, Jason Stidham. That's a good ring up call right there. He reared back and punched him out. One down. 
And, you know, honestly, that's that's the difference of, you know, when you're when you're punching the strike zone over and over, um, you get those calls that, that maybe are a little up in the zone, but umpire helps you out a little bit. Still those runners at second and third, less than two outs. We got one down in the top of the first. Good pitch from Llewellyn, but just off the mark, ball one. Yeah, breaking ball just misses low there. Christensen setting up low and outside. The pitch fouled back, one and one. Parking lot starting to clear up over at Carver. Had a few fans come on over if, to fill the the right side of the stadium now. And they realized it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> Saw a few people walk in. One, one, fouled back to the net. That one's in off the hands. Like you mentioned, John, just not too many people sitting right below us in the shade. That is not a place you want to be today. No, those those people are well bundled up if they're if they're sitting down in front of us. One ball, two strikes with one out. Top of the first, South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits have jumped on the Hawkeyes early. Llewellyn looks in for the sign. He's got it. Here comes the one, two. Swing and a miss. He got him. Louie with back-to-back -back strikeouts. All right. Now you can't relax here. You've still got you've got another out to get. Yes. You know, there's still two runners out there. You know, two to nothing obviously doesn't seem insurmountable as the Hawkeyes have been able to. Uh, they've spotted two runs to the the Jackrabbits in both games uh, so far right. in the series, but um, you don't want to make it four. Two two is two is livable. The batter is. Sagadol. Yeah, you got that right. First well, pitch. Well yeah, done. First pitch from Llewellyn is a ball. I love these teams that give us the pronunciation guide. Some teams don't do that, John. It makes it kind of difficult for us, doesn't it? And Sagadol just has the one hit on the year, so Louie needs to go right after him and you know, six strikeouts and 13 at bats, so don't fool around here. Just go ahead and attack the zone and you know, if he beats you at that point, tip your cap sure. to him. One ball and a strike with two outs. Pitch from Llewellyn. Here it comes. That's low. Good block by Garrett Christensen. Great job behind the plate. Yeah, much better, much better job there. And, you know, some of those balls that were bounced around before just were, were almost uncatchable on his part. So um, good job there to get a, get a more normal-looking fastball and to keep it right in front of him. Two balls, one strike. The pitch from Llewellyn. This is downstairs, ball three. Got Valico on deck, who doesn't have a ton of playing experience this year either. But um, just don't want him to turn the turn the lineup over any more than than they're already doing. Three one is just high and outside. Ball four, so we're not out of the woods yet in the first. Second walk of the inning, but the first one by Llewellyn. So here is Valico. He is their catcher today. Yeah, switch McDonald to the DH spot as he got to work out that first game with chasing balls sure. around and blocking <laughs> balls. Bases loaded once again for South Dakota State. Two outs, first pitch from Llewellyn, swing and a miss. Great start from Luke. Yeah, Valico has just seven at bats on the year. So look to finish this up, limit the damage, and let your bats take care That's of some right. business. Nothing in one pitch on its way home. That's high. Good snag by Christensen. And it's one and one. Iowa's bats have always you know, risen to the challenge to, to this point this season. Whether they jump on a team early and give their pitchers run support or answer back after giving up a few. And so right now, top of the first, South Dakota State up 2 nothing. Next pitch from Llewellyn, called strike. And I love Luke's passion right there. He just looks in and he, he nods his head. He knew that that one was in there for a strike. He's cooking now. One more strike, one more out to get. Bases loaded, two outs. Llewellyn is ready. And the pitch. Yo, just outside. My goodness. Oh, man. Did he get squeezed. 
It was probably a little outside, but boy. All right, well, we're on to the next pitch. Well, and can maybe go there again if he'd like. How didn't Velico swing at that for starters? The pitch, there we go, got him, swing and a miss. Down goes Velico. The bases are left loaded for South Dakota State, but they do score two, and the Hawkeyes are going to have to answer in this seven-inning game with the Jackrabbits. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, Avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Bottom of the first inning, Iowa has to dig out of an early hole. And capable of doing it. Basically the first, what, six hitters or the starters. It's basically the same lineup. Uh, seven, eight, nine, a little bit different for Iowa in game two with Braden Frazier, Gable Mitchell, and Gary Christensen. Seven, eight, nine. But Seegers will lead things off for the Hawkeyes. They'll be taking on Brady Hawkins from South Dakota State. 0-2 oh, on the season, making his fourth start. 10-61 ERA, thrown nine and a third innings. Given up 16 hits, 11 runs. They've all been earned. Really doesn't walk or strike out a bunch of guys. Four walks, seven strikeouts. Opponents have hit 364 against him. So he's going to be around the zone. Um, Hawkeyes might have seen a little bit of that in the first game um, uh, with the reliever that came in there to try to when Richie came in. Richie, yeah. Um, same type of idea. You know, he'll be around the strike zone. So, so be ready. Put balls in play and, and get after it. Uh, you say it a lot because you get the scouting reports, right? And, and, uh, these guys don't want to walk, right? And and so they, they don't like when a pitcher has a high ERA because of a ton of walks, right, that that get the the runners on and then just one hit and all those are earned runs, right? You, they like to hit and put the ball in place. So they like a guy that throws strikes. A hundred percent because it's it's hard to, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, green, green, red. Seegers pops up on the infield. Shortstop goes back. Looks like he's got a – beat on it he's got it for out number one it's hard to be green green red when a guy's throwing it all over the place right um just because you know you're just you know, somewhere in your brain you eventually kind of flip to oh he's not really going to throw me a strike yeah um, and then it's he like, does this, this is never going to happen yeah. it's, a, it's a natural tendency right uh, and then he does and you get punched out or you make a weak swing because you're not really ready um so you know it's just important to to get your funnel and, and be looking be looking for your spot and get, get your brain turned on and engaged and focus. The hottest Hawkeye in the lineup right now, Kyle Huxdorf stands in. Iowa trailing South Dakota State in the bottom of the first two nothing. First uh, pitch was outside, so was the second one. It's two and zero. I mean, what a tear Huxdorf has been on hey, I, ever since he came back from the injury. And a little bit of everything, you know. He's he's hit with power. He's hit into gaps. He's he's legged things out just with speed. Speaking of power, oh, he gives this one a ride deep to left. Get going, baby! It is gone. Ho ho! Huckstorf on command. Boom. 400 feet as Huck took the 87 mile an hour fastball right in the middle of the plate. And if there's any there's any basketball fan slow to leave the arena, he tried to give him a souvenir over there as he just demolished it. John, did he get that over the scoreboard? I think he might have. I'm pretty sure he did. That ball was crushed. Smoked. Huckstorf homer. And the Hawks are within one. A nice little backflip there. I don't know if you saw that. I missed it. I was <laughs> tracking the ball. 
That's uh, that's good that you picked that up, though. He's got a little spice to him, doesn't he? Well, I, and, and again, one of those when, when you're when you're on the run, he's on. Yeah, go ahead and try to get me out. It's all good. Yeah. So the deficit is one for Iowa now in the in the first. Here's Brennan Derigi. He's worked a one and one count. Hawkins is mostly fastball changeup. He's got a couple other pitches, but but tends to stick to those. Now Derigi drives this one deep to center. Get going, baby. It is one hopping off the wall. Derigi's around first. He's into second with a double. Ha-ho. Yeah, Derigi's just a little unlucky that he hit his to the deepest part of the park. It went 388. One hops just to the left of the 396 sign there. Um, but boy, gave it a ride, and it sure would be nice now to see Keaton keep this parade going, and maybe uh, maybe get uh, get a little run of his own going. Extra base hits on back-to-back hitters for Iowa. Huxdorf's home run was the fourth of the season for him. Derigi's double just now ties him for the team lead with six. So Brennan's at second. Keaton Anthony's the hitter. Hitting is contagious, folks. Let's hope that it carries on to Keaton in this at bat. First pitch to him. Breaking ball called strike outside corner that one always looks so good but maybe it's not the best idea to swing at it on the first on the first pitch what do you think and, and anthony's the guy that's going to take a first pitch a lot you know he's, he's generally pretty patient uh, gets a chance to do that the 0-1 this one scooped into right field down the line and it is down for a base hit derigi now leaves second he's at third coach heller's got to hold him there at third base. It'll be runners on the corners for the Hawkeyes with one out in the bottom of the first. Keaton really stayed with that breaking ball or change up. It was down low in the zone. Um, kind of golfed it out into right. Right fielder had a long way to go. Couldn't get there. Hawks are right in business now. And that's a tough read for Derigi too at second, right? Because if that ball gets caught then you want to tag and get to third from down the line and right. Because you want to make sure that you want to make sure you get to third base and and you figure you're going to trust your hitters the rest of the way, and um, you know maybe maybe you could get a little bit better jump, but but safe than sorry, and make sure you get a make sure you get there one way or the other. It's Raider Tello now. First pitch to him right down the middle, called strike. Good fastball there, just challenged him right in the center, trying to get ahead. And that have a little two seam tail to it. Yeah, a little uh, a little bit of a movement there, and unusual that. Uh, uh, you know, Raider doesn't. Ra- Unlike Keaton, who takes a lot of first pitches, Raider doesn't. Next one is low and outside. Count is one and one with one out. Bottom of the first. South Dakota State two to one. What are we in? Some sort of barn burner uh, headed toward a high scoring affair in, in seven innings? Uh, I think Iowa will settle in. We'll I'm, settle. I'm not sure the Jackrabbits will completely settle in. 1 1 to Tello. Ooh, half swing, he went around. It's one and two. Just kind of fooled by that one. He, he got the change up again. He saw the change up the first time, was able to hold off. Saw the change up that time, but uh, that was that was green, green, yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yellow for Tello and couldn't stop. All right, Raider protect with two strikes now. The one, two. Chopper up the middle, grabbed by the shortstop. He'll step on the bag for one, over to first for two. The Hawks hit into a double play to end the inning one run for the Hawkeyes but three hits which is kind of the opposite of the way it's been going today Uh, usually it's something like three hits on uh, three runs on one hit but in this inning just one run on the three hits Hawkeyes get on the board head to the second South Dakota State leading 2-1 this is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield at Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! 
When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Into the top of the second inning now from Dwayne Banksfield in Iowa City. Game two of the doubleheader this afternoon. The Jackrabbits lead the Hawkeyes 2-1. Be 9-1-2 for SDSU in this inning. Llewellyn is back on the mound. He operates just out of the stretch. First pitch to Anderson. Check swing. Didn't go around, and the pitch was just low. If you're just joining us, South Dakota State, they're donning uh, baby blue, powder blue uniforms. With gold trim, Hawkeyes in their gold tops with white pants today. 1-0 pitch on its way home. That's high. Ball two. Wrapping up the Iowa women's basketball, we were talking about Hannah Stelke. She turned her ankle, uh, Coach Lisa Bluter said in the press conference, she turned her ankle in the last three minutes of practice yesterday. Oh. 2-0 pitch from Llewellyn is... Just inside, tight zone here in game two, 3-0. and Hopefully that was, you don't want to say precautionary because you certainly could have used her today. But um, said, said it was a game-time decision today okay. that she might have been able to go. Four-pitch walk to lead off the second. That's one of those where, um, you know, just the timing of when that happens doesn't really allow her to recover enough to, to play. Right, and, and, you know, fortunately you, you get the win and then maybe uh, – you buy her a couple of days by not having her press it, and and she's able to be that much healthier come, uh, you know, come Friday or whatever day they end up playing. So Anderson walks to lead off the second. Llewellyn has missed the zone on all five of his pitches to to start this inning. Maybe we just can't start an inning right now. Yeah, I don't know how you how you get over that. <laughs> Batter is McDonald. And there, Llewellyn goes with a breaking ball to find the zone. And, hey, if that's how you get it going, we'll take it. Counts one and one. Because we're right back around to the top of the order here. So the top couple hitters, at least the top three hitters, have enough pop to to punish you for a mistake. Yeah, Llewellyn really all over the zone now, but he throws it for a strike. Another breaking ball inside corner one and two. Good job of battling back. Maybe he can catch McDonald trying to protect, and he can get a double play to get out of the inning as well or move the inning along. Change the trajectory of it. The one-two. Swing and a miss. We'll take that. Strikeout for Llewellyn. He's up to four. Good strikeout there. Came back with a fastball after having struggled to find the zone. Busted right back into it and got him. One thing I've noticed about Llewellyn, he's just – he he just keeps it level. I mean his I mean his attitude. I mean nothing seems to rattle him. And that's that's uh, that's an experienced pitcher. You know somebody that's that's kind of been around the block. He knows good things happen, bad things happen. But boy, he did not check the runner there at all. Uh, yeah, that, that was just a good jump. And and you're right, Llewellyn did not look at first because he would have been able to pick him off. Uh, that's the runner. Anderson, he let off first, took a kind of like a false step, and he would have been in no man's land had Llewellyn uh, checked him out over there at first, but instead doesn't, and so he's at second now with the stolen base. And saw that happen in the first game, too, with McDonald when he was down at first. Uh, There's a little bit of a timing Hawkeye pitchers must have, and the Jackrabbits have done a good job of seeing it as as gets him to swing through there. It's 0-2 now, but... Hawkeyes will have to maybe self-scout a little bit and figure out what they've got going sure. on with that. No balls, two strikes. Llewellyn against Bellows. 
Bellows walked his first time up. The 0-2 from Louie popped up, fouling out of play over the right side. You know, and that was just Bellows' fourth walk of the year. So, again, you've got a guy that really doesn't want to walk. Um, so just need to keep, keep attacking the zone and see if you can clean this up. Christensen setting up low and outside. 0-2 from Llewellyn. Popped up shallow right. It'll carry a bit. Braden Frazier's there. Runner looks like he's going to tag from second to third. Frazier gets it in quickly, and so there's no tag at all there. And the out is recorded in right for the second one of the inning. Good snag there from Braden. Wasn't exactly in the I'm going to throw you out position, but mm -hmm. made the catch. And you know, there's enough wind there that it's still uh, still a little bit of a challenge. So now two down in the top of the second. South Dakota State leading 2-1. And a runner at second base is Reese Anderson. Perry stands in. He was hit by a pitch in the first. That kind of bang, bang, interesting play. He's almost hit by this one just inside. Yeah, he made no real effort to jump out of the way of that one. And but again, you don't have the way the rules are set now, you don't have to hold your position and you know, if you can take a curveball off the uh, elbow pad and jog down to first, more power to you. 1-0 pitch from Llewellyn. That's low and in. Ball two. Nelson's on deck. He hit uh, the RBI single in the first. Yeah, Louie, after really dominating the zone in the first inning, coming on in relief is... Been pretty good, but struggled a little bit more here. 2-0, great breaking ball. You could see it come out of the hand, and it's in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. You, can, you, know, you can see the similarities with, uh, with the San Diego State pitcher that came in. You know, Sunquist just throw it right over the top and uh, snapping it down. Yeah, we've seen both of those. Styles of pitchers in there. Llewellyn missing low and in now, three and one. Need a good bounce back here to finish, finish this inning up. Wind blowing straight out to center now. Just helped a, a couple of balls get out of here this afternoon. Three balls and a strike. Pitch from Llewellyn. Foul back to the screen. Good challenge pitch there from Luke. He's kind of gone away from his fastball. He's really throwing the off speed for a strike today. Well, that's just it. He's, he's struggled to locate the fastball, and so when he's had to battle back, he's kind of cross-counted some of these hitters and been able to keep them off balance that way with, you know, 3-1. You're not exactly looking for a curveball, um, but that's, the, that's Luke's strike pitch right now. See if he dots the outside corner with the fastball. 3-2. Tapped foul into the South Dakota State dugout down the left field line. We'll do it again. Came back curveball there again. Got it on the inside part of the plate. Perry fought it off nicely and just kind of pulled it over the line. Boy, if Llewellyn could throw that fastball for a strike, I think he'd, I think he'd get him. I think he could dot him on the outside here and finish it up. That's where Christensen set up at the 3-2. Feels it, deals it. Another foul ball. Good at bat here from Perry of South Dakota State. He missed that. You know, he was. You saw Christensen set out over really the outer edge. Luke missed that back over the middle of the plate, and that allowed Perry to get a piece of it and uh, keep the at bat alive. Well, and looks in for the sign from Christensen. Likes what he sees, and he's ready. 3-2. This is crushed into left. Look out, trouble, and one hopping the wall. Into second, here comes the throw. It is just off the mark, and Perry's got an RBI double. It's three to one. I kind of knew when that ball lined off the wall that a good throw from Petey had him at second, and just, just a touch off the bag uh, goes as an RBI double. And the leadoff walk comes back to hurt the Hawkeyes. 3-1, South Dakota State adding to their lead. It's Nick Nelson's turn with two outs. And we'll have a brief pause. Here comes Coach Heller. He's walking out of the dugout. Looks like the Hawkeyes are going to 
make a change, go into the bullpen as Hendo. Jacob Henderson will be coming into the game. All right, a pitching change break is coming up. Top of the second, South Dakota State 3, Iowa 1. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Another pitching change for Iowa. Top of the second inning, trailing South Dakota State three to one. The Jackrabbits just won't go down. They won't give up after Iowa ten run them in the first game. Come back and put up three runs already, and still threatening in the second. In the coming out of the bullpen is Jacob Henderson for Iowa. Some more action for Hendo. Hendo making his fourth appearance on the season. He's got a 3.86 ERA, two and a third innings, giving up a run, four walks, four strikeouts. Has yet to allow a hit, but a couple of wild pitches and a hit batter, which is really, uh, you know, Jacob had kind of the the role last year too of of uh, you know Ben Butel was the left-handed I need an out guy and um, Jacob was the right-handed I need an out guy who Coach Heller really trusted um, to to come in and get an out and then that's because of control. He's got a really good breaking ball. Um, his off speed stuff is is just nasty. Kind of drops down. He's got kind of those that multiple arm slot where he can really move it around. Uh, and so hopefully he kind of finds the zone here and and can finish this up. Great start. Whoa, that was nasty. Uh, swing and a miss. Runner on second with two outs. That was a sidearm delivery and it angled like it was going to go outside and then it broke back in at the at the last second. That. Had a lot of movement on it. Good start from Henderson. Ready with the 0-1. Here it comes. That's low and outside 1-1. One and one. The, the leashes have been pretty short for the Hawkeye pitchers today with a shortened game and also, like, hey, figuring out who, who we can get in there to get the job done. And you threw Luke Friday, so, you know, he, he was never going to be real long. 1-1 um. one, one hit to Tello at 30. Bobbles it, scoops it up, throw across, is in time. Good job by Raider Tello on the recovery there. Good pick up there. You know, hot shot, was able to keep it in front of him. Got the scoop and made a made a good throw, a good stretch from Dorigi to get the out. All right, another run for South Dakota State. It's 3-1. to one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Bottom of the second inning, Iowa trailing South Dakota State 3-1. to one. We've been here a couple times in this series against these pesky jackrabbits, John, and, and we've we've battled back every time. The Hawks are going to have to do it again today in game two of the doubleheader. Is it fair to call them Waskily Wabbits at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think that is a fair that is a fair statement to make. 
There's a whole segment of listeners that have no idea what None. the heck I just meant. I mean, I'm on the borderline, right? I gotta be, right? <laughs> Sam Peterson leads off this inning for Iowa. Pitcher Brady Hawkins missing low and outside. Let's just say that 6'3, 225. He looked like a big dude standing out there. Mm hmm. Ooh. Slow breaking ball floats in for a strike. Evening the count at one. Really well done there. Ball across the upper part of the zone. 1-1 one, one to Petey. Swing and a miss. 1-2. and two. Same breaking ball. Actually, that was just the change up that time. But yeah, a lot it, felt like, it felt like that pitch was far outside, but it wasn't. It was going to be a strike. 1-2 to Peterson. He fouls it off. Yeah, you get two off-speed pitches in the low to mid-70s and then really makes that 87-mile-an-hour fastball look a whole lot uh, a whole lot more uh, dangerous. Good discipline by Peterson there, missing and laying off the pitch outside. Two balls, two strikes. Iowa down 3-1 in the bottom of the second. Peterson hits this one fair down the left field line into the corner. Get going, Petey. He rounds first. There goes the helmet. He's into second with a stand-up double to lead off the second. Petey's never run more than 60 feet without losing his helmet. Can't do it. I don't know if, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out, if he needs a chin strap or something to keep that on or, or what, but a good leadoff double for Peterson. The Hawks trying to answer right away. After giving up a run in the top half of the inning, and that's the you know that's the big thing you know make sure you make sure you respond as quick as you can and you know we've talked about it in a ton of the broadcasts from a from an Iowa pitching perspective you know after you put up a number you got to put up a zero and up to Iowa here to answer that that single. Braden Frazier is the batter. Back in the lineup. He came into the game, uh, into game one, after Chase Mosley got injured. You know, he had a hit, drove in a run, so. Mm, swings at the first pitch, just got a piece of it in the box, fouled it off. It's 0-1. And, and it was a good piece of hitting, too. He was down in the count. He was he was down 0-2, had got it, taken a pitch, got it to 1-2, and then served a ball into right field. Uh, to drive in a run and, and get going. Iowa with four hits already. This pitch is low and inside. Good take on the changeup there. And that ball, when it's thrown well, the changeup and fastball look so much alike coming out of the hand. Sure. And just takes, takes really good discipline to recognize it because obviously in addition to coming in slower, it's got a lot of movement. One ball, one strike. Frazier was on it, but fouled it back to the screen. Saw the change up there, 72 miles an hour that time as he really took something off that one. Again, another pitcher when they go into the stretch here, uh, must be something about the way they coach it because he really has got that closed off stance again. Good eye there by Frazier up and in. Yeah, I wonder what the science behind that is you know it's just you've noticed it from from all of them today so it, it, it's got to have some sort of benefit that they see yeah, i'm sure there's a reason why their yeah. coaching staff has has kind of tuned into that way but um, you don't see everybody do it so two two frazier pops it up right side this is getting down the line and right second baseman will go back into shallow right he's got it for the first out of the inning the same right fielder that played the first game he's uh yeah, Beasley. Yep. He doesn't. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't cover a lot of ground. I guess he didn't is the come way in too hard for that is, one. Yeah, this is the way I'm going to say that. So, you know, again, if Iowa, you know, perfect example could be Gable here. You know, if Gable can can just pull the ball a little bit here, um, put put Beasley on his horse and see where he can go. First pitch to Gable Mitchell is high at the eyes. He's not going to swing at that one. 
Still that runner at second with one out. Iowa trailing South Dakota State 3-1, bottom two. We've got action in the South Dakota State bullpen already, too, as they've got somebody throwing and somebody loosening up on the wall. Mitchell, the switch hitter, hitting from the left side against the right-handed thrower, Hawkins. Really pulled, uh, playing Gable to the pull side. Called strike on the inside corner, two and one. Gable got some starts early in the year. Looks like maybe Sam Honar has, has kind of secured the second base starting position. Well, Sam's bat has really been, really been good. And so, uh, you know, what you might give up a little defensively, you've been able to make up offensively. This is blooped into shallow left. Left fielder sprinting forward, but the shortstop goes back. He's got it for out number two. Almost got into a tough spot with Ira holding on uh, Peterson at second base. Able to keep him a little bit uh, out of a normal position, but was able to range over there as just kind of flared off the end of the bat. And it'll be up to Christensen to not leave Petey out there at second base. It's a great start to the inning with that double. But a couple of pop outs on the infield. And now it is up to Christensen. Hawkeye catcher, left-handed hitter. First pitch to him is a called strike on the inside corner. You know, and Garrick's got a couple hits, hitting 333 on the year. He's been the midweek catcher starter, getting the call here in the ga second game of the doubleheader. Nothing and one is high for a ball. Coach Heller's been impressed with how Christensen has come on in, in the, especially in the hitting department, uh, and, and you know just trying to find him some at bats. But they've been really pleased with his development. One one pitch, got his hand started, didn't commit to it, and that's all right because it's a ball inside. No, they call a, that a ball. He called, called it a strike. strike. Called it a strike. Yeah, it's a good pitch. Change up right on the inner half again. One and two is the count. Boy, I must have blinked and looked away too soon or something. <laughs> Pitch to Christensen. That's up and in. Ball two. That was pretty close. Gehrig's sitting kind of right on top of the plate. That ball had a chance to get him punched out, but fortunately, uh, fortunately, umpire's zone's a little tight right now. His position, Christensen's position, helped him there. The 2-2, two -two, that's inside. Called third strike. Got him that time. Peterson is stranded at second. All right, we'll go to the third. Nothing doing for Iowa in the second. South Dakota State three, Iowa one. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the third inning, Iowa trailing South Dakota State three to one. New pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes is Ty Langenberg. Ty Langenberg's sixth appearance on the season. Four of those have been starts. He's one and two on the year, 560 ERA, 17 and two thirds innings, 26 hits allowed, 12 earned runs. That's, I'm sorry, 12 runs, 11 earned, 10 walks, and 18 strikeouts. And you saw Ty come in on Tuesday night, Wednesday night when we were here. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice to see he had the velocity back a little bit, um, you know, kind of got back up into the uh, you know, 92 to 95 ranges. He'd been uh, he'd been a little bit off with his velocity, and and uh, uh, now able to kind of 
snap back in that reliever role a little bit and see if he can carry that forward and, and put together a couple of good appearances now. It'll be interesting to see what Ty gets out of this uh, this stint in the bullpen, I guess we could call it. See if he consistently stays there or if he finds himself maybe on the Sunday side of things because it, it appears that, that Brody's got the Friday spot locked up. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. I, I think maybe there's still some question marks the rest of the way through the rotation. I guess Mark has started today. I, I think that's fair. I, I think, uh, you know, from a, from a stuff standpoint, um, there probably aren't five or eight guys in the country that have better stuff than Brody, so he's probably your Friday guy. But, uh, you know, Ty had, Ty had the experience coming into the season. Good swing and miss there. Um, so, you know, he, he kind of inherited the, the Friday role, but Ty's got great stuff. He just he, he struggled a little bit to find it this year, and, um, you know, if he gets it, um, you know, he, he all of a sudden become whether he's Saturday or Sunday, um, you know, he was the great Sunday shutdown guy last year, you know, whether we needed to, whether we needed to win to win the series or sweep the series. Um, Ty did a great job as he's missed a couple times here, two and one. Um, but, you know, he, he's he's pretty exciting and can get you deep in games that, that maybe Marcus and Brody haven't shown yet. Right. Two balls and a strike to Ira. This one is swung on and missed two and two. I think the next, I guess this weekend's basically done if you look at it for the planning portion of things. But you know, next weekend is really crucial because you'd like to start to build some consistency going into Big Ten play. You, you kind of need to figure it out somewhere along the way because, you know, these these pitchers are all such creatures of habit. You know, it's hard just to um, to, to completely up uproot their schedule. This one is shot into right center field. Frazier comes together with Huxdorf. It'll be Frazier that's got it. Ends up catching it sort of behind his head, but he's got it for out number one. There's enough of a wind blowing around that we've seen a couple of those balls that, that you know, maybe carry five, ten, five or six feet farther than, than maybe the guys originally think it is. Frazier's got that experience out there, but... Uh, He's got it for out number one. Now it's Beasley's turn. Back foot slips out from under him as he swings and misses at the first pitch from Langenberg. And this is the part of the lineup if you're tied. You've got to attack these guys. You know, Don't fool around. Miss the barrel of the bat mm. and just send them back to the dugout and be done with it. Now he's looking pretty good right now. 0-2. He goes with the slider on the outside portion of the plate. Ty holds his glove real close to his face, just peeks out over the top of it the 0-2 is outside for a ball and that's been the miss so far for Ty this year you know he just kind of it's not even really overthrowing it just holds on to it just a just a split second too long and really pulls it well outside one two from Ty popped up high in the air shallow left here comes Peterson Seegers goes back Peterson calls him off and he's got it for the second out and at the last second uh, had to reach for it. Yeah, that wasn't exactly uh, catching it right in the pocket and, and posing for it either. The wind is playing tricks on the Hawkeye outfielders. They've stuck with it, though. Two up, two down, and the Jackrabbit third. Really good fastball, though. You know, again, talking about Ty's, Ty's Velo had that one up at 94. So, you know, back, Isn't that something? Back up in a range where you really want him to see. Sagadol's the batter. First pitch is a good one, but it's a ball from... Langenberg just a bit low with with Ty on Fridays with his starts I don't know if I ever saw him get to 94 no and, and that had been part of the deal and so whew, swing and a miss there on a 93 mile an hour fastball you know we talked about you know maybe he changes up breakfast or a little different routine maybe it's uh you know throw me out there to the first batter so he doesn't technically have to start <laughs> and then give him the relief ball after that yeah as he misses just upstairs with a 94 mile an hour fastball uh, Something so, is different for Ty when he comes in in the middle of the game. Yeah, in, it, in a positive way. Exactly. He he's he's sharp. He's locked in. Yeah, he's just blowing it by this guy. This is Sagadol, and and Langenberg is zipping it right by. And it's what you want to see. You know, the bottom of the order here that's hitting two twelve, oh seventy seven, one forty three. You know, don't fool around. Make him beat you. Mm, there you go. Got him. Outside corner, Ty Langenberg with a strikeout. How about that? 
Good job, Ty. Went with 94 right on the outer black. All right, a one, two, three inning for the Hawkeyes in the third. The bats will come to the box right after this. South Dakota State leading three to one. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at opal.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Bottom of the third inning, Iowa trailing South Dakota State 3-1. The Hawks have four hits compared to just two for SDSU. But not able to plate all those base runners. They've been hitting around Brady Hawkins. He's back in for his third inning of work. Again, this is a, a seven-inning game. So Iowa with a little bit of a... A comeback on their hands, trailing by two in a shortened game. Less outs to work with. It is the top of the order for Iowa in the third in Michael Seegers. First pitch to him. That's low and outside, ball one. Just an update. It's not any warmer outside. <laughs> Just in case you had any wonder or concern. Seegers hits this foul off his left foot in the box, one and one. Yeah, you went for a little walk there. And I, oh, it's just chilly. The sun, I mean, the sun going down is going to be a factor. We, we had the first game at one o'clock today, right? And so four, basically four and a half hours later. I've got uh, Isaiah Falar and Connor McCaffrey are here. And I was just... Uh, Isaiah was going to go to uh, Japan and play, but he couldn't quite get healthy. And so he's working on it, still uh, still maybe in the works, just not uh, not the uh, the immediate plan that he thought he had. Well, Seegers is good enough to get back in the box, and this one almost hit him. He got out of the way of it. After and you foul a pitch off, you don't want to go ahead and get hit by a pitch. <laughs> Iowa trailing by two in the bottom of the third. The 2-1 pitch to Seegers. That one's inside. That one got him. Just barely got him on the elbow. Well done there from Seegers. Go ahead and take that gently off the elbow pad. And it's because he's got the guard there. With If he would have got hit in the pitch before, that would have been that would have been right on the hip. I don't think you have much on the hip, do you? 73-mile-an-hour floater <laughs> off the elbow pad is, is ideal. You, you and can, I would take that one, wouldn't if, we? If you can do it that way, that's the way to do it. I don't even know if Michael realized he got hit. You just heard it. Yep. Heard the click of uh, click on plastic. Well, it's good to get uh, Seegers on base ahead of Huckstorf. First pitch to Kyle is low. Ball one. We'll see how... Uh, how he gets attacked a little bit differently here after hitting the bomb in the bottom of the first inning. He's absolutely crushed one to left field over the scoreboard. It's been Iowa's only run in game two, trailing South Dakota State three to one. Maybe Seegers will get creative over there first. They're really checking on him, back-to-back -back throws. Hawks have only allowed two hits, but the three walks have really, really come back to bite the Hawks. Where four walk or four hits for the Hawks, but just been able to turn into the one run. 
1-0 pitch. Gets away from the catcher into the corner. Seager's round second. Oh, he's going to stop there. He might have thought about going to third. I don't know if it would have been his best idea, so he'll stay at second. <laughs> well, we saw some uh, ultra-aggressive base running in, in Lubbock from from Seager's. And, but, you know, down two here in the third inning. You know, It's funny. You say third inning, you think, okay, well, that's fine. But that's halfway through the game now almost. Yes. And so, you know, you're really – Really going to have to get tuned in. It's it's getting late game already. Two balls, no strikes to Huxdorf. The pitch, ooh, right down the middle, two and one. What's the yoga bear, yoga yogi bearism? Is it's getting late early? Yeah, that's that's how you apply it to this one. Yeah, especially if you think there's a closer in that bullpen that might try to go three innings. Right. Want to get to Hawkins before you have to worry about that pitcher coming out of the bullpen. 2-1 is low and outside, ball three. I mean, Hawkeye's four for nine in the early going of this, and, and then the hit batter. So five of the ten runners have reached base for the Hawks so far, but the double play ball ended a threat. 3-1, Huckstorf swings and misses, 3-2. Trying to add to the home run tally. Put a really good swing on it. Hawkins has done a really nice job with his changeup. 3-2 on the ground to the third baseman on a one-hop. He's got it, throws it across the diamond. It one-hops to the first baseman to retire. Huxdorf, he is out number one. That's actually a... You, you see a lot of guys kind of train for those throws that way instead of uh, instead of trying to get it all the way and missing. You know, you throw it ten feet short and skip it so yes. that it's a it's a higher, easier catch for the first baseman. And he doesn't have to kind of ole kind of ole snap it up. He's able to kind of see it the whole way. Yeah, not a poor throw. Dorigi's first pitch taking inside ball one. I think people get confused with that sometimes just because the throw is low if it's got plenty of time to bounce and kick up into a spot it's you know it's just as accurate as one that is on a line especially on these smooth turf infields it's you're gonna get a true hop right 100 percent. and ooh, i guess it was a it's a late strike call i guess i didn't understand He's why tricking us both john blinked away <laughs> on that. i mean it kind of looked like a strike but i thought maybe it was low and then looked away and saw that he, then he was punching up the right arm 1-1-2, one, one, Dorigi. This floats outside, 2-1. and one. Keaton Anthony is on deck. This just feels like a the time to do it for Iowa before you have to get to the the pressure building, you know, 5th, 6th, 7th. Well, you're probably, I mean, you, you hope you're going to get four at-bats. I suppose you expect four at-bats for the top, but um, you're running through them here pretty quick. Two balls, one strike, one out to Dorigi. Bottom of the third, South Dakota State leading 3-1. Runner on second is Seegers. Dorigi trying to find some green grass. The pitch, this one's lifted in the air. Center field, center fielder is going back. He's got it for out number two. Seegers will tag from second to third. Ball gets away, and Seegers has to stay put at third. Yeah, boy, they've had a couple that... Uh... They, they'd, have, they'd have been testing. You know, you, you would have made them make a good play, but it, I think on, on both occasions had had the Jackrabbits, had Michael gone and the Jackrabbits made a good play, I think in both cases he would have been thrown out. Uh, so you kind of you kind of stay put and you, you depend on uh, you depend on Keaton Anthony here to to bail you out and score a run. He singled in the first. No better time than now. Keaton, first pitch swinging. This one's into the gap in deep right, carrying well, and it will one hop off the wall. Keaton has driven in a run, and he will stand at second with an RBI double with two outs. How about that, Keaton Anthony? Well, that was my point earlier. The, the right fielder kind of shaded his eyes like he was going to play it, but he, he's not running any of those down right now. So good ball there from Keaton as he drove it out. Beasley went and took it on a hop off the wall. Uh, and that'll give Tello a chance to tie the game after or against someone new. Yeah, this could be it for the South Dakota State pitcher. That was the 10th RBI of the season for Keaton Anthony. 
Seems like an amazingly low number for Keaton. Yeah, we'll have to keep track of that one because by the end of it, that'll probably be a lot higher, won't it? You would think so. All right, a pitching change for South Dakota State. We'll let you know who it is after this pitching change break. It's South Dakota State 3, Iowa 2, bottom of the third. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the third inning, Iowa trailing South Dakota State 3-2. to two. Iowa with five hits to this point, but just two runs to, to show for it. But hopefully not done yet in this third inning, trailing by one. Anthony stands at second. Raider Tello is the batter. New pitcher for South Dakota State. We already saw this guy, too. This is Alex Clemens. He started the game on Friday. So I got to tell you, I closed the box score from Friday because I thought there's no way nobody yeah. else is going to pitch from Friday. I was wrong. Alex Clemens, 11.74 ERA. He's 1-0 and on the season, four appearances, uh, one start, which was, of course, Friday, seven and two-thirds innings, 11 hits, 10 runs. They've all been earned, six walks and 15 strikeouts. So um, Hawks won't have to dig far into their book of scouting reports as, uh, um, as Clemens comes back to see the Hawkeyes again. Right. Now, now he, was, he was all right in the first... Uh, in the first two innings, because Iowa, we, we got our two runs in the third. So we'll go back to, yeah, here's the, so looks like a he's, couple hits. Yeah, one, two, three, four, you know, five strikeouts in two basically in two innings. Yeah. Did he start the third inning? or? He... I believe he did. But I... now that I, actually, now that I think about it, I think he just threw the two. I think he just I think threw were, the two. So I think you were, uh, I think you were puzzled that uh, yes. you, there was a new pitcher that kind of tricked you. I don't right. think they made any real announcement because, of course, where you were playing wasn't, uh, you weren't getting all the traditional announcements. So that's right. So yeah, through two innings and five of the six outs were, were strikeouts. So, and so that's not a long outing. So that's why why they're able to easily bring him back here. So my guess is it's. If he can get him through this inning and the next inning, you can hand off to your closer, and um, it'll be up to Iowa to, to upset the apple cart on that plan. South Dakota State leads 3-2. to two. Here's Raider Tello with the runner at second and Keaton Anthony. First pitch to Tello. That's high at the eyes, ball one. Got to be honest, I was watching Clemens in his warm-up pitches. I'm not sure if I saw him throw a strike. I don't know if he had to hurry to, to get loose or... Uh, if, if he's just having a little trouble finding it, one ball, no strikes to Tello, two down, so Anthony will be going on contact. Everything sets up off his 90-mile-an-hour fastball. 1-0 is a breaking ball. Raider with good discipline, 2-0. and <laughs> Getting the Raider Tello chant. We had the Raider power chant down in, in Lubbock. Raider was sure they were chanting for him, though. Yeah, I think that's where that chant has started from. Uh, this is the, some of the parents that are down the line. 2-0 pitch is low and outside. Raiders got a good eye in the box, 3-0. Good work so far. See if he can continue to put pressure on. Peterson on deck. He's been swinging it well the past couple of days. 3-0 pitch to Tello. That is outside. Ball four. Yeah, if Clemens struggles to locate his fastball, then he's really going to struggle to locate his, his breaking stuff. Yeah. And so Hawks will really just try to, you know, if Petey can sit in here, look for something, because we'll get a quick mound visit here as well. 
But if Petey can look for a, uh, uh, you know, a pitch that he can hit. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Anything warm sounds good right yeah, now. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That, uh... And they play the one. <laughs> Hot tub, anything like that. That uh... an extended mound visit here for no real apparent reason. This, mu- this must be one of the new. This must be one of the new rules. We've talked about it. We've almost borderline complained about it. How long they let these mound visits go now? Why? And, and it used to be you couldn't be out there at all. To this, it's okay. Now you're out there. Why are you not? Why have you not broken it up yeah. and finished it off? So that's that's the part that surprises me is, you know, okay, fine, let it go on however long you deem long enough. But once you get out there, it should break up at that point. Especially since it's that he's not probably telling him much about his delivery. He's letting the guy in the bullpen get loose. You know <laughs> what I mean? They got a guy stretching around, so there's nobody really throwing yet. But you just wonder what it could have been that he was telling him out there. Two on for Peterson. Whatever he told him didn't work on that first pitch. He spiked it in the ground. It's 1-0. Yeah, that, I don't think he said throw your fastball 58 feet. <laughs> See if he swings. Yeah, not sure that was part of the deal. Peterson doubled in the second. One ball, no strikes pitch. Petey takes it. Called strike one and one. Runner on first and second. Iowa trailing 3-2. Bottom of the third of a shortened game today with South Dakota State. Only playing seven in game two of the doubleheader. 1-1 to Peterson. Breaking ball. Late called strike outside corner. And it caught the edge, so it's 1-2. and two. A really good pitch there. Again, he's had such a difficult time locating his, his breaking ball. Um, but that one, was, that one was a beauty. Broke it over the outside half. Outfield again, playing Petey to pull. So he misses out there. Petey could make him pay. The one, two. Oh, it's up and in. How'd that not hit him? It's two and two. For Petey's sake, he's been hit kind of up in the shoulder and helmet area so many times. Uh, more power to more power to him to get the heck out of the road. Certainly not, not questioning whether or not he should have <laughs> taken that. But I don't know how that didn't hit him. It looked like it did. The two, two. Low and outside, gets away from the catcher, and the runners will advance 90. Anthony to third, Tello to second. All right. And that, you know, that uh, might take a pitch or, or at least a location or two out of, the, uh, out of the toolbox here for Clemens as he'll have to make sure he misses more in the zone or at least a catchable zone. Boy, John, a base hit gives us the lead right here from Peterson. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Inside and low, ball four. All right, here comes Braden Frazier. It's his turn to drive in some runs. And this is Clemens' deal. There's nobody uh, There's nobody anywhere. Nobody's thrown to a catcher yet, so there's nobody loose enough um, to, to pitch at this point. So he's going to have to. He's going to have to get him through this mess for now. Frazier's been good with the bases loaded. First pitch to him. That's low. Ball one. You're kind of to the point now where Clemens consistently cannot find it. So I don't know if Frazier's too eager to swing the bat until he can get uh, until he can get a strike. You'd like to think not. And that is Burasa warming up right now. So that's the closer. Uh, he'll try to get ready as quick as he can. And Frazier despises or goes against both of us and swings at the fastball in the outside corner, one and one. Yeah, just fouled it back. Felt like he, he might have been on it there, just a little bit outside. And, boy, that's one, though, that if you do put between the white lines, it's probably a weak ground ball to second, honestly. Well, because he was – it's a fastball in the outer corner, and he really kind of pulled out like he was trying to pull it out of the ballpark, and he wasn't going to hit that one hard. 1-1 one, one to Frazier. There's one right down the middle, 1-2. and two. I'd rather seen him swing at that one than the other one. He must have been fooled a little bit, thinking change up there, and now he's really got a battle here. Uh, 
Again, you could see this ball bounce anywhere, so everybody needs to be alive. Tello, Tello needs, or Anthony needs to make sure he's getting to the plate. One ball, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Hawks down to the pitch to Frazier. Outside, gets away from the catcher. Here comes Anthony. He slides. He is safe. Yes. Head first slide. Didn't give, uh, didn't give the pitcher a lot of target. So when he snapped the tag down, missed Anthony's hand. And we're all tied up at three. That was close. It was very Woo. close. Good hustle there from the catcher as he jumped on it, got it, got it back as he was able to, Velico was able to kind of knock it down a little bit. So the ball didn't roll all the way to the screen, um, but obviously not enough. And Hawks are still in business. Two more runners in scoring position. 2-2 two -two pitch to Frazier. That's low ball three. Gable Mitchell's on deck. We could load him up for Mitchell if Frazier can get on. Clemens is ready. Full count pitch to Frazier. Here it comes. Oh. Swing and a miss. Got him on strikes, so we'll leave a couple of runners. Tello at third. Peterson at second. But the Hawks tie it up in the third. Three to three. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth inning, we're all tied up. So we've played about half of this game and haven't really sorted much out. So it's kind of a race for the next three, four innings to see who can win them. Ty Langenberg back to the mound for Iowa. He'll take on eight, nine, and one. For South Dakota State, it'll be Valico, Anderson, and McDonald. I think we got a pinch hitter coming up here as he's flashing his number at the umpire. Yeah, Bennis will pinch hit. Yeah, you're right. No, sir. <laughs> yeah, just a brief change. So it'll be Adam Bennis. Saw him in the first game and the game on Friday. South Dakota State with two hits, but three runs. Did a lot of their damage in the first inning. First pitch from Langenberg. This one is just foul down the left field line. That would have been a problem. That's a well-located fastball, though. I mean, I know it's it looks scary, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, he got that 90. It was only 91 miles an hour, but he got it well in on the hands. He missed it in off the plate. Um, Really going to be hard to pull that down the line and keep it fair. Langenberg out of the windup, the 0-1. Check swing. He went around, and it's 0-2. I thought they were going to send it down, John, but they didn't need to send just, that one down. I did, too. I was kind of looking at the first base umpire <laughs> waiting for him to flinch or make a move. but Nothing in two pitch from Ty. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. When Ty can locate the fastball and then throw the slider off that, then all of a sudden all of his pitches are just that much nastier. Is that when he really released the speed, only threw that one at 80 miles an hour and was able to just kind of wave at it. Center fielder, Reese Anderson. Anderson is up now for the Jackrabbits. First pitch from Ty, fouled back to the screen. 
You see Ty really attacking the strike zone right now again. Just going right after the hitters. See, going through, trying to go through the bottom of the order here quickly and cleanly. Have not had too many of those in this series against South Dakota State. This is a chopper to Tello at third. Fields it on the run. Great throw out number two. Really love the defensive aggressiveness there. Didn't wait for it to come back to him. Went and got it on a big high hop, charged across, and then a good throw on the run, just right on the money to get uh, the second out. Really been impressed with the, the way Iowa's, to this point, responded defensively. Made a, a lot of nice plays. Top of the order, this is hit on the ground to Seegers at short, and it's off his glove. <laughs> I wish I could rewind about 15 seconds because I just cost Michael probably an error. That's on me, Michael. Oh, man. That is 100% your fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully he doesn't come back to bite us. We'll see how they score. I believe that'll be an error, though. Yeah, I don't think Iowa had one beforehand, so they've already flipped that one up on the scoreboard. It was a tough play. It was not routine by any means. It's, it's one he should probably make, and, and he would tell you the same thing. Um, just wasn't able to quite get over there. And, uh, you know, a little one of those top spinners that kind of gets, uh, gets off the turf a little bit and just kind of unfortunately kind of rolled up his glove and ate him up a little bit. Bellows is the batter. He's down on the count 0-1. Two down in the Jackrabbit fourth. Tied at three. Just want to see Ty continue to bear down here. Good pitch, but just outside from Langenberg. Short lead at first from McDonald. 1-1 one, one on its way home. Swing and a miss. Chased one low and outside. It's one and two. That was one of those swings about halfway through that you knew you shouldn't be doing it, yeah. but uh, couldn't stop. And so, you know, Ty's done a nice job getting ahead. Now here, finish him up and get back in the dugout. Quick move home. Check swing. Did he go around? Ooh. No, he didn't. Again, I thought that was close. The ball actually got by Christensen to the backstop. And so... Advancing 90 feet is McDonald, who's at second now. Top of the fourth, we're tied at three. Boy, I thought that was... Really close. I thought that was strike three. I thought he was going to have to throw him out at first base, but I thought it was strike three. Instead, the count is two and two. Langenberg set the pitch. That's low and outside again. Good block there by Christensen. Don't want to lose him here. You, you've done a good job the first two batters of the inning. You know, got a little unfortunate with uh, with the hop off Seeger's glove, but now you, you got to take it in your own hands here and finish this up. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch from Langenberg. Up the middle to Mitchell, who's got it. Gable throws it over to Derigi for out number three. And Iowa holds South Dakota State scoreless in the top of the fourth. Time to take the lead into the bottom of the fourth. We're tied at three. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. Get to be crunch time for the Hawkeyes. Tied with South Dakota State in the bottom of the fourth. Again, we're just playing seven innings in this game two of the doubleheader. So we're really technically in the late innings now. 
for Iowa trying to take the lead on South Dakota State. This is what you just got to have uh, if you're the Hawkeyes. This is, uh, uh, you know, the, when it comes to the end of the season and, and RPI points and rankings and all of those things, nobody's going to care that it was cold today. Right. Nobody's going to care that it was 32 degrees and, and it was the back, back game of a doubleheader. You know, you're just going to have to find a way to win this. Um, just like they're going to have to find a way to win some Big Ten games when things are going against them. So, The pitcher is still Clemens for SDSU. Gable Mitchell is the leadoff hitter for Iowa Nanning. First pitch was low, ball one. Let's put some pressure on him early in the inning, right? I think that's the, that's the biggest thing is try to get a base runner on. You know, If Gable can get on any way that he can. Squares to bunt, pulls it back. It's a call and strike. It's one and one. You know, if he can create some havoc and see, you know, get on base. Clemens is, is relatively quick to the plate, but now you've got the third string catcher behind the dish. So, so you know, maybe there's a running opportunity there. And, you know, a hit and run, a run and hit, something where you can be creative here. 1-1 one, one is inside, 2-1. and one. Like even a pitch like that getting by the – the catcher a little bit could could be some uh, an opportunity for Iowa if you get some base runners, which is what Iowa needs to do. Mitchell, Christensen, and Seegers do up in the inning. Count is two balls, one strike. Clemens is set the pitch to Mitchell. That is down low, low ball three. You're right. That was warmer an hour ago. There was a, <laughs> there was a stretch there where it was pretty good. It, tolerable. How about that? Yeah. We won't go with pretty good. But. I don't know if I'm numb, John. Or <laughs> <laughs> 3-1 to Mitchell inside. He turns away from it. That's ball four. And there's the leadoff hitter getting on that we just talked about. That's the whatever it takes. Because, again, we're, we're at a spot where we can uh, uh, we can neutralize their, their best weapon, which is the guy warming up in the bullpen that's the closer. So uh, see what the Hawkeyes do here with, with – Christensen and you know you got two two relative rookies here so how do you how do you do it what do you what do you ask him to do Mitchell's got a great lead at first see if Christensen squares to bunt he does pulls it back balls inside he didn't square any too early no you, you know usually if you're going to sacrifice you go ahead and you telegraph it to the world hey here it comes because your most important job is to get it down um well, I don't think he's bunting for a hit. I'm just not sure how much experience he has bunting, period. Swings Ooh. and misses at the next one. It's one and one. That was a great cut by him. Just, yeah. hit, just missed it. 89-mile-an-hour fastball right down the center of the plate. Um, love the aggressiveness. Love, love the rip. Um, just wish it would have hit the barrel of the bat. Another close stance pitcher. Now Christensen squares to bunt. Here's the pitch from Clemens. Ah, Christensen pulled it back and knew that it was a strike. And he shakes his head in disappointment. It's one and two. Yeah, good fastball, low outer half. You know, that's, again, if you're not an experienced bunter, that's a tough pitch to bunt. You kind of go down after it and you end up popping it up. Um, but instead he pulled back and just took the strike. I'll put it in play, get a base hit. One, two, ah, chased it outside of the zone. He's down on strikes with a swing and a miss. Top of the order for Seegers now. Third baseman Nelson down there didn't really, uh, even with two strikes, he was still in front of the bag. He wasn't, wasn't given any ground. Now with this type of shift on, you know, if Michael has any sort of push bunt, if he could push it past Clemens, with where that second baseman's positioned, that's a pretty easy bunt base hit right now. Right. First pitch to Seegers in on the hands, ball one. You know, and anything, <clears throat> even if you swing and hit it on the ground to the right side, uh, that could get through. There's such a large gap there. That gets through. You could maybe get Gable the third. Because it wouldn't have to be a good bunt either. It's just you just have to miss the pitcher. Yes. Instead, Michael swings at this one, fouls it up and out of play to the right side. Count is one and one to the Hawkeyes shortstop. Bottom four, we are tied at three. 
And we've seen Michael have good back control. You know, him hitting a ground ball through the right side is not something that's uh, uh, that you've, you, you've never seen him do. It's, it's well within his capability to poke a ball that way and move Mitchell to third. Gable has to dive back at first. One ball, one strike, one out. No activity in the Hawkeye bullpen, so you'll see Ty make any trouble here for Clemens, and you're gonna you'll see Burasa come in at that point. Interesting to see where Iowa goes after Ty if they have to go to somebody after him. Gotta think Christofferson would be due for some time. One ball, one strike. The pitch is up and in. Mitchell takes off for a second. He is out. Well, what a what a terrible pitch to throw, and what a great throw down from from the backup catcher. That was Schramm, uh, who didn't have any type of pitch to throw at all. As that ball wow. almost hit Michael in the head. What uh, concentration by him to catch that? Yeah, was able to snag it um, and regroup enough to make a throw down to second base on the money. So no base runners now for Iowa. The 2-1 to Seegers, and now he hits this one in the gap in right center. The right fielder is there, and he's got it for the third out of the inning. Totally changed the, the tune of the inning. We've played four at Dwayne Banks. South Dakota State and Iowa tied at three. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Langenberg back on the mound for Iowa in the top of the fifth. We're tied at three with South Dakota State. Got to hold them uh, to a zero here. We've we've kind of talked about it. This is a a must win type of game for the Hawkeyes. Uh, I don't know if you you know maybe we should not necessarily say must win, but you just can't lose it. You know, <laughs> and it, it just feels like a difference in tone when you say it that way. I guess. Well, and obviously game, uh, uh, what are we, game 18 now, 16, wherever we are, um, nothing's 18, nothing's probably literally must win. Um, but when you have some aspirations. Here's one that's shot into center. Huxdorf dives forward. He's got it. What a catch by Huxdorf in center. Full extension, got it, out number one. That's when you know Huck's really at his best. Not only is he hitting bombs, but he's making the defensive plays. And um, he can uh, he can help a pitcher out quite a bit with uh, with those types of plays. Well positioned, but then stuck with it and, and made the diving play. How surprised are we, really, though? <laughs> I mean, that, that is borderline routine for Huxdorf to make a diving catch every once in a while, and that's a good one there to, to start off the inning because that was going to be trouble. If he doesn't catch that, that gets behind him. And, and Frazier did a good job to to back it up and, and you know be behind him to go get it if he didn't. But uh, could have been extra bases. And now Ty is riding that wave of momentum. He's got Nelson down in the count 0-2. Looks in for the sign from Christensen. Got it. The pitch up and in. Didn't hit him, did it? No. Oh, goodness. That was close. One and two. And Nelson, 241 on the season coming into today. Don't want to let him off the hook after being ahead 0-2. Oh, 1-2 two. Two on the ground to the left side. Tello's got it on a couple of hops. He squares it up, throws it across, out number two. 
what was it, game one? We went till the sixth inning before we had a ground ball out. At least we've had a couple we've, this time. We've had a few more today. I'm still not sure they have had one, but um, I think oh, they might, had the du- we had the double play ball. They okay, the- one. <laughs> we'll give you one. It just, I, I, they've had a couple, I guess, to third, but man, it just hasn't felt Oof. anything like that. Great start to the at bat for Ty, but he just missed inside on a breaking ball. If he starts throwing that for a strike, then, then Ty's going to be back. 1 0 pitch to Ira. Ooh, swing and a miss. One and one. Okay, so jumping real quick to women's basketball again. Monica Sinano scored 20 points today, nine rebounds, and, not, and made, not, made nine field goal attempts. She had no dribbles today. <laughs> she never dribbled the basketball, swing and a miss from Ira. So, I mean, she is so efficient, and, and part of, you know, she catches the ball in so many good spots. Um, you know, and you see so many players now today have to take kind of all these gather dribbles, not Monica. One-two pitch from Langenberg. On the ground again to the left side. Tello charges hard, scoops it in the glove, and then throws it to first. A little bit high. Wasn't going to be in time anyway. And it's an infield single for Ira for SDSU. Boy, he swung hard at that (laughs) and hit it right into the ground. Tello did an outstanding job to even make it close over there at first. That might be the most impressive exit angle I've ever seen on on, uh – (laughs) <laughs> on the track man negative 58.46 pretty straight down pretty much hit it straight down into the ground so ira's on first with two outs just can't get that one two three inning i guess we had one in the third first pitch to beasley's a called strike back to your point about sonano who keeps track of that stat i know we got a lot of people i i work in the you know sports information department so i know that we have folks that keep track of stats whoever had to track that one <laughs> Well, it's actually quite easy. A little bit missed on the inside. With her, with dribbles, none. None. Nope, didn't dribble again. Caught it, didn't dribble again. Well, it's like us thinking about the ground balls. we got to think about, man, all we need to find is one just to see if she did. Yeah. You know, just to see if they did uh, hit a ground ball. It's kind of the same with her. Are you thinking, did she dribble? No, I guess not. No dribbles. I, I have never seen a stat like that. I've never seen a stat like that. Well, because I think it was, I did a couple of the women's basketball games earlier in the year, and I think last year, as Langenberg goes over to first again, I want to say that she had like 19 dribbles. I mean, it was some ridiculously low number um, where she just didn't dribble the basketball. Because, again, part of it is she does all of her work before she ever catches it. On the ground, just foul down the left field line. So she does such good work getting the ball into position and then runs Mike and drill off both blocks and, <laughs> and you know, just does a really good job of uh, – uh, of positioning herself and you know, never really catches it with her back to the basket where she's got to make that traditional hook move. She doesn't waste a dribble to go back out. She just throws it out. One, two pitch off the hands. We'll do it again. Good job from Beasley there to fight off that fast or fight off the curveball. Probably would have got punched out as that ball really broke back across. Um, a good late swing to stay alive. That couldn't have felt good either. Not a chance inside like that on the hands Mm. one ball two strikes with two outs pitch from Langenberg foul again nice battle between Langenberg and Beasley Ira down at first has three stolen bases but doesn't look too engaged Langenberg's thrown it over there a couple times but doesn't seem like he's had a lot of interest in running Swing and a miss on a high heater. Langenberg goes back and got him with that one at 93. Great job, Ty Langenberg. Bottom of the fifth coming up. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. 
When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Bottom of the fifth inning, Iowa, South Dakota State tied at three. The Jackrabbits have a new pitcher into the game. We'll get to him in just a moment. But first, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds for station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, new pitcher for South Dakota State is senior right-hander Ryan Burasa. And this is the guy that everybody's been talking about, that we don't want to see him uh, while the Jackrabbits have the lead. We're going to see him in a tie game right now. Uh, it's just kind of fun to say his name, too. 077 ERA, sixth appearance. He's got three saves, 11 and two-thirds innings this year, giving up just six hits, one run. It was earned. Four walks, 23 strikeouts. His opponent's hitting just 146 against him. He's thrown a couple wild pitches. Uh, you know, fastball isn't anything too crazy. It's just going to be right around 90. It's the splitter, and it's a really good one that uh, college hitters don't see a lot. Well, Huxdorf will be the first Iowa batter to get a look at Burasa, and the first pitch is in there for a strike, 0-1. Oh, he admitted that was fun to say. It, yeah. Especially they've got it on the pronunciation guide, so they've got it all spelled out for us. Really like to get his name right if he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in one is a count to Huxdorf. Bottom of the fifth, tied at three with South Dakota State. Kyle with a swing and a tap foul. Yes, he changed speeds there, but you know, again, that the fastball is going to come in about come in around 90 miles an hour and then that splitter will look the same come out of his hand and, you know, he, can they find any sort of tell behind his back in his glove any type of wiggle to tip it off a little Huxdorf hits this in the air to center center fielder is going back and Ooh. he'll leap and make the catch <laughs> wow almost burned him with it continuing to carry but Huxdorf couldn't quite get it down he's out number one yeah, Anderson was in no real rush to get back, and that ball just kind of kept going. And next thing you know, Anderson had to make a little bit of a leap and grab on it. And I haven't been terribly impressed with the outfield play so far. So right. it'd be nice if Iowa can put some balls out there and test them here. Well, now after all that, the center fielder moves in closer to the Tiger Hawk and. If my memory serves me correctly, Dorigi hit one. Dorigi hit one over his head in, the, okay, all in right. the first inning. Yeah, <laughs> Straight to center. So uh, the wind blowing out. So maybe they're thinking, hey, if he hits that again, it'll get out instead of um, staying in. But uh, I don't know. Barasa's 1-0 pitch to Dorigi is low ball two. Or they figure he's already done it. Surely he won't do it to us twice. Oh, sure. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning never strikes the same place twice, right? No. Uh, See if Dorigi's got a take sign here on 2-0 or if he finds one he likes, if he takes a rip at it. Yeah. Either way, it's probably more leaning towards that first one because uh, that was in the dirt low, 3-0. and He didn't like it, so he didn't swing at it. And for the Hawks to win the game, my guess is they're either going to have to get to Burasa or we're going to go long because he's going be, to be the pitcher the rest of the way. Fires a strike on the 3-0 in the outside corner. I like this. I like our part of the order, though, right? You know, Dorigi and Anthony and Tello, and then hopefully get to you know, Peterson after that. Bottom five, 3-3, three, three, playing seven innings in this game. Three balls and a strike to Dorigi. The pitch. That's outside. Ball four. And that's how you can get it started with a, a walk with one out. Just the fifth walk for Burasa, so 
again for a guy that throws the splitter and I, and you know a lot of times with the splitter you're you're looking for chase and so if you don't get ahead um, you know the Hawkeye hitters will be less likely to chase which means you know more likely to kind of raise up that walk total now we'll see how this goes with a couple of freer swingers coming up here first pitch to Anthony gets away Dorigi takes off for second to throw down not in time that is a great read from Brennan as that ball only got two or three feet away from the catcher. But as soon as as soon as it moved, and, and honestly, that's something that, that Coach Bode in the first base box is probably telling him, hey, he's going to throw the splitter. It tends to be down. So when it's down, be ready because if you see it come out of his hand and it's going to bounce, you get moving. And same thing now great. from second to third. Great point, John. 1-0 pitch to Anthony, popped it up. Shallow right center. This is not enough to move Dorigi over. Caught by the center fielder, and Keaton is down for out number two. Boy, got a, got a fastball that he wanted, 89 miles an hour, inner half, but just kind of launched it up in the air and didn't really have any zip on it. With some of the control issues, he had warm-ups in early on. I almost wanted to see if he'd bounce a couple more and if you could yeah. get to third in a cheap way. Here's Raider Tello, runner on second, two outs. First pitch to Tello, drives this one deep Come to left. On. Get going, Come baby. on. Get going. It yes. is gone. Ha ha. Adios, pelota. And that's what Raider Tello does right there. He gives the Hawkeyes the lead. Yes. Raider Tello. What a big bang as he gets his. <laughs> as the crowd giving him Raider power. Love it. There it is, the first home run of the season for Raider Tello, and it's off the scoreboard and left to give the Hawkeyes the 5-3 to three lead. Raider and I have been talking about uh, the home run call. There it was, John. We we got it on a day we probably didn't expect it. Lavate baby here. I didn't go with that one, no. Nope. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. I couldn't commit to that. You have all the experience. I'm. Uh, I'm Sesame Street Spanish, so I don't. I don't really have a whole lot. But uh, yeah, that was Raider had had really wanted uh, wanted something special, and man, that was a good one. Big time for it there to give the Hawks the five three lead. Five three in the bottom of the fifth. Peterson down in the count. Zero oh and two now. As he hit that three eighty five, so just carries over the three seventy two sign and. Had a little bit to spare. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch to Peterson. Check swing, didn't go. Barely got his hand started, actually, and it's one and two. How about that for Raider Tello to give Iowa the lead? Huge. Nobody really, no real action. And Ty's, Ty's going to keep the ball here. Uh, nobody going in the Hawkeye bullpen. Two balls and a strike, actually. The pitch is in there at the knees. It's two and two. Yeah, he'd been close in a couple of other yeah. ones. A couple of those games down in Lubbock, he had a couple of good chances, but uh, couldn't quite get it all the way out. Great to, great to see him get one. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ooh. Just low and outside. Looked pretty good. The count's full. He might have caught a break there. See if he can take advantage of it. Out of the stretch, the pitch to Peterson. Swing and a miss. Got him on that one. 90 miles an hour, and that'll end it for the fifth, but it's the Raider Tello home run, the two-run shot to give Iowa the 5-3 to three lead and send us to the sixth. Good time for the first home run of Raider Tello's Hawkeye career. To the sixth we go, Iowa leading 5-3. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. 
At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Top of the sixth inning in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes leading the Jackrabbits 5-3, courtesy of the two-run shot by Raider Tello. Back in the bottom of the fifth to give Iowa this two-run lead. And now the Jackrabbits will come to the plate uh, here in the top of the sixth, trailing by two. Spent some time leading this game by two, and Iowa's flipped it on them. It'll be Ty Langenberg against Cade Struff. Uh, Stuff, rather. Stuff is the pinch hitter for SDSU in the sixth. He was hitting 321 coming into today. Got a little bit of pop, seven extra base hits on the season. Langenberg's first pitch is a called strike on the outside corner. This is an opportunity for Ty now to pitch confidently with that two-run lead. Ty's been a hard luck loser. It'd be nice to get one back, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. steal one for the win column here if he can, you know, close out here the sixth and maybe see who's ready to close out the seventh or, you know, he can keep it in his own hand and finish it out on his own if he's efficient here. Swing and a miss on the 1-1. One, one. Just really, you know, I don't want to jump the gun, but really impressed with, with Ty the last two times we've seen him the, out of the bullpen. Yeah, the midweek, the midweek he was really good and, and he's been – Efficient and, and dominating the strike zone today. Got him on the outside corner. How about that one from Langenberg? Out number one. Good dart there. Went right back out of his fourth strike out of the day. And he'll face Shram here. You know, again, the bottom of the order here. Really want to attack this. Yes. No, no reason to fool around here. Get Shram, get Anderson, and you know, then take your chances when you roll around to the top in the in the seventh inning. Good start to the sixth for Ty. He's really pounding the outside corner. Just missed that time to Shram. Shram is a left-handed hitter. Shram has three at-bats on the season, has struck out three times. Let me tell you what you need to do here. Yeah. Attack yeah. the zone, go right at him. Get a little bit closer to that with a 1-1 one, one count now. One out, base is empty for the Jackrabbits in the sixth. Swing and a miss on the next one. It's one and two. If he somehow finds his hitting stroke, then just kind of tip your hat and say, well done. Well done, man. Well done. But for right now, go see if you can find strike three. One, two from Langenberg. This skirts low, and it's two and two. Yeah, I tried to get him to chase the pitch there. Had, had busted a couple of fastballs with him and tried to give him something else to look at. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. There it is. Outside corner again. Yes. And there's another Hawkeye teacher. Back to back caught lookings on the outside corner. Really well done there. Ty adding to the total here. And that's what that's the exciting part. This is what Ty can be, is you know, he can be a dominating pitcher. He can be a strikeout pitcher. He needs to go get Anderson here. First pitch is bouncing in the other batter's box away from Anderson. Anderson looked like he showed bunt there and saw it out of the hand that uh, wasn't worth going after. Now, Ty's missed a couple of times low and outside. Actually, did they, they credit that as a a strike, the, the first pitch? Did we, he not pull the bunt back? We might have on the board, but my guess is it's 2-0. 
There's a strike from Langenberg. We'll have to see it. It's either, I believe it's two and one. I I concur. St uh, yeah. Statcast has it. He just put it. Two. He just put it up over his hand. Now he tries to bunt down the third baseline. This one goes foul. So now we're squared away. It's two and two. Yeah. Statcast is wondering why he's not out, but <laughs> very delicately balanced bat at home plate. We're all set. Yes. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Bottom half of the order coming up for Iowa. Frazier, Mitchell, and Christensen. Seven, eight, nine. When we get there, two balls, two strikes, pitch from Langenberg. Swing and a miss. Got him. How about that inning for Ty? Yes. Strikes out the side. And we'll go to the bottom of the six with Iowa leading 5-3. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. All right, bottom of the sixth inning in Iowa City, and the Hawks will try to add to their 5-3 lead over South Dakota State. Frazier, Mitchell, Christensen do up in this inning. Playing a seven-inning game, so we're really approaching the end now. You probably think that Will Christofferson comes in for Iowa to close the door on the Jackrabbits, although Ty has been outstanding, Langenberg, that is, out of the uh, Iowa bullpen, but it just feels like Christofferson will get the nod in the seventh to close the door. Hopefully with a few more runs under the Hawkeye belt, Braden Frazier stands in. First pitch is high, ball one. You know, Ty struck out the side there in that inning, and really velocity's dipped a little bit, but it stayed high. It stayed, you know, 92, 93 at least. So 1-0 pitch to Frazier, swing and a miss. Well, I guess Will is Will's got his jacket on and it looks like he's throwing down there, but um. he came in in a tough spot on Friday and, and you know did the best he could, came in with the bases loaded, nobody out. And for the first time didn't have his slider. Yeah, yeah wasn't there. You know, that's a, that's a pitch that he really leans on and uh you know kind of the midweek joke is that how many times is he going to throw it and have guys flinch away from it? Um, but, you know, really didn't have it and, and had to figure out how to pitch around that, which, you know, a little adversity is not a bad thing. Hawks were able to win through it. 2-1 to Frazier's popped up right side in front of the Iowa dugout. Catcher will give chase. He's near the screen. He's got it. Good play. Right in the on-deck circle. Frazier's down for the first out of the inning. That's a good play by Shram again. And can you start talking about third string catcher, but went back and made that one look Looked pretty easy. We got under it and spotted the screen and, and just tracked it back. Looked look better than some of the outfielders have tracking balls. <laughs> right, and, and that's the hardest, like, pop-up in the game is, is for the catcher, right, because it's got the, you know, back, the spin coming back. Weird spin, and maybe that's what he's used to, that wind pushing it back anyway, so he was kind of ready for that part of it. Gable Mitchell is in there, squares to bunt, pulls it back, and it's a ball outside. Gable's got the third baseman kind of on a little bit of a yo-yo coming back and forth on the bag. See if uh might be better served to try to pull it down toward first base and see if he could beat it out that way. Gable's all eyes, and Barasa can't find the zone. It is 2-0. After trailing by one in the 
first at the end of the first half, Maryland's come back and blitzed Arizona, so they'll be on to the round of 16. Got Michigan playing a little bit later tonight in the women's tournament. Mm -hmm. Virginia Tech beats South Dakota State. These same Jackrabbits women's basketball team is done for the season. Two balls and a strike to Mitchell. Pitch from Burasa. Called strike on the inside corner. And it's two and two. Good fastball there right on the right on the inner half. Yeah, we've noticed that with South Dakota State today. They really hit the corners well. And I think the scouting report says it a lot. You know, they bite on the corners, nibble on the corners, live on the edges, and that's something that they've they've done today. It's part of why they walk a lot of guys, that's though. That's true, yeah. Two balls, two strikes, pitch to Mitchell. Swing and a miss. Got him for out number two. Because you start thinking about what's your, you know, if you're really, really good, what's your what's your miss range? And and then maybe if you're not, if you're only really good, you know, your miss range is a little bit wider. And if you're constantly trying to paint black, um, you know, you're going to miss edges. And we'll have a pinch hitter again here for the Hawkeyes for Garrett Christensen. Here comes Coy Sarsfield. Sarsfield has had a number of pinch hit appearances. I feel like I say this a lot with the Iowa team, but he's just fun to be around. Yeah. He's a good personality, just, a, just really entertaining. First pitch to Coy. That's in the dirt. So you wonder what goes on at catcher now. You just bring in Cade for one inning. I would think so. You bring in Cade to try to close out with Will. He only... He caught seven innings the first game, so he wasn't overly taxed. 1-0 pitch to Sarsfield. That's up and in, ball two. Iowa leading 5-3. Bottom six. Just have three more outs to record. He'd like to get maybe another run or two for some insurance. Michigan State men up five with a minute and a half to go over Marquette. Wow. Seven seed, Marquette the two. Sarsfield takes this one for a strike. Creighton off to a good start against Baylor. UConn and St. Mary's in a tight one. Plenty of basketball later on tonight, too. I believe Gonzaga, TCU, and Indiana and Miami. That's a Big Ten game. You'll find a Cinderella and Fairleigh Dickinson in Florida Atlantic, aren't we? At least one of them is going to make it. Uh, you know, you're either. How, how often? Do you suppose if you'd have told Florida Atlantic they were going to be a 16 point favorite headed into round two, they'd uh, they would not have expected so that. What happened to Purdue? Yeah, exactly. How, who, who all did they lose that were that far favored right. over them? Three balls and a strike to Sarsfield. The pitch. That's on the outside corner. Counts now full. I don't know how your bracket's doing, John. I did not fill out a bracket. I haven't filled out a bracket for a few years. I was, uh, I've been uh, uh, pulled into other forms of entertainment as it comes to the NCAA tournament. Sure. <laughs> All right, I get you. Three-two pitch to Sarsfield is oh. in there for a called third strike. Coy goes down on strikes. Three more outs to get for the Hawkeyes to seal this one. Iowa leading five to three. I fill out a bracket. I shouldn't. It gets embarrassing at times how bad I, that's why, I am. At that's this. why I stopped. Uh, well, three more outs to get for Iowa in the seventh. We'll see if they turn to Christofferson or they see if they leave in uh, Ty Langenberg. We'll see you right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information.
John Evans and John Leo from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. Three outs to get for the Hawkeyes today, and we'll try to slam the door with Will Christofferson. Christo comes into the game. It's his ninth appearance. He's 2-0 and on the season. Eight and a third innings, giving up just one hit, no runs, four walks, and 18 strikeouts as Will owns a masterful slider. And so we'll see a mix here, see if he can... Finish it up. Cade Moss will be his new catcher. Actually, no, that's... I announced Wilmus, but it, that sure looks like Cade. I can't, no, I honestly cannot tell if it's Wilmus or Cade because the, the... Looks the like gear. number 40, but I can't tell for sure. Yeah. Top of the order in... McDonald, he stands in. First pitch from Christofferson is a called strike on the outside corner. Boy, this will be a mystery for us. I'm going to have to solve it. But Nick Christofferson goes with the slider, and it's 0-2. Sure looks like 40 to me. We can't see into the Hawkeye dugout to figure it out that way either. No balls, two strikes. Pitch from Christofferson off the end of the bat, a spinner that goes foul off the backstop. 22 inches of break on that slider. Nope, forget it. <laughs> Out of the windup, Christofferson's ready. The pitch, swing and a miss. Got him with it. That looked good. The slider on the outside corner. Out number one. And I don't know, you know, it's not a real bright sunny day, but, you know, you've got the shadows now from... Uh, from the bleachers coming across. So you've got Christo still out in the sun and the hitters in the shade. So you've got a little bit of, of sun to shade move here, which has got to just make it a little bit more difficult to see what's going on with this breaking ball as swings over the top of that 83 mile an hour slider. As if Christofferson needed another little advantage, right? Even better reason to bring him in, I guess. Just outside with the 0-1 pitch. Iowa leading 5-3, top seven. Got to get two more outs. You already got one in the inning. I will be on their way to a 15-3 start on the season. 1-1 pitch from Christofferson. Fastball outside, 2-1. and one. Yeah, Christo, four walks, couple hit batters. But control's been pretty good for the most part. 2-1 pitch. That's a beauty on the outside corner, two and two. Of course, if I could throw that slider with that much movement across the plate, it would. Uh, even when you know that's coming, it's hard to hit. Out of the wind up, the two two on the ground, softly hit to Tello at thirty, cuts it off the throw across to first in time. Got him out number two. Good play there. If that ball gets through to Seegers, I don't think Seegers throws him out at first. So nice job by Tello to cut in front. Shortened up the time, shortened up the throw, and was able to gun it across the diamond. And the Hawks are just one out away from a series sweep and a doubleheader sweep. 5-3, Hawks with the lead, two outs, and nobody on. Down to their last chance in Dawson Perry. First pitch from Christofferson is on its way home. It's outside, ball one. Tried to set that up on the outside part of the plate and break it off, but... Hadn't shown him one on the plate yet to, to taunt him. And went back to it on the outside portion of the plate, location-wise at least. Swing and a miss from Perry, one and one. Ooh. Finds it on the outside corner. Perry didn't swing at it, but that one was a true strike on the corner, and it's one and two. Last chance for SDSU. You know, Perry hits 389 on the year, yeah. so it's not like he's a chump in the batter's box. So he knows what he's doing, but, boy, Will's just so good with this. And he got him again. Third strike, swing, and a miss. Christofferson got him on the outside corner. And that'll do it. Hawks win this one 5-3. to three. They get the sweep over South Dakota State. All right, we'll head into postgame right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. For award-winning claims and sales service, find an agent at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. All right, Hawks win 5-3, improved to 15-3 and on the season. John Evans, just a final thought on that one. Uh, game two, just very excited for Ty Langenberg. I mean, what a what an outstanding job. You know, it, it looked like it could be kind of a uh, one of those gross Sunday starts where, you know, it ends up as a pileup. Um, but Ty really came in, shut down, uh, uh, shut down the Jackrabbits, ended up throwing uh, throwing four innings, one hit baseball, struck out six, um, you know, er, absolutely earned the win. It's good to get uh, a competitive series in with South Dakota State. Yeah, we 10 run them in the in the earlier game, but two competitive games Friday and then today. And hopefully the, the coaching staff will be pleased with the effort that the team put forth this weekend. Well, and the 10 run was, uh, you know, that game was, what, five to two? I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't a crazy game until, um, you know, until Iowa put seven on and all of a sudden it was, it was out of range. So um, even that game had some had some tense moments to it or, or at least some possibilities where Iowa had to go get outs. Hawks win it 5-3. to three. We'll take another break. We'll come back with highlights, and we'll talk with associate head coach Marty Sutherland right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa beats South Dakota State this afternoon, 5-3. to three. Game one of the doubleheader was 12-2. The Hawks get the sweep with the second game's victory in a fashion of 5-3. to three. Let's go over the highlights of game two's Iowa's win, 5-3. to three. He's legged things out just with speed. Speaking of power. Ooh, he gives this one a ride deep to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Ha-ha. Huckstorf on command. Boom. Now Derigi drives this one deep to center. Get going, baby. It is one hopping off the wall. Derigi's around first. He's into second with a double. Ha-ho. Outside, gets away from the catcher. Here comes Anthony. He slides. He is safe. Yes. Here's one that's shot into center. Huxdorf dives forward. He's got it. What a catch by Huxdorf in center. Full extension. Got it. Here's Raider Tello, runner on second, two outs. First pitch to Tello. Drives this one deep Come to left. On. Get going, Come baby. on. Get going. It is yes. gone. Ha-ha. <laughs> Adios, Pelota! And that's what Raider Tello does right there. He gives the Hawkeyes the lead. 
And that would be the final, uh, the score of the game would be 5-3, to three, thanks to Raider Tello's home run to give the Hawks the win uh, eventually. That home run came in the fifth. Joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, uh, a good day at the Diamond to, to take two against South Dakota State. Yeah, absolutely, and and um, you know not the not the nicest weather all weekend, but I thought our guys really handled everything very well. You know, with having to go to Kansas City on Friday, that was a rough day. Come back, get back late, get a, get a practice in tomorrow light, or yesterday light practice, and I thought we were ready to go today. And um, first game, you know, was pretty clean. Uh, bullpen was really good, you know, in that game, but but just clean baseball. You know, we made we made them. You know, uh, with their opportunities, they had to produce them. We didn't help them with those. Second game, we get off to a rough start. Um, Louie does a really good job coming in and min- minimizing that damage with bases loaded, no outs. They, you get out of there with two, you know, offensively, you're a little uneasy about only getting two defensively. Our, in our situation, we're like, okay, that was pretty good, you know, to get out of there that way. We threatened. Um, we, you know, Raider had a rough at bat in that situation. Thick ends up hitting into the double play. Um and and then from there, you know, Louis got a, was a little rough that next inning, but then Ty came in and Ty was great. Ty Ty was Friday night Ty. You know that was the guy we needed, which was great. And then Raider comes back and and you know just keeps playing and has the big hit off off a really good arm. You know that was the ace in the hole. We all knew they had. Um, we were hoping we could just take him out of the situation. You know, get leads and and not allow him to come in in situations with the game being tight. Um, so we made that a little bit more difficult, but Raider got the, you know, Riggs with the big, the big walk and then Raider with the big knock. So just, just a really good day overall. We finally burned somebody on the free bases, right? Yeah. Coach? Yeah. I mean, well, and just early on, we were just giving stuff to him and, you know, obviously the first inning Cade, Cade really struggled with his command and, and, um, you know, Louie had to come in and, and, in a really tough spot and again, did a good job of minimizing that situation. And you didn't get out of there when it was four or five, nothing, which it really could have with one swing in the bat. So that was really good, and we just kept going offensively um, and did enough there to, to, to get the victory. But, you know, just can't say enough about the toughness uh, on, on a difficult weekend to, to handle it the right way, and that says a lot about the group you have in, in that locker room. 15-3 and three to start the season, Coach, and, and I know that, that uh, maybe not playing as – as great as you can and maybe that's a positive the way you view it you're 15 and 3 and you still haven't played your best baseball yet well we've certainly not and, and it's more it's more just on the little type stuff you know and not the free base stuff we talk about it all the time but you know we're in this situation where we've been averaging you know over probably the last two weeks like somewhere around 10 and that's just really difficult to overcome especially as the competition ramps up and um you know the first game i think we kept it under 10 and this game actually outside of the rough start we kept it under 10 and and that's what we need to do and you know for free bases it's like walks it's hit by pitches it's errors it's you know balls in the dirt pass balls it's all these extra 90s that you're giving the other team and um when you do that consistently you know it's just really hard to win and we we've been surviving right and and that's kind of been the message is like hey that's great we're toughing it out things have gone our way but we keep doing those types of things and you're not going to get where you want that that luck will run out and um i thought we did a better job you know overall today um you know and even the one error we had was a tough play for michael i mean you know so that was the only error i think we had the whole day uh which was a good sign so those are the things that we got to tighten up you know a lot of other things went pretty well uh overall for the weekend so anytime you get three you're really happy and and they made us work for it so all right coach congratulations on the win and we'll see you on tuesday hey just a couple of things for me john just congratulations to coach bluter her staff and her team um you know for getting it done at home here and and getting to the sweet 16 i know that's just a small small step for them and what their what their goal is but great job by them and then the other thing is is brian grunsky's an assistant at south dakota state um he he was on our staff at northern iowa when when rick and i were there and uh he said he's going to retire after this year he was a junior college coach in the conference I was in when I played um, and just the ultimate baseball guy just one of the best guys and um, just really happy for him he's in a good place where he's ready to to to, uh, give it up to some younger guys but man he's done a lot for baseball he's done a lot for myself and Rick and um, just really happy to see him uh, for the weekend but just really happy he's comfortable in a spot to 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 ride off in the sunset from a baseball standpoint (laughs) obviously he's got a lot of life left but um, you know just just a great baseball guy so really happy for him and congratulations to him well that's cool very cool that you shared that and happy for you too to be be able to experience that absolutely all right coach congratulations on the win we'll see you on tuesday
All right, associate head coach Marty Sutherland on our pre uh, on our post game show. We're we're done with baseball today. That's our post game show. Okay, we'll wrap up right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from well us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first... Get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. All right, the Hawkeyes wrap up the weekend with a sweep of South Dakota State, winning the final game of the series 5-3. to three. That'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball this afternoon and this weekend. We'll be back at 4 o'clock on Tuesday uh, as the Hawkeyes host Grandview. Iowa and Grandview, 4 o'clock. Pre-game coverage begins at 3.30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. All right, that'll do it from Dwayne Banks in Iowa City today. Iowa wins 5-3. Braxton and Silas, uh, my great board ops today, thank you very much for your hard work, guys. Uh, really good job. Look forward to working with you again. From my broadcast partner, John Evans, I'm John Leo saying so long from Dwayne Banks. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Have a great night. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Ball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends. Save. The floor. Out of all the tough ways to turn it over, throwing a throwing a long pass toward half court gave Georgia a run out. Because when corn grows Iowa. So not a lot of great toward helping them um, advance into those types of things. And, and, you know, as a committee has their discussion on
It's just 46 pitches, so he's been extremely efficient. Our team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Out just with speed. Speaking of power. Ooh, he gives this one a ride deep to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Ha <laughs> ha. The Hawkeyes, the lead. Oh, in Missouri. You bet. Hawks win 5-4. Yeah, it's a little bit... Uh, Different weather down there in Missouri. The snow started to come in. We don't have any snow in the forecast today. It's his third inning of work here, so might be kind of capping him out a little bit. Pitch is low and a great block there by McDonald to keep Tello. Tello had a 866 Iowa women clinging to a lead. You're currently listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Eli Sunquist came in for South Dakota State after that and did a pretty good job, two and a third innings, uh, two hits, gave up four earned, though, because he, he struggled towards the end with three walks, did strike. Wahlberger. On the hook. News to share at Wahlburgers. We are. First pitch of game number two of the doubleheader. 